come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast, where a movie and talk show podcast comes your way every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not, in our quest for total world domination, which you can help us out with by going over to wherever you found us and hitting that like or subscribe button, because all of that stuff helps us get found by other like-minded individuals such as yourself. These are the Internet Radio Superstars. Happy New Year, Colin. Happy New Year, Holly. Thank you. Happy New Year, Sean. Happy New Year, Holly. Thank you. Happy New Year, Michaela. Happy New Year, Holly. May it be better than the last two. (laughs) No, I just changed it right there. Day 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 one. You knock on every every surface. How dare you jinx us? Not even done with this year. That's right. Well, we are technically. At the time you're listening to this, well, yes. it is ha- it is the first. So because we are, this is our yeah. So annual... we could be dead right now, is what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> our annual uh, best and worst of the year episode. So we uh, do this every year. Uh, Except guys... this year, we're gonna do five worst, one best, because that's how we were this year. <laughs> yeah. Well, last year we had to do that weird thing where we uh, oh, yeah, it was categories. like a roundtable discussion of yeah. different categories. Yeah. yeah, yeah, because there weren't enough like movies actually right. making it out. This year mm-hmm. we have a full complement of movies have arrived mm-hmm. in in movie theaters. Yep. And on streaming yeah. services. Yep. <laughs> no, 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 no. It, it was a lot more than last year. A lot more to yeah. watch yeah. this year than last year. Yeah, yeah, no, there was a lot that came out, a lot that was released, but the quality. Holly and I have figured it out. Yeah. It oh. is 2021 is the year of cinematic mediocrity. Yes. Everything. Not everything. Yes. Most things were very middle of the road. And if you're wondering, what does that mean? It means you probably have movie fog. Yep. And movie mm. fog is when movies come out and you don't remember and them. And you're like, that came out in March? <laughs> that came out. I saw that this year. That's movie fog. What's worse is yeah. that the movie fog this year is like, I watched that. I enjoyed it. And I still don't remember yeah, it. Exactly. Why? Why is this happening? My, exactly. M- my top five have the subtitle, uh, The Year of Disappointment. So yes, I was right yeah, there with yeah, you. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Because it felt like most yeah, things absolutely. to me were disappointing mm-hmm. this year. And Not I, to say everything, but. I think mm-hmm. the good things feel so much better because they're in this field of mediocrity you know what i'm mm-hmm. saying the things that were good it's like wow something that's an a instead of yeah. a c plus finally and, and you the, know the funny thing is that when i was doing my list i was thinking about it and i was like you know what a lot of the things that i'm picking they're not even necessarily like the best of the year they're just the things that made me feel the most right. this year right oh, yeah. what i'm going with oh, yeah, yeah. this is definitely not a this is the best it's yeah, yeah. yeah. Us, this is like, no this is like sight like. and sound 100 right. best anything exactly. this is, no, 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 no. we're gonna yeah. get to some stuff here because yeah. i think i have tried to do that in the, the past the most like objectively that mm-hmm. i think the best movie yeah. but this year i'm like you know what i'm just gonna go with the subjective like right. favorites yeah. follow your heart like colin yeah. yeah follow your heart so you know uh, but so yeah what we're gonna do we're gonna tell you each one of us has picked uh five best movies we're gonna go around the table and we're gonna talk about them and then we each have picked one the worst movie mm-hmm. of 2021 mm-hmm. the worst um, experience i mean i'm kind of interested you know i mean the idea that it's uh, the year of cinematic mediocrity is it because yeah. like um a trend seemed to be like this year relying heavily maybe more so than previous years on nostalgia oh absolutely yes. that's a like, big part of it that is a oh, big yeah. part absolutely of it. this was a big year for it, especially in a year when we were so uh I mean, we were all in a lot of distress. We just want to be anywhere levels. but here, right? right. And so, we, yeah. comfort, I think, was the name of the game this year. Right. Yeah. That is that, definitely going to be present on my list. Does yeah. that, um, you know, because you're saying that you want to be anywhere but here, there's a lot going on. Does that contribute to the movie Fog? You can't oh, remember, for you know, sure. It feels Absolutely. like a year ago that Absolutely. you saw these things, but Absolutely. so much has changed in oh, yeah. the world especially, since right. then. Right. Well, and especially because everything keeps getting moved around. There was a lot of movement this year with movies getting mm-hmm. pushed back or forward, depending yes. on what. Yeah, was Already, No Time to Die supposed to come out like two years ago? Two years ago. Yes. Sure, two <laughs> years ago. In our Freak Show group chat, I sent you guys a picture because there was the big No Time to Die cutout at our local theater, and there was probably a half inch of black like paint like like tape put over the release date because it kept changing because it, it kept changing i could have gone up and peeled them all off it was so thick and it just said and they literally only at that point committed to october right? didn't say what year just I'll, october yeah. i'll some say, october yeah. it'll be out i'll say the batman did it best because in their trailer it came in coming 22 question mark two question mark there you go like, it fit the riddler's in this movie but also genius. the world sucks yeah. Yeah. it's genius so, it's genius it's like good job they're like it's we're genius. just riding with it like it'll get there yeah. we promise it's made yeah you'll see it all right well somehow i had a little uh, warm-up question to get us going yeah. here i love it what we'll go around the table was the first movie you saw in your return to theaters after things started opening up 
A Quiet Place Two. Yeah, it was my first movie in the theater. Mm-hmm. See, I saw I saw Tenant, but now I don't remember. That was this year, right? Wasn't it? Like, was it? Or was it last year? I think that was last year. Think last year. They put it Tenet on the, was last so year. it was. Yeah. Was it a quiet place too? I don't know. I've been Mine going. Ooh, that may have been. As long as movie yeah. theaters were open, I was. I going saw to a movies. quiet place too at the drive-in. So did but I. Yeah. With Friday the Thirteenth, yep. that was a double feature. Yep, that was a very weird <laughs> yeah. double feature. Yeah, and uh, I think the first thing I saw in a theater theater though was Candyman. Mm. So yeah. late. I was pretty late to remember, returning. Yeah, I remember sitting because I think I saw a quiet place too by myself. But I remember sitting in there in the theater, and every trailer that came on, I was like, I can't wait to see that. It was like, that was going to be my question. It was, was like, did it color yeah. your perspective? Oh, yeah. Because I was, I was like, like, fuck yeah, we're back baby yeah. I'm like this is amazing I was like yeah I can't wait for Jungle Cruise yeah. like what the fuck and I was like, movies I got, are big again I was like I got my icy I got my popcorn right? the world is right again everything's gonna be okay and then somebody <laughs> over, your cold, over your shoulder goes <laughs> yeah. what? what about you Sean what did you see in, what was your first thing back I believe it was A Quiet Place too. Yeah. and if it wasn't it's one of the movies on my list so I can't talk okay. about it okay alright yeah, well, I saw it at yeah, the drive-in we'll but that's the thing like you know the moving owing experience has changed so much you know, you're saying there's somebody coughing over your shoulder, but mm-hmm. my experience has been there's no one in no one there, yeah. which I, I, I kind of like though. There, I like it's it. Like, yeah, uh, well, I like it because it's like watching a movie in my basement. Yeah, but at the same time, it's like there is something to be gained. I think by an audience reaction I mean, to yeah. a movie, which but I just had with Spider Man. I was gonna yeah. say, but it depends though, because like I I saw so actually Sean and I saw Spider Man separately together. <laughs> and, yeah. um, we waved. We waved. <laughs> we waved at each other. Each other. Mm-hmm. Um. There was like a guy sitting by me that he was very obviously a comic book nerd and I appreciated his enthusiasm, but then there was a very obvious like fangirl behind me and I won't say who she was a fan of, but a very obvious fangirl behind me that like would not shut the fuck Uh, up. And I was like, God damn it. You're like, I didn't miss this. Like now I'm actually back at the theater because this bitch won't shut the fuck up. Right. Yeah. Did not miss that. Was she she trying to move in on your Tom Holland? Is that why you don't like her so much? She was like, I just love Tom Holland. No. Okay. <laughs> Just checking. No, I've gotten over that. He's very young. Every every movie I've seen has had like five other people in it. That's it. I have not yeah. seen Spider-Man movie with was the, crowd, the biggest so, one. So yeah, as you, we can see. Yeah, there's yeah. quite a few people. So follow up since we've all been back in theaters. Mm-hmm. How do we feel about the Nicole Kidman AMC theaters okay. promo? Okay, we're going to talk a lot about this. This is the biggest news of the year, right? A lot about this. Yeah, we need to talk about that because I mean I love her a lot. I love her, and it doesn't work for me. So who is this for? Okay, my, I, my I, biggest... I can't talk about this unless we talk about a specific movie. Okay. Yeah. And there's a lot of folks probably listening to us. They have Regal or Cinemark or whatever, but oh, AMC, okay. you've probably But this seen has become like ad. a meme. But, yeah. I, will, but I, will say, I will say my biggest thing with it is why are you showing this to me before an AMC movie? You already got me here. Yeah, I'm already in the theater. My ass why, is in the seat. I bought the ticket. Do you remember when they in used fact, to the have... the only people are seeing them are the diehards who are going back to the theater. Yeah. Right. I don't need convincing. You there don't have was... to show this before the movie. I'm already here. I did like it when they when they actually, for a brief period of time there, had like the director or stars uh, yeah. before the movie. Like, thank you for coming to oh, the movie. Right. You know, yeah. That kind of yeah. thing. Except when it was just like, ooh. It was always M. Night Shyamalan. You were contractually obligated to do this, See, weren't you? I liked John Krasinski's Before a Quiet Place too. Yeah. yeah. He, yeah. Seemed, yeah. he seemed very sincere. And I was like, oh, movies. John, I'm happy yeah. to be yeah. here. Right. But, I mean, do you remember when the AMCs, like they used to, because uh, I used to work at a, at a theater chain that was bought up by AMC, and I remember like when Same. they would put everybody <laughs> in those uh, white and black suits, mm-hmm. and then they gave you the vests. And then I was out of it by then. Thank I, God. I, the I, Did yeah. you have the hat? Did you have? I had the berets? hat. I had the hat. My outfit was. I don't know what yours was, was, Colin, because Colin and I both worked at the same movie theater many years apart. But and it was Kira Sodas when you worked there, right? Yeah, okay, yeah. it was Kira Sodas when I worked there too. It was worst fucking uniform of all time: white button-down shirt tucked into black pants yep. with the cummerbund. Oh, and we didn't have the cummerbund. Oh, we had to wear it. <laughs> and it had to be a short sleeve shirt. You couldn't wear a long sleeve shirt. You guys and look goofy. a bow tie and a newsboy hat, and it was all maroon. Oh, wow. It was all maroon. Oh, yeah. That's bad. Was, and an apron too. Like if you were behind was, concession, it was, was very bad. For, do you remember the AMC like had in place of the Nicole Kid? What the Nicole Kidman thing does now? Yeah, they had like the staff. Yeah. Or whatever they went around and filmed a bunch of staff it was doing weird. stuff and like some They're usher who looks yeah. like he's thirteen on the uh, the radio yep. you know talking to some there's a cleanup in all five or something like that they also was- had that like <laughs> bouncing circle that would go around and do things yeah. too oh yeah, yeah that was yeah. the mascot for a while yeah and then it just turned into every character from movies and yeah. you know, attacking and then it was yeah. the matrix I guess yeah. my, I like that one. my thought is like. Uh, do people younger than us like know or care about Nicole Kidman? You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not like she's. Oh, it's definitely for. It's for people us or older, and right? PR and stuff. Well, she's a movie star. I she guess is, that's part of it. Yeah. It's like she's but is she a movie royalty? star to Gen Z? 
Do they? Trying to keep you know, I think she's in kind of the maybe the position that Meryl Streep or something was to you. You know, like mm-hmm. she's uh, the uh, I get a lofty, saying. you know, like yeah. icon of cinema. But yeah. you, I'm sorry, Nicole, you've never been to a fucking AMC theaters in your life, like a casual person, and just watched a movie. Like, I would. I'm sorry, you haven't. Die if someone got a picture of Nicole Kidman. In that suit, just sitting watching a movie in AMC theaters. That's, yeah, that would be. I love that. Suit. Yeah, great. It's I a know. great suit. It's a great suit. I know. It's the one you wear, but <laughs> it's the turn. I just want to see someone that... hanging out. Also, the Halloween costume next year, like somebody's got to pull. Oh this my off. god, I want to do that. Yeah, <laughs> that'd be great. Come on. <laughs> and I saw the last movie I was. Bert, at, if you're had... listening. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the last movie I was at had like an edited version of that. Uh, it, I don't think it was the full length, or it used additional um, shots. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there is it was a, like okay, so they versions. are like refreshing it. You know. I've seen a short version on TV a few times, and it's very weird to see yeah, that on TV. TV. Yeah, yeah, it's on TV. Easy. Makes more sense than being at the theater, yeah, though. It really does. But it does. Uh, and I've seen it on a YouTube ad too before, like watching YouTube. And I was like, I cannot escape you, woman. Like mm-hmm. I love you, but but I this isn't working the way you think it is. <laughs> So it's a thumbs down for the AMC uh, I li- opening. It's grown on me because it's so it, ridiculous. You, you know what? It's just like, uh, it's going to be like, oh, Nicole's here. We yeah. can start the movie now. <laughs> like, it's going to get there just because it's there. Holly and I went to see Nightmare Alley together, and there was an extra long break between, like, the like now our feature presentation uh-huh. and the Nicole Kidman thing. So at first we thought we weren't going to get it. She was convinced. I was like, no, no, you wait. But it was you an wait. extra long pause. I was saying, it's just a extra reel in here. Yeah. We're getting to it. It's and then when it started, we were both like, yeah. Like, it's just like, <laughs> you just become fans now. It's yeah, just like a tradition. We cannot start we ha- this now until we Nicole's hate love it. Because now, yeah. yeah, because I quote it to my partner all the time. I'll be like, we come to the movies for magic. And I'll just say like the weird shit like that to because him all the time. Heartbreak, heartbreak feels, feels good. good. Yeah, exactly. It's such a weird fucking it it's is. so fucking. I get it. All right, Nicole, I get it. You're well, right. We love weird, heartbreak out of movie. What's really weird is the movie she's watching while she's saying this. It's Wonder Woman and Creed. Is it Creed and is it Jurassic World or and, something? Uh, what was the musical with Ryan Gosling? La La, 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 La Land. Yeah. yeah, it's it's very weird for her to be saying those things while watching those movies. You yeah. know. <laughs> All right, that I guess that kind of makes uh, sense with La La Land. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so we're gonna we're gonna start with our least favorite. Well, okay, so no. these are the top five. No. You're gonna start no. with your your most favorite. Oh, no, we'll start with left. five. Yeah, we're gonna start with five. We said, we're we gonna work your way up. Oh, okay, sorry. Meant our least favorite of the. I'm sorry. So you're starting with number yes. five. Number five. Working our way to number one, yes. and then the worst movie of the year. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um. All right. So who are we starting with? Oh wait, Rochambeau. I don't know. We should flip a coin or something. Uh, I did the last movie here, so why don't you go first? Oh, okay. Put Sean on the spot, huh? I like it. I I like it. (laughs) Damn, already they're ganging up on me. All right, Uh, number five. Coming in number five, and like we said, this was the year of disappointment, and also... We're kind of heading into the week where I watch movies. Like it's between Christmas and New Year's, so right. I'm I, I got the Power of the Dog. I still want to watch that. I got to finish. There's a bunch of movies I haven't seen, yeah, but here yeah. we go. Uh, so my number five is going to be, after much consideration, uh, Ghostbusters Afterlife. Okay. Now the reason I I like Ghostbusters Afterlife. It's an odd movie. Now mm-hmm. who's seen this? I have not. I have, I have not. Seen not. It yet, yeah. Colin's seen it. Yeah. Okay. So we can't. I won't discuss I certain parts of it. God damn it. <laughs> but Sorry. all right. Here's what I liked about it. In a, I guess they're calling them legacy sequels now, which is great. Uh, in a legacy <laughs> sequel, I think this movie did enough of it. I think it does a thing that you want it to do. Obviously, studios want you to want it to do. Uh, it's enough of the new and the old for me. Um, they introduce new characters. Um, McKenna Grace is in this movie mm-hmm. along with Finn I love Wolfhard. Her. She's she's I great. Love McKenna Grace. She's, she's legitimately great. great. Um, Carrie Coon is in this. Um, I watch this, and every time I watch Carrie Coon, I fall in love with her. Sure. Like I just I want Carrie Coon to look at me like she looks at Paul Rudd in this movie. I think <laughs> because it's pretty great. Um, but. I think the things they did with this movie, um, obviously, they're hitting that nostalgia button real hard. Mm -hmm. Like, real hard. Mm -hmm. Like, almost, depending on how you are. But you're a huge Ghostbusters fan. I'm a very big Ghostbusters fan. I love Ghostbusters. Well, okay, so when we're saying Ghostbusters fan, you're... Because, I mean, I consider myself a fan of the first one. Yes. But you, like... I love... The first one, I love the second one. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm not a fan of the 2016 movie, just because it doesn't... the cartoon. Come on. Car- cartoon, there yes. Yeah. Watch a lot of the cartoon. Watch it with the kid as well. Growing up, um, and I'm yeah. with, and I'm with you on this. I love one. I love two. I love the cartoon. Yeah, I didn't love, love 
Didn't love the all female. God bless them. Didn't I know, love it. I know. I, you know what? If you made a funny movie or if you made a good movie, I'd be all for yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I saw that one. And I did, I didn't care for it. And yeah, I'm not even like, like a big Ghostbusters person. Right, so like, no. if it's not, if it's not hitting you and it's not hitting me, who is it for? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Um, I mean, I've got a prop neutrono wand up in my office. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm a big fan. Okay, here, so, there it is. Like, okay. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Nostalgia like, blast. I, yeah, <laughs> I love it. If I was ever going to like, I've always said, if there's like, if I could have any job in the world, I'd be a Ghostbuster because that just seems like something. Hell yeah. It, well, it's, you know what? It's in the movies. It's made to be a like uh, it's a exterminator. Like it is mm-hmm. a cleanup role. It is almost a janitorial role. Mm-hmm. But for some reason, I think I'd be really good at it. And that's that's why I love this stuff. But also, OK, what I love about Ghostbusters Afterlife is that they didn't. It's what they don't change. And a lot of these movies like. Being this far on, they'll update a lot of stuff, and I hate to use the 2016 movie as a comparison, but it exists, so therefore I must. Um, Certain things they didn't do, um, or did do. With this movie, they didn't really update the technology of the Ghostbusters, which I think is a key thing for this, Um, especially comparatively, they're not, they don't have, like, ghost guns and shit like that. Um... That always felt good. It is the original stuff and the sound design of it, which they did really well. Um, I mean, there's certain characters. Like, there's a lot of nostalgia in this. The way they end it sets up for what I think is a really good way to go forward if they want to do more movies. So, Mm -hmm. do you think there will be more movies? I f- in this day and age, I, I, I would, so. I would well, assume with any movie well, I watch, I there's going to be more started of it. The Columbia Pictures started that Ghost, Ghost Core, which is yeah. still part of this. But we say that, and I always wonder, all right, I have no doubt there will be more Ghostbuster movies, but the age we live in, I don't know if they're going to continue with the story. I think they should. I think they can in very interesting ways. But who knows what people think. They'll wait five years and reboot it again somehow other. But I think the best chance to keep it going is to go with this movie. Uh, I think they set up a lot. Um, I like some of the new characters. Some of it's like pretty heavy handed and cheesy as hell. And like I said, they hit that nostalgia button in one specific area very hard. And depending on who you are as a person, you may not like that. But um, it did... I think I told Holly my review was uh, good enough with a big smiling <laughs> thumbs up. And I, that's all. I, that's what I can say about Ghostbusters. I'm like, you know what? I'm not insulted by this. Cinematic mediocrity. I, and, and, that's, and that's where we are this year. So, but, good enough. But yeah. because of C that, plus, you passed, you right, know? Because of that, yeah. good enough is like good did enough you, for did me. Did you so. cry, Sean? No, I did. <laughs> I did tear up at some moments. But not at the moments you thought you would. And I can't go into it right. farther because those certain moments I'm just like... And this uh, is uh, Jason Reitman, right? So Jason Reitman, is, yes. Uh, the, the son Ivan of Reitman. Ivan Reitman. Yeah. Nepotism. Uh, 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 he co-starred in Ghostbusters 2, did Jason Reitman, uh, at the beginning of the movie, if you remember that. <laughs> but yes. So, it so is, he has it, a history. He was banging around on the set while yeah. the other ones were being made. So this has turned into a family thing. and uh, Well, that's why I think people were saying like he's the one to carry the torch or whatever because I think anybody who's of his uh, connection right. with the original. Anybody, if you can write a good script and you can direct a movie, and I, I doesn't have to be Jason Reitman. Like, I don't need the... Oh, the family's going to carry on the legacy. I don't want... Uh, I don't care it's for not the... not necessary, but it worked. Right. <laughs> also, I don't care for the, the toxic parts of this fandom, because as we found out in 2006, there are. Mm-hmm. It doesn't yeah, have to be a Reitman sure. bringing it in. I'm not saying that the original Ghostbusters have to be in a movie, but there's certain things they can do, but I they did enough in this, and it was like, all right, made me happy. So, Ghostbusters Afterlife is my number five. Mm-hmm. Who's next? Are we just picking or going around? Uh, we'll just eh, go Michaela. All right. <clears throat> uh... Bend in the rules a little bit for this one. Uh, no dare you. My, no my number five is Dexter New Blood. Um, Love it. Uh, I, 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 I the only reason I can't put it higher is because as of recording this, episode eight has dropped, so we still have three more episodes. Yeah. Oh. And, you know, if you're a Dexter fan, you know they could really fuck it up still. Yes, There's still could. plenty of time for them to <laughs> completely drop the ball. Yes, so, you know, could. maybe my review right now is going to age like milk in a couple weeks. Who knows? <laughs> but um, it's... I was so cautiously optimistic when I heard it was coming back because they didn't erase they, or retcon the last season. They continued off of it, and that ending was just so terrible. I didn't know mm-hmm. how they could possibly make it good. And it is a fucking miracle that they have been able to create such a great season working with the pieces that were left of them at the end of season mm-hmm. eight. It's Clyde Phillips, who was the original showrunner for the first four seasons, the best four seasons Uh-oh, of the show. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's good. Um, 
it loves its fans. Yes. It, but it's but it doesn't feel like fan service, if that makes sense. No, it yeah. feels like this is what we owe you. This is what we should have given you the first time. Mm-hmm. And we're sorry. You know? And it's like, I accept your apology. Thank you. Like, I love it. I'm just so happy to have you back. You're forgiven. Yeah. And... Um, I mean, I don't think this is a spoiler because it's been in the, all the promotional stuff, but Deb being the his voice of his subconscious yes. instead of Harry is so good. Those two have such mm-hmm. great chemistry and I love Deb as a character and they're just like, that makes so much sense for that yeah, character. For and sure. it, though, the scenes that I am most compelled by in Dexter New Blood are those two together, mm-hmm. always. And Michael C. Hall's killing it as always. He's great. Um, like this, he is this role. This role is him. Like yeah. it's, and if this is all he ever is known for, I think that's a great career. Mm-hmm. You know, um, the writing is very good. It feels very familiar. I was really worried about the new setting in the snow because like Miami was like a character on that show. Yeah. But but blood shows up so much better in the snow. And that <laughs> oh, it does. is a big part of the show. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's um, like upstate New York. Uh, this yeah. Time, right? Like yeah. rural upstate New York. Uh, yeah. Back. And it's so I, it's so much better than i ever could have hoped it would be mm-hmm. and it i'm glad like, there was redemption yeah, yeah. there is and, and like, like we, we talk about the year of nostalgia like they did it right it feels like the old show but yeah. it, and i don't know how they're able to do that with it not being in miami but it still yeah. feels like the old show and like it i miss the opening theme i do too i and i was gonna say <laughs> i do too any sure. showtime people if you're listening i will make you a title sequence like yeah. i i am so upset it doesn't have a good title yeah. sequence because it's too the old one had a great I one. I had a weird, like, this year, for some reason, uh, just to maybe separate it from the other seasons, they're like, we're going to shoot it in uh, 235 to 1 yeah. widescreen. Yeah. I'm like, that's an unusual choice. We're going right. cinematic with this right. year's mm-hmm. Dexter. But and you're a huge... Uh, I am a big Dexter fan, mm-hmm. yeah. Like, I'm big, Michaela. I have a big Dexter <laughs> tattoo, yeah. You and, know. Uh, I, I, and, like... I mean, like, if you're going to, re- like, revive a show, you should revive a show that failed, right? Like, if you're going to remake something or, or reboot it, it, need- bad taste yeah, it needs to be something right. that failed. I would say that ending failed. Like, that, sh- that, en- that ending, like, ruined the show for so many people, you know? Mm-hmm. So many people, if they do rewatch it, will stop at season four just because they know, like, I'm going to get hurt again, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, and... You think they felt that? And they're just like, we got to yeah. bridge the people from four who dropped off to here. Yes, because so this connects can... back to four a lot. Okay. There's major connections to season four. Like, I want to talk about something that's really <laughs> spoiling. Just so, coming around, just like, yeah. I have so much to but talk about. The, a character from season four comes back in the show, and they brought that character back and shot new scenes. And when you see it, it just like chills down your spine. Right? And yeah. Clancy Brown is the big bad, and he's perfect. So that's fucking perfect. good. That he's seems so like a good, good big bad. Well, oh, and, he's so good. And like, so Dexter has a new big bad every season, right? But he, I think, is my number two right behind the Trinity Killer yeah. right now because he is. One, him and Trinity are the only people that have ever been an even match for Dexter. Mm -hmm. Like he, like this past episode that we watched, I was so sweaty because I was like, oh my God, he's five steps ahead of Dexter. And that never happens. Uh Like Dexter always has the upper hand. But, and so when you see him get caught up in the other person's trap, you're just like, this never happens. Yeah. So I'm curious to see how they end it. I'm, I think they might be setting up for a spinoff if it's going where I think it's going. I don't know how I feel about that, but mm-hmm. I'd be fine if this is the end because it's been so good, but I feel like no one's talking about it. I feel like it is mm-hmm. like a completely Actually, underground yeah. thing. I yeah. Think yeah. yeah. I think they're waiting for the end. Yeah. They might be. Um, I feel sure. like, you know, I, I'm active on the Dexter subreddit and I see how much like discussion happens and there's a ton, but then you like look at any main, like AV club or any sort of like yeah, mainstream, no one's talking, talking about, about it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and I don't know if a lot of people even know that it's back. I mean, obviously, the fans, yeah. I think, of it know that mm-hmm. it's back. Last but. week's episode, so episode seven, got eight million viewers. So very uh, season high, really a lot of viewership that week. And that was a fan-fucking-tastic episode. Mm-hmm. So, so good. Uh, go watch Extra New Blood. If you want to stream it all, like, at the time you're listening to this, there's probably, like, one or two episodes left. So just wait a week, week or two, and you could binge it all at once. But and you can do a free trial showtime for, like, a mm-hmm. week and then just cancel it. Because <laughs> who cares? Who cares? You know, the um, old standby yeah, that we yeah. all use. Yeah. You know how many yeah. streaming emails yeah. I have? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Dexter New Blood is my number five. I will, I will say that... Um, it's on my honorable mention. The uh-huh. only reason I didn't pick it is because I knew you were going to. Yeah, yeah. So you're like, oh, I got room to talk about yeah. this. Yeah, exactly. Right. So, it's part yeah. of the game. It's, it's, like, we'll talk about it's it. and like, De- De- I don't know. Dexter's just one of those shows that like it can really pull at my emotional heartstrings mm-hmm. sometimes. And this season's really calling back to sad moments I tried mm-hmm. to forget about the show, and I'm just like, oh fuck. And 
uh, podcast representation in Dexter New Blood. Good podcast representation. As I'm opposed like, to Halloween Ghostbusters and Halloween 2018. <laughs> oh my god! Okay, yeah. <laughs> there is a kid named Podcast. Luckily, I think they only say it two times. <laughs> it's too too many. It it. Oh, he's all about listen but, to my podcast. I no. do a podcast about you. Listen to no, yeah. Dexter but he's New Blood also is like good the podcast yeah. of the yeah. movie. So yeah. Dexter New Blood is good podcast representation. Yeah, unlike Halloween 2018. That's or, what I was thinking. Yeah, That's yeah. Where I thought you yeah. were going. No. I'm just like, oh, no. This is good okay. podcast representation. And I'm like another thing that's on my list but we'll get to that Uh Uh, so holly what's your number five oh we're not going to colin uh i was just i was just (laughs) picking okay just calling on people um my number five is a movie called the night house Ah, um it's a very almost watched that yeah Yeah, i didn't get to watch it but i wanted controversial because a lot of people did not care for the ending um i will not spoil it but i actually really um i really liked this movie it's I think a lot of people think it's going to be like a standard haunted house movie, and it's it, it is not at all. Um, That's what I like to hear. Yeah, Rebecca Hall is is Rebecca the main Hall. character, and she is fantastic. Why she, do I always think it's Ferguson? She's the one I always think is <laughs> yeah. Rebecca Ferguson. <laughs> yeah, it's not. It's Hall. I it's always Hall. mix okay. them up. I always get her mixed up with. Um, uh, yeah, I think we were saying this before. Like, mm-hmm. who played uh, uh, Bruce Willis's wife in The Sixth Sense? For some reason, like her, <laughs> I always like yeah. see yeah. that when I imagine yeah, her, similar. I get their faces. We went down like, this rabbit hole off yeah, mic one night. Did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, this movie, it's. <sighs> It, it's very it's dark and ominous um there's there's definitely a, a supernatural aspect to it but it's it is not your standard haunted house movie it's a lot about grief it's a lot about uh, it's a lot about mental health and that's why it really speaks to me um you know no secret i deal with mental health stuff i've dealt with it pretty much my whole life and this is one of those movies that like it's not even just it's not even just like an allegory like it's it's almost a, like a literal interpretation of like being haunted by men, by depression I like and that. it's really good like there's so much more to it there's so many layers to this story because it is about grief it's about um a woman who's just lost her husband and she's trying to deal with that but then is she is she haunted by him is she haunted by the life that he was leading that she didn't know about like there's so many layers to the story and it's just it really spoke to me. I know Colin didn't care for the ending. We talked about it a little bit. I liked uh, Rebecca Hall's performance. is worth singling it's out in this because the way that she is, she's like this uh, extremely cynical, but like dealing with her grief head on. Right. And that's abrasive, I guess, in the way that it's really that people abrasive, but it's relate, so, you know, it's so when believable. she's telling other people. Yeah. It's so believable. Like, I guess that's what I hadn't seen kinda, in yes. a movie. She's just kind of out and open and yeah. she's like, just, yeah. about she's just yeah. fucking fed up. Right. That's what yeah. I got from the trailer. Yeah. Yes, because she it's in the she explicitly yeah. talks about her husband and everything from what she I does. She's very like in your like in your face about it, but not like in a in a non believable non non believable way. Right. She's like just it's like this is how it is. Right. She's like, yeah, my husband fucking died. Like, right. what do you want me to do? Okay. Like, it's very Oof. believable. It's it's yeah. no, it's like the grief in this movie. It's it's a lot to deal with. Yeah. So like, if that's something you're dealing with, you know, maybe wait a little bit. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's it's such a great. It's it's such a great it's not a feel good movie, but like because I felt I felt seen watching this movie, if that makes sense. Well that's what makes no. you feel better than that. <laughs> like you could just I call get this that. the you know good I mean? movie of the year. Like it's not happy, but at the same time I was like, Wow, that's it. Like there's that's, a movie on my yeah. list I felt that way. Oh, yeah, because you're yeah. all just like Somebody knows. Yeah. Somebody knows how I like, they get it. Like there's a, there's some clumsiness in, in the writing and the storytelling in this. Um like I said, there's like supernatural aspects that go in different directions and it's kinda like a It's kind of like a misdirection, um, but not, but it's, you just don't know how it's going to tie together. Um, And it's a little clumsy, but I think it works. There's some really like legitimate scares. Mm -hmm. There was some moments that actually like, I I I don't want to call them jump scares, but because I feel like they deserve more credit than a standard jump scare, but they were like very good. They were very well done. Um, Minimal effects, but they're really good. Like they contribute to the scares. Like it worked on me. Um, yeah, I I really liked this movie. I I it was one of the first movies like I tried to watch sev- like a lot of stuff in the last few months trying to, you know, prepare for tonight. And that was one of the top of my list. And it was one of the first movies I watched that I was like, "Okay, finally I'm watching a good fucking movie this year." Like it just yeah, it spoke to me. So, like best quality movie? I don't know. It's probably not on anyone's like best list or anything, but it spoke to me. I enjoyed it. So yeah, the night house is my. Number is five. this going to be like you know how you and I have talked about like if we're watching closer that means like we're mentally like in a <laughs> yes. like it's a red flag movie like yeah if I'm telling you I'm watching closer you should probably like 
check yeah. out my mental health. I don't health. know if you guys is like this going to be on? Yeah, is this going to be on that list I of like the movies? We had yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Michaela yeah. and I we discovered that one time that yeah. like, we're closer is like our mental health movie. It's like if I'm watching that, you should keep an eye on. You should watch. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Seriously, yeah. I don't know what it is about closer. Yeah, but it gets me. And if I'm yeah. watching, oh no, we had this conversation during the Clive Owen conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. That's it. Clive Owen and I'd never seen it, and you're also you all lambasted me from being like, is is he a good actor? I don't know. Yes, he is. Yeah, and you were like, have you? seen closer yeah. he's so good yeah. he's so good so the night house number five for me <laughs> colin number five well i mean i guess uh there's uh this it's kind of interesting because it does seem to be like a trend at least in the horror genre that we're watching right now where um a lot of um movies seem to be like they are about like dealing with grief yeah, yeah. you know like yeah. that's the go-to thing like we're gonna be even scary. dexter new blood is about we that all have yeah grief. yeah Mm-hmm. But do. that's like what, how yeah. horror is going to, you know, uh, and so because of course, it's real horror it's you know? is that what it, it's, yeah. it's, it allows horror to be elevated, you know, right, if, right, it's, right. if it's dealing <laughs> yeah. with something like, yeah. human like level, antlers, like which yeah. is not my number five. Oh, thank God. I was about to be like, <laughs> Colin, <laughs> seriously. <laughs> no, I, I didn't. He didn't have me for a second. Colin. I was like, no way. Is antlers going to show up? I was like, Colin, a... I saw your letterbox review. I know you don't feel that way about it. <laughs> no, but I, uh, I really did. And I think this is, uh, another a movie that's about dealing with grief and, uh, moving on from a loss. But, uh, we mentioned it before it's a quiet place part two yeah this was yeah. um the first movie i guess yeah that maybe it was the first one that you know we all saw i think so uh, coming yeah, out of the you know theaters are kind of reopening or whatever i don't know if that colored my impression of it did it make it better than it was uh i maybe. remember really liking the first quiet place yeah. yes. movie Very quite a movie. bit um, I think um, our best of the year for 2018. You can hear us talk about I think we a quiet all, place because it was. I think it was on most of our. I was going to say either we all picked it or a lot of us. Picked yeah. It. Mm-hmm. yeah, we talked about it. There's something. Did we all like, see it together as well. Uh, we did. First, we first, all, yeah, yeah, we did. Yeah, yeah we did. There's something um, like John Krasinski as a as a director. Um, it's like he is channeling Alfred Hitchcock. I mean, I'm just surprised at how like, uh, and obviously, you know, I know that, you know, when you make a movie, you're surrounded by a lot of very talented people and he's in a, uh, you know, a certain yes. uh, stratosphere, right? right? Where you have access to all this stuff because of all the past things that he's done. But I'm just always kind of like, a sta- I'm like, this guy's a real director. You know, yeah. I was like you think of him as like a comedian or an actor, but it's like, you know, clearly he's got the goods to actually deliver here. I right. like that uh, the the second one brings him back a little bit. At the, the cold very open, yes. it might be my favorite part of the movie. The cold open is I, fantastic. I yeah. like that they brought him back. Yeah. 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 And that, that extended set piece is, uh, you know. Car driving scenes like that stress me oh, the man. fuck yeah. out. I'm sure oh there's God. a lot of CG employed in it or whatever, but yeah. it, it's oh, yeah. played out as a single but take and effective. a lot of it's but in it. Yeah. I yeah. never thought about it. Like, mm-hmm. aside from the monster, which obviously, but we, I never yeah. thought about, like, what else is digital in this? I'm just yeah. like, no, we yeah. were, that would be scary. It's gripping. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah it, I guess so that it mm-hmm. works. That's yeah, why always sure. those, those single takes are basically employed to try and, like, keep you in the reality of the moment as long as they can. And that one pulled it off. Uh, and then the story itself um, is kind of like, you know, following off of what had happened in the in the first movie and Krasinski's character, uh, well, it doesn't survive. Well, I mean, I guess it's. I mean, if you've seen the first set this yeah. one up, um, but the focus becomes more on the kids, I guess. And then there's yeah. uh, they meet uh, Killian Murphy, mm-hmm. uh, who's like the new love him, in this. love well, him, love him as an actor. I, yeah. Yeah, I like him as an actor, yeah. but I was you know based on the trailers, yes. I was curious what they were going to do because either you're going to have a fill in love interest, you know, it, to replace Krasinski. Or he's going to be one of these guys post-apocalyptic that's going to be an antagonist. Right. We're more dangerous than the monster. Yeah. 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 And so I'm kind of, I was interested in what the movie did and how mm-hmm. they utilized his character. I was, I was like, oh, this is a, yeah. I'm like, like, yeah. He's, like a, he's like a stepdad who's trying. Yeah. 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 Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And it works. That's his role. It like, works. But he's also got to feel the, like, oh, I have to kill monsters and keep you alive from them as right. well. Yeah, like, yeah. It's a yeah. big shoes to fill. It felt like there were more monster moments in this a one than more. the first yeah. one. The scope yeah. is bigger because the story takes off in three, I think, narrative directions, mm-hmm. which are yeah. then cross cut, which I kind of liked because basically Basically, the Quiet Place movies to me are like um, they're examples of like almost strictly just suspense based visual storytelling, you know, where they're going to. I mean, they're almost silent because that's part of the conceit. Right. right? Mm -hmm. But we can't talk because the monsters will come and get us. So it's like they're going to be silent film, uh, you know, just extended tension 
uh, mm-hmm. you know, like to the almost to the breaking point, yeah. and then it, to have multiple stories all cut together. Uh, all leading to like a climax. I was like, I was really impressed by this movie. I yeah. guess. Was, yeah. and considering it, how much he has directed, this is maybe like his third movie, right? I think because he may have done Promised Land. Oh, he, okay, yeah. okay. I think he did okay. that and A Quiet yeah. Place Part One and the two. Like he is, he, he's shown a deafness to it, like you said. Right, yeah. and like, surprisingly, and yeah. like a big fear going into this one is obviously the first movie is all leading up to, like, seeing the monsters for the first time and figuring out a way to kill them. So it's like, after that, it's like, okay, where do you go? I, a movie like that. I was kind of against this movie existing. I, yes. I was like, I was, it felt like it didn't need to right, exactly. exist. Like yeah. Yeah. It, so it, we were all going into this thinking, like, this movie doesn't need to exist. I was, like, what are they going to yeah, do? I was, like, in the negative on this movie going right. into watching it because I was like, this is unnecessary. Yeah, yeah. But and then watching it, when you see it. And then watching it, it's like, they nailed it. Blake, yeah. and you yeah. miss it, Jaman Hansu, too. Holy yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's like, oh, okay, he's gone. Because yeah. well, they brought in the scope of, of the story out, and I guess it is kind of that thing of, you know, like, you didn't think that you needed it, but it is kind of interesting to watch this family kind of picking up the piece, even though they're already, you know, living in a, a post-apocalyptic right. environment, right, right. Mm-hmm. but picking up the pieces of dealing with the f- destruction of their familial unit. You yeah, know? right. In the first one, it was like, this was actually kind of compelling. I, mm-hmm. I don't know. I Sean, really you're it. the only parent. Do you find this relatable with how, like, the kids just make it as difficult as possible to well, get through I mean, the shit? Well, I mean, that is always yeah. apparent. That is always a feeling every parent has, yeah. making it difficult as possible. It's been a while <laughs> since I've seen the movie, but yes, that is definitely it. Um, I also, um, like you're saying, what I like about these movies is that they feel... They feel big. They feel big. They feel small. They you get a lot of feelings from this, but also that um, it feels big, but also that the story is all very small. Like their accomplishments by the time they get to the end of the movie, it's not we have to save the world. Right. Right. We just have to do this thing. Right. Yeah. It's just these people surviving. Right. And it's right. A, kind of a continuous. Well, but it like, does have that kind of like we are. You know by. By this information that we're able to spread, it right. can help save the world. You got it that can, at the end of right. the first but one. We are, yeah. we're, we're slowly, smallly going yeah. there, I yeah. think, right. with like, here's our obstacle, we have to get over for this, and I think they've done it twice, where it's like, all right, we achieve that, we're out. Right. Yeah. They, I know. They, they, they go, yeah. credit. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, oh, bam, you're we done. We got past this point. We didn't save the world, but we got past this obstacle for this family yeah. and this yeah. story. And we're out. Although, and I love that abrupt ending. Right. Yes. Yeah. I'm like, that <laughs> makes me want, like, all right, I'll take another one if you have. Well, it leaves you wanting <laughs> yeah. more. I mean, yes. it yeah. ends on a high note. Like, yes. uh, what was it? Kramer, or no, uh, George from Seinfeld. Leave yes. on a high note. I'm out. Yeah. Um, but I, I do always kind of just wonder with these movies, like how come uh, no um, group of survivors said we're going to build next to a waterfall? Oh. Yeah, because that was established in the first yeah. movie. Yeah, yeah it's oh, like yeah. The, the monsters can't yeah. stand loud noises. Yeah. And so, like, a, and that would camouflage your talking. And, like, right. I'm sure you can find a body of water that yeah. has a, and, like, there should be a community built. Why, why, the third one. Yeah. Why is the <laughs> second movie not take place at Niagara Falls? Why is right. there not a yeah, whole yeah, settlement yeah. around right. Niagara yeah. Falls? Yeah, yeah, you exactly. Know? We got to get to because, Niagara Falls. Yeah. Because, oh, yeah, we'll get to Niagara Falls. That'd yeah. be a movie. We'll get, yeah. that, if you're already there, there's no movie. Right. But I think that's, like, the direct to video little spinoff thing. We're just like, yeah. Quiet place. They just pitched Niagara. Quiet Place Three. A Quiet yeah. Place Niagara. Yeah. Like, but they they didn't. They made like four Jarhead movies. I feel like they could make three of these and I do like direct videos. There could and... be such a great uh, Office Quiet Place Niagara crossover. Oh, for sure. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's Why right, there. right there. Yeah, yeah. it's so just right there. Yeah. Jumping out of the falls yeah. and then cut. Yeah, right at <laughs> Pam and Jim when they're getting married right. and he yep. jumps out. Oh, we could it's do right. Chucky, we could do we this. We could cut yeah. it in like it's this right is how his tie gets cut. Yeah. Because one of the monsters swiped it. There you go. got tie. Sean, that's your project for next week. Yeah. Can do. Well, Sean, what's your number four? Oh my God, my number four. That's a good question. Let's see what it is oh number four should surprise no one it's zola oh, the o- you're the only person that saw that movie, oh, the movie that was got- specifically only marketed to sean zola leads the independent spirit award nominations right now says, just, says I, just wanna, you. I just want to put that out there i'm pretty i, I read it i skimmed Wait, an this, article is this your independent today. award <laughs> i skimmed an article today but i did like this movie i saw this movie way earlier in the year and it felt like one of those it's and we've not, been hearing about it ever since. Really it has turned into yeah. the law. Yeah. It's the longest running joke because Sean always brings it up and none of us have ever even heard of it, let alone no, seen I the have, trailer. I have I have seen the trailer. I no. have I was I But how it, recently have you seen the trailer? Um I was back when he was talking oh, okay. about it. But oh, I but think I, I think when you were talking about it, I had seen something for yes. it like in a feed or whatever. But I told you that there was it was like a couple months ago. I was 
I just like walked into the room and it was on my TV, like the actual movie. I was like, what the fuck is this? Then I hit info. I was like, it's the movie. It's them. <laughs> and then I sat there watching it for like five minutes. I'm like, this is the fucking movie he's been talking about. Like it was not See, at all. Watching for five minutes <laughs> no. gives it, you give it no shot to be, but it, it's, um, it's a good movie. All right. I'm going to give some background information. Okay. Well, what's it about? Yeah, well, yeah, I know okay. nothing about the people who have never right. heard of it. Lay it on us. Right, hold on. I'm going to give you the, uh, present us with the Zola. <laughs> the IMDB. Okay. Uh, where to go? Okay, here it is. Uh, Zola, a Detroit waitress, is seduced into a weekend of stripping in Florida for some quick cash. She strips on the side. Uh, but the trip becomes a sleepless 48-hour odyssey involving a nefarious friend, her pimp, and her idiot boyfriend. But this is and significant because it's and like... shenanigans <laughs> in Sue. Shenanigans in Sue. It's like game night or whatever. <laughs> Date night. It's like one of those movies. Huh? Kind of. Not yeah. as like... Uh, uh, there's no action scenes <laughs> okay. in, in the movie. This feels like a more smaller down to... Uh, um, uh, it felt like Spring Breakers or something yeah, like it, that. Yeah, it is kind of like that. It's just like but this, this is crazy based shit on happened in a weekend. Like some TikTok videos? No, no, no. This was based on... Here, I'll give you the thing. It was based on a, a tweet, a series of tweets okay. about the whole oh, God. story. That's, that's how you want a movie to start. Based on a series of tweets. Does it Jesus actually say Christ. that at the beginning? I think so. Oh, Maybe. no. <laughs> We're living in a postmodern you world. Guys, oh, you guys have to give it a chance. Okay, well, all right. Wait, so, who's, who's in it? Who's in it? All right, so uh, t t it's uh, it's an American black comedy crime film as described on Wikipedia, which <laughs> accurately describes it. Okay. It's black comedy. Sure. Um, one of the characters in it is from Succession. I think he also plays a moron in that one as sure. well, so he's done some crossover here. You'll never get me to watch that show. Don't I was buy, like, don't, don't trigger Michaela yep. about yeah, Succession. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> My succession feelings. Oh, yeah. oh, oh yeah. all right. Well, let's she talk about that. She off has mic. very strong feelings about. Oh, that. I want to know about that. <laughs> right. Riley, I just don't want to hear about it anymore. Riley Coe's in okay. it. Yeah. Oh, I love her. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's a lot. <laughs> yeah, that was unnecessary. No, I don't think it was. For as much shit as I've got about this movie for the past year, I don't think so, Howard. All right, uh, I think her name is Janisa. J A N I C Z A. Janisa Bravo. She directed it. Um, it was written by her and Jeremy O'Harris, based on viral Twitter thread by Azia Zola King. Um, it also turned into a Rolling Stone article. It became very famous and went viral. It was a so whole thing. Because it was like, I can't believe this kind of crazy right. shit. Like, this is the weirdest story. Taking yes. hairpin turns. Yep. And so it went from yeah. Twitter to Rolling Stone to movie. Yep. Yes. Okay. And script and all that stuff. So, um, directed by them, it's, uh, I told you it's starring, um, it really is. It, it's kind of like that crazy weekend adventure movie. Like she like gets the Hangover. Yeah, but less better. slick. Okay, Le or less slick. Very indie looking. Le less slick, funnier. I think it's it's a uh, it's. It may not always be something you haven't seen before in certain areas, but um, it's. I think it's good acting. Uh, I think it's very good acting. Uh, again, Riley Kell is very fun. Mm -hmm. The twists in it are very fun. It's very funny because there's just some. Like I said, one of the characters is just playing a really a moronic boyfriend who got brought in for the weekend. Um, I Riley like Co is that's Elvis's granddaughter. Elvis's granddaughter, right? yeah. Yeah. yeah, and she was yeah. in. Uh, she was in Mad Max. The Lodge. The Lodge. That's the one that I also didn't like. Um, it's I like this movie because it's uh, I, I, the story is fun. Like the whole movie from front to back, not just five minutes of it. Uh, I'm going to go after you for this one. Um, it's also, it's directed by a woman. It's uh, based on the whole, uh, the whole story is from um, a few different women. Um, and they, I, I like that they managed to do this whole movie about strippers uh, a, a weekend away where they're essentially conning men into, uh, or figuring out how to con or to get men to have sex with one of them and, one of them's a moron, and so Zola is trying to figure out like this is how this is how you sell ass basically, and they go through that. But they also do all of this without. I don't think there's one stitch of female nudity in the movie. Bravo! Which, right? Yeah. Which uh, look, I'm a big fan of female nudity, <laughs> but sure, no, yeah, I get it. But <laughs> time and place. There's, yeah, time, there's and place. A time and place. And yeah. the fact that they made this movie about this subject matter without doing that. Like that was an automatic bravo because yeah. while also That's but clever like it, thank you for right. smoking exactly. with yeah. no smoking exactly like, exactly exactly, exactly. It's like, exactly. Good. I'm glad we can do that and still be entertained by it the men don't come off as easily like the customers of it there's some mm -hmm. there's dong in this movie Michaela this is for yeah, you yeah because we right. we've yeah. talked about not enough dong <laughs> right. in movies there yes is, yeah. there is some but it's also like people you think would go to see prostitutes yeah. or, or sex workers what have you and so you don't necessarily want to see them naked but 
They're there. That's, oh, all right, it's something. It's yeah. something. It's a start. There's some there's some wild stuff it's in the movie. There's some cheeky. Yeah. Right, huh? <laughs> there's some really funny stuff in the movie. As much of a joke as it's turned into, I think you should all give it a chance and watch it. I, I think mean, it's would... an original story. Yes. Yeah. And I don't know about you guys when I was compiling my list, anything that was an original story moved up farther yeah. on yes, my list absolutely. than something that wasn't. Absolutely. So I can respect that. I definitely have a lot of respect of it for being uh, something original. At yes. Least. And, and that's, sure. what, that's what drew me to it yeah. because, like I said, I think I, I clicked on a trailer once on Instagram. And for the and your re- whole next, life changed. For the next six months, that is the only fucking trailer I saw. I'm like, I have to see this movie. Otherwise, I think I'm failing some algorithm somewhere. So they got me to the theater for it. Um, I thought it was very good. I think a lot of people would enjoy this movie. Again, it's not some big extravaganza. It's a smaller movie, but it's entertaining. And I, that's all it needs to be. So uh, Zola is my number four for the year. Mm-hmm. Holly, your number four for the my year. My number four um a movie that I think we were all really excited about last night in Soho. Uh, I loved this movie. I have not seen it. Yet. You have not seen it. Okay, I'm not going to spoil okay. anything. Don't worry. Um, but yeah, I think we were all really excited about this movie. Because we love Edgar Wright. We, were, we the love table. Edgar Wright. Yeah. And I do lo- want to see this yeah. movie, yes. As you were just saying, like original content. I was so excited just to see a trailer for original content. Yeah. And then watching this trailer, I was so stoked for this movie. It's beautiful. And the trailer is like vague. Which it's a it's great, very vague. It's a great which trailer. We love. Though. We all talk about how like, trailers nowadays show everything. They show way too much. I'm just looking at you. So vague. Any Blumhouse production right. ever? Yeah. Hey nice guys, I've be... already seen Black Phone. I don't need to go see it. <laughs> yeah, I know. Right? 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 Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's nice to be intrigued or enticed. Right. You yeah. Know, it, so you when know, people, yeah, I still have no idea what that movie. Yeah. So like, when people are like, yeah. oh. Like I'd be like, oh, I can't wait to see Last Night. So they're like, well, what's that? What what's it about? I was like, I have no I, idea. It, it's the sixties, and <laughs> right, <laughs> there's some horror going on, right? <laughs> like that's and about it, it. Yeah, it's it's just Edgar Wright's doing something completely different from what he used to do. Mm-hmm. He is going in new directions that I think is so exciting. I love watching this progression. You know, I I love the days of Hot Fuzz and Shaun of the Dead. I love that Edgar Wright, but. He's doing something totally different now, and I totally appreciate this version. We were all like, big fans of Baby Driver, too. Yes, I think if you absolutely. go back and listen to our 2017 Best of the Year, I know that was probably yeah. my number two or three. I Even think. that. Yeah. Pilgrim vs. the World. <laughs> you're you're yes. on an island with that. <laughs> you are alone in that yeah. one, sir. No one's going to back you up on that. Right, Sorry. Yeah. I tried. Can't do it. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so he's... Baby Driver was a, was a new step, and now with Last Night in Soho, it's just really cool to see his progression as a director. Um, you know, not even necessarily that... I think he's gotten better as a director, but it's not even that. Like, the content, just to see that he's able to do these different things, I think it's really cool. And it's a singular did, vision. And it's co- all him. He yeah. did write it. He co-wrote that movie. Yeah. So, yeah. But yeah. He, he did also all of his movies, right? He's yeah. also a writer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. he's written all yeah. of them, yeah. And that's, Except for Scott You are Pilgrim. getting 100%. Well, Scott Pilgrim was adapted from a... Uh, Manga, uh, manga. manga. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so mm-hmm. that, and that that's the problem count that's the problem <laughs> <laughs> um but this movie it's so stylish it's so glamorous the soundtrack is amazing i love the soundtrack it's all 60s it's so good i love it's, it's yeah, seriously, that's why i was telling you to see how, that's why i was telling trailer. you to see it i was trying not to like beat you over that too much with it but i saw it before you I was like holly go see it because i was like i knew the soundtrack like from the jump it starts oh, with it so i knew you jump. would be into it okay i gotta ask you though because yeah. how do you feel about thomas mckenzie's voice because that was a struggle for me she's like a pixie or something I mean, she's got like a baby voice and it's it's yeah. a little tough to listen and I know to she's sometimes. from New Zealand. And I know she can't right? help it, but. but she's doing like I don't know. You know, I know in London there are different dialects based on what part of the city like you're and from. And she's so. from like the country. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. I I didn't mind it so much because I really liked I really liked Jojo Rabbit, so I was already accustomed to her voice. She was an old too, wasn't yeah. she? She was. Yeah, yes. I still haven't seen that. Mm-hmm. Should have watched that before the show. Um, <laughs> so I, I was already accustomed to her voice. I love Jojo Rabbit. So gotcha. I knew going okay. in that she's got that like for the character soft, it works. Yeah, too. it works because she's supposed to be very naive and, and sheltered and sheltered. So I feel like she's like her. If you're going by like voice casting, it really worked <laughs> for this. Um, but I loved that there's I know we talked about a lot. It was um, we're debating like from the trailer if it was going to be like a noir movie, if it was going to be like a, a giallo kind of movie, which I think it has those elements of both. Um, All of the above. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like it's 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 got supernatural. It's got like the murder. It's got uh, like whodunit murder mystery. It's got the stuff. chicken it's, roaster episode of Seinfeld. It really it. does. <laughs> Um, so it's got like a little bit of everything. It's it popped it, up a lot in this year. <laughs> but okay, but like I'm not exaggerating with this because like 
it's not really a spoiler, but like the device that creates the red and blue light in her, in that movie is a literal restaurant sign. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I'm not exaggerating no. when I say it's the chicken roaster episode. Because it, it is. literally is a restaurant sign that creates <laughs> that lighting. It is. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's it's just got it's got some great elements. I think the cast is fantastic. Everyone does an amazing job. Um, and it's like the ending I thought was great. It the storytelling is fantastic. It really does take you to places that I wasn't expecting, uh, which we always appreciate in writing. I think every one of us here we have a knack for predicting movies and we get annoyed by that. And this one did some things that like I wasn't expecting. I thought was really cool. Um, so yeah, as excited as I was about last night in Soho, I was not disappointed. So well, for the folks who saw the trailer are still like on the fence. Cause they don't know what it's about. What is the movie about? Uh, oh, well, a fashion wanna, student yeah. goes to the big city and things go bad. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, I, I don't know how else to say it without spoiling it. <laughs> <Yeah. anything. laughs> I don't want to hear it. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you know that there are things that take place in the 1960s. And yeah, it, does, yeah. it mo- does go back and forth yeah. between modern day and 1960s. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So there, there's some back and forth. I won't say how or why, mm-hmm. um, but there is a connection between both time periods. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's a mystery. There is a mystery. Yeah. That connects them. There is, uh, yeah. It's, Blink and you miss it. Sam Claflin, too. Yeah. He's in it for a second. Like a brief right, yeah, yeah, I saw yeah. him in the credits. I was like, wait what where yeah. was he and then i was like oh okay when i backtracked i was like all right yeah but even uh diana rig and terrence stamp uh, They're great. you know i mean who I, you know obviously like, i think that's you know edgar wright looking back at like you know he's a, a film student right mm-hmm. and, and so there it's packed with kind of visual or thematic references mm-hmm. to like all these you know london set uh thrillers and stuff yeah, right. like that or dramas um, yeah. But it's nice that he remembers, you know, like obviously Diana Rigg and Terrence. It's her yeah. last role like, too, right. like, it's yeah. her, and that's a good last. It role. is a good last role. And, yeah, because yeah, I looked yeah. at both of them. You know, it's like for being, you know, elder statesmen of the London acting scene. You know, actually do have like roles. You know, it's right. not just yeah. like the in the, the Vincent D'Onofrio role. Yeah, whatever. exactly. It explains yeah. everything. It's like they have you know mm-hmm. roles in the movie. Yeah, yeah. integral kind of, parts in the movie. And yeah. for the audience, Diana Rigg, you might know her as Lady Olenna Tyrell in Game of Thrones mm-hmm. or um, Emma Peel in the original British Avengers way back in the day. But yeah. she's been around for forever. <laughs> she's fantastic. She's and wonderful. She, in this movie, she's especially great. Anya Taylor-Joy, mm-hmm. she does yep. fantastic. Yep. I mean, Terrence Stamp, Terrence Stamp, is great, especially because he yeah. doesn't have a ton of screen time, but he's great when yeah. he's on screen. Matt yeah. Smith, Matt always, Smith always delivers. Excellent, I love Matt mm-hmm. Smith. Um, and like swinging sixties London is a character in this movie. Like, yeah, it's mm-hmm. just okay. it's yeah. really glamorous so and beautiful, and, and you can't help but be seduced by it. Yeah, like, exactly, you just yeah. can't. It, you yeah. just some it's so it's, appealing. Yeah. I think that was part of his, you know, the draw to it. I mean, last night in Soho, Soho. Obviously, we have a New York Soho, but Soho right. in London, London to me has yeah. always right. meant like. Uh, you know, it's a specific moment in time, right? Yeah. Well, it's you know? always been like a neighborhood that seems right. like it's, you know, kind of skeevy or whatever, you know, like bohemian and, you know, all this other stuff. But I think that's his appeal. He's looking at the uh, like the glitz and the attractiveness of it mm-hmm. and also the underbelly, the yeah. ugly side, yeah. the yeah. ugly side yeah. of it. Yeah. And yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 I, last line Soho was solid. I, I, I really didn't know where to put it on my top because... And like I, I, it's, I loved it. I love seeing something that's one person's singular vision. You know, yeah, like absolutely. I, I, we so rarely get that nowadays. It feels mm-hmm. like so. And like, even if it's not perfect, it still means a lot to me that it was one person's. I don't want to say passion project because that's like a curse term. But right. Like, yeah. It, this isn't a uh, singular ice cold vision. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. That. Yeah. No. Yeah. This was the payoff. Was was great. Right. Yeah. It's, it's a great mm-hmm. movie. Mm-hmm. So, Michaela, what's your number four? All right, my number four. Is a movie that really took me by surprise. It's Pig. Pig. Yes, yes. Um, this is going to go on my depression playlist. Of oh like, yeah. When yeah. I Absolutely. when I am in a dark place, I'm going to rewatch Pig. I will say up front, listeners, it is depressing. Like it's, yeah. It 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 will subvert your expectations, but it will not redeem those expectations. Mm-hmm. So go into annoying that. Like, don't watch it when you're in a bad place because it's not going to make you feel any yeah, better. You're not going to get that fun cage rage, yeah. happy no, feeling. No, no, no. No. Um, no, uh, no, no, no. Save that for the Nick Cage movie where he plays Nick Cage. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, the unbearable price of freedom or yeah, what? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Fame, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So Pig is a movie by Mark- Michael Sarnowski. It is his first film, which, holy shit, if this is this guy's first film, I can't wait to see what he does next. Um Nick Cage is a truffle uh, hunter in rural Oregon All who has a truffles. truffle pig. Yes, yeah, that he has a truffle, he has pig. A truffle pig. Truffle and pig. the way this story unfolds and the things it reveals about him are just oh. so good. 
and so unexpected. Mm-hmm. Like everyone calls it John Wick with a pig. That's not what this That's movie is. That's not what this is. It, it no. is the same template, but it the way the character reacts in the situations are completely different. I was yeah. going to say, there's a lot of places you can go in that John Wick template. There's no cage rage in this movie. Nope. There's no freak outs. There's no, he is, he's conveying normal human emotion. Yeah. I wonder, is this like, a, is it a response to the John Wick I think and the so. Takens and the nobodies or whatever? Because it seems like it plays better if you are aware of the conventions of those movies. Exactly. Right? Because, I mean, we're saying this, but... It is like it follows that template to a T. It does, you know, you but the, guy the choices who, he makes are different. Yeah, is yeah. The, yeah that's yeah. the difference because there's a part early on that you think it's, it's going to kick your, off, yeah, 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 and it does. Every time I expected like, oh yeah. shit, it's like, nope, we're yeah. going to find a different solution to this. Yeah. I'm like, huh. and it, and at first I <laughs> it didn't was expect it. Yeah, it was unexpected only because unexpected. you've been now trained by yeah. those other movies. Yes, like, this is how this works. But his he is so give Nick Cage the fucking Oscar for this movie. He oh, is yeah. so, so good. good. There were moments in this movie I cried that I did not expect to cry. Yep. Like I went into this being like, okay, it's not going to end up well for the pig because it's John Wick, right? So I expect like I expected that kind of sadness, but the sadness this movie actually delivered was not what i expected and the like there's a c- scene where he just looks at a character and he goes because i love her oh, and the way he God. says that yeah. i just i lost I it fucking it's lost, so lost it it's, <laughs> the simplicity of it the simplicity of him just being the way he just it's plainly so said because gentle. i love her it's so gentle it's, yeah. oh, it's so pure i just couldn't in the year 2021 oh we're yeah. talking about a it nick cage movie fucking... and i love it yeah I, I didn't expect any of this and it the, this movie is so gentle and delicate and it but i feel like in a time when movies are so emotionally closed off and like we, we've talked about before how there's no romance and no sensuality or seduction in movies anymore mm-hmm. this movie is showing a figure that is incredibly masculine, but he verbalizes his feelings. Like I said, yeah. he says, because I love her, he he explains what he's feeling. Yep. And he is opening himself up to vulnerability yes. in a way that's really admirable. And I respect every single fucking choice this movie made, whether as a viewer it felt good or not. Mm-hmm. And that takes balls to make your audience suffer like this. Yeah. And still I'll come out of it being like, that was a fucking good movie. Yes. You know, like, oh, for sure. And Alex Wolf is great. Um, yeah, from the kid from uh, oh, yeah, Hereditary. yeah, he's in yeah. it. He's great. Yeah, he's very good. Um, Adam Arkin has one scene mm-hmm. that is incredibly memorable. One of the amazing. Oh, didn't recognize oh him. yeah, know, me too. The, but the dressing down he gives him is so like Ooh. when I say dressing down, you're probably thinking like, oh, you fucking piece of shit. No, no, he is very much like we don't get a lot to care about in this world. And he goes and you, I, I think about that all the time now. I think right. about that speech he gave, and I'm just like, damn. Damn, that was <laughs> that was legit. Well, it works and, because again, we're talking about a movie where the the character and the writing is important. And, and yeah. it's like they know who each other. They, yeah, and they know who they are. Yeah, and so they can talk to them that yes. way. It's not just you know. And it's beautifully like, shy. It's that, well made. It's that speech that you're talking yeah. about. I remember watching. It changed it. my life. I feel. I like. remember watching it, and I was thinking this should be as like public as like yes. Independence Day. Everyone speech. needs to see this. Everyone set. should see know this. it like yeah. that movie. Like, yes. Oh, and I, I, I felt the need after I watched this movie. I was like, I have to tell everyone I know to go watch this movie. That's how I felt. Like, yeah. and but it's a hard sell because it I is mean, a hard sell. You told me to watch it, and you're like, you're gonna like it. Yeah, and I'm like, it's a guy, and he loses. You think you know what's gonna happen, yeah, right? I think that's yeah. it. The the impression because it's Nicolas Cage in a movie where he loses his pig and goes on the warpath, and you're like, yeah, okay. You know, yeah. I could not, I could not believe that I was the first one in this group to watch it. Yeah, I'm yeah, not yeah. Lie. yeah. It's a much better <laughs> movie me. than <laughs> that would that. Where'd you guys watch it? To think it's on who. Hulu. You okay. can stream yeah. it for free right now. And the n- next day, like when I finished it, I wasn't sure how I felt about it because it was so not the movie I expected. Yeah. But the next day, I was thinking about it all day, and I was like, I respect the fuck out of that movie for not being mm-hmm. what I expected. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and for, for sure. and for being beautifully shot and well acted and well written and like just really getting at me emotionally in a way I did not expect. You know, mm-hmm. like I said, when you hear John Wick with a pig, you're like, okay, so the animal's going to die and that it's going to be vengeance. So you're like emotionally prepared for that. Yeah. But then what actually happens in this movie is so different that you're just like gut punched from like you're blindsided by it, you know? And yeah. sounds like he loves that pig. It's, I mean, he does, <laughs> but 
But and there's all there's these reasons. There's that, so there's much like more. Mystery. There's like, layers to like it. Like a John Wick, you know, like yeah. when he walks into rooms, characters are like, "Who are you?" you or know, they like, say things or they like, "You know, like there's a past," and so the movie's yep. filling yeah. in his past as it. Or goes. they'll say things like, "Your name doesn't mean anything around here anymore," and you're like, "Wait, what?" Yeah, 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 yeah. you know, yeah, like, it means something. Yeah, yeah. Tell us more. That's exactly it. The whole movie. Yeah, it's that same. It's so and the the way it unravels is. Like I said, oh. it's delicate and it's heartfelt and it's emotionally available and it's mm-hmm. letting me in. And I appreciate it's letting me in, even if it doesn't feel good to be in, mm-hmm. you know? And it takes a lot of courage to make a movie like this. And I respect the fuck out of that. Yeah. And there is a cover of Bruce Springsteen's I'm on Fire that oh, plays a big role in this so movie. Good. And that was the final, like, I'm crying again. Didn't yep. expect that. Like, I, and I love I like, that song. I hope you make those announcements while you're watching the movie. I, I'm, I'm crying totally- again. He's never going to watch it because I watched it when he wasn't home. And then when he came home, I was like, he was like, I was like, oh, I watched Pig. And he's, he's like, like, why are you an emotional well, wreck? Yeah. He was like, how'd you feel? I was like, it was bleak. I was like, but I loved it. And he was like, well, I'm not watching that. And I was like, you should, though. You're like, I'm yeah. devastated. Yeah. Watch but it. I, but, but I like to, we, this is well documented. Yeah. I like to leave movies being emotionally devastated. Oh, yeah. So yeah, if you feel that way, like. I mean, Nicole so Kidman yeah. said it best. Right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, uh, all right. I think we, we don't get any more picks. That's yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Podcast. No, but Nicole this Kidman is, was right. No, she is right. The, her, heartbreak does feel good here. It I does know. feel good yeah. in this movie. Uh, but oh, All right. We can never shit the, talk to Nicole Kidman ever again but ever. like <laughs> if you would have told me i would have watched a nick cage's movie movie this year that had a cover of bruce springsteen that made me cry i would have been like what the fuck like I know. I know. but the context like that corona you, got to your brain yeah the context <laughs> that the context of everything but especially the context of that song is and then this is another movie that's and we're out you yeah. know it's and we're out we're done. uh go watch pig it's there's a lot to love. You know, I would put yeah. it higher, but it's just, it's so sad. It's, so sad. <laughs> it's just so sad, you know, like, yeah. but, it, but Nick Cage, he's back, baby. Like he's back. <laughs> oh. He's back in the like leaving Full Las force. Vegas level back, Full baby, force. you know, like Might he be my fucking favorite deserves Cage it. Yeah. And I can't wait yeah. to say, see what this guy does next. Yeah. And but, I thank you for picking it. Cause yeah. again, that's why I didn't yeah, pick it. Yeah, Cause, cause I knew you're you, clearly, you, you know how much I was talking about it. You're like, yeah. Yeah, our top five. Yeah. She's in a pick. Yeah, yeah. I don't need to. So, Colin. Um, I know it's kind of a force right now, but can you imagine when Nick Cage is like Clint Eastwood old? Yeah, shit he'll be doing. I hope he starts yeah. directing. Oh, I can't wait. Yeah. I can't wait. Sean, I think you would like Pig. I think. I think you oh no, would I'm, like, yeah. I'm like I'm yeah. down. Like, I feel especially like, you guys talking about. I'm like I'm down for yeah. Pig. Let's I watch feel pig. like if I could leave now just, and watch Pig, I would just go watch Pig. Have a movie planned that's like an upper to watch right. after it. You know? And I feel like people should get a warning. Um, you will want Nick Cage to shower this entire movie, and he never does. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's filthy. <laughs> just, just live with the filth. Just, yeah. you, just go with it. I'm sorry, it yeah. doesn't get better. Yeah. Just deal with that. Okay. Yeah. And if you if you're someone who doesn't like Adam Arkin and especially doesn't like him like H two O, this is the movie for you because you yeah. have to see him yeah, dress yeah, the fuck yeah. down in this movie. Yeah, so. you'll like it. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Colin, what's your number four? Yes, I've been um, holding that grudge since H two O. Fuck you, Adam Arkin. You would probably like that scene a lot, Sean. Yeah, it's oh, a, I'm it's watch a good scene. It's All a right. good scene. That sounds good. Well, I don't know if uh, uh, so. There's there's a movie that's not on my list that I'm just going to mention here really quick because an we, honorable mention. We devoted an entire episode to it, and that was Malignant. And yeah. uh, I, so I was going to put that on my list yeah. too, but I didn't because we did a whole episode. On it. I do think Malignant is in right. the top five so, of the year, but yeah. this, mine was always there. Just like, well, we did a whole episode, and it's yeah. Not, yeah. But I think so we need to say that it is our, probably is this our universal honorable mention? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So it's not on so, anybody's so, list. No, no, not on no, because we did an episode. We talked about it. Yeah. Okay. Did a whole episode I was like, it. I can't put it on my list because we did an episode. Yeah, on. it would yeah. not have made my top five regardless. But See, I, think, I think it would have made yeah. mine. It yeah, would have made yeah. mine too for sure. It's a but. fun movie. Mm-hmm. It is. It's so yeah. Go listen yeah, it's to that. Ep- it's go listen to that episode, yes. and it yeah. is an honorable mention. For it all may of us. be. Mm-hmm. You know what? You're right. It maybe could have made this list considering mm-hmm. I was struggling at the end. I'm just like ah, yeah, mm-hmm. I could have done it. Yeah. Um, but my number four. Okay, so um, I have. Uh, I think you know. Actually, prior to this podcast, uh, Sean and I were talking about uh, last week's uh, movie that we did, um, Night Train to Terror, sure. and how that was like a movie that it Dan- started. It off as three different movies and was cut together, and I was kind of interested in the reasons why people can take a movie and chop it up and make it into something else, and then later you see the other version of it, and you're like, "What was the thinking for changing this?" And so that means that my number four is Zack Snyder's Justice League. <laughs> oh, COVID brain has got you, Colin. Right. Wow. 
Yeah. This is a strange yeah. journey that I went I, on. Because, oh, no, this is a journey. Yeah, this is a journey because I did not like Man of Steel. Right. Um, As, well, I mean, we did a three and a half hour podcast. On I, I didn't like it either, but looking back on it now, I like it a lot more than I thought I did. It, it I mean, I haven't gone back to that one because no, there's, there's parts I just I. can't. You guys are scarred. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I don't think it's... it's it I mean, I wasn't part of the three hour episode, I so I can either. look back Thank on God. it. You know? Yeah. And then there was Batman versus Superman, which is a strange... I have a strange relationship relationship with that movie because i sit there and watch like objectively like this is wrong this is wrong this is bad but somehow it is compulsively watchable i can keep on going back and watch it i don't understand so you're like guilty pleasure i guess that is the the definition because, of guilty pleasure well, it's it like your still, brain's telling you like it's still, <laughs> this isn't good but it's like still I batman enjoy it. and superman <laughs> yeah the maybe re- at this point it is the representations of these two characters that we get and so you're just like and they're talking to each other like there is that intrinsic, these two characters who we don't see together are together on a big movie in front yeah, of us. but and there's I, just like choices that he makes, I oh, think, yeah. that I disagreed with at the time that over, uh, you know, through, you know, attrition, I guess. So you're just like, oh, they're giving this like this kind of realistic, or, you know, this gritty Michael Bay realism, which I'm like, I don't think these characters Quote, unquote, deserve realism, this. yeah. <laughs> but... Realism in a movie where they could just be like, "Hey, we should talk for about five minutes, to figure some shit out." Yeah, and none of this shit would happen. Yeah, but nothing I digress. makes any sense. And there's this uh, sequence in the movie uh, called the "quote unquote" nightmare, which was uh, with a K, the you know, the Dark Knight uh, nightmare, mm-hmm. which made absolutely no sense at the time, and I think has been kind of retrograded, uh, or it was part of like this larger plan. Is so this where he's branding motherfuckers. Yeah, in the future where Superman hates Batman and there's like a war and there's all this stuff. But that's obviously now in hindsight, like, okay, they planned for this. You they were gonna I still don't think their execution was good, but they planned. So there was like this this big like several several year plan to do these things with these superheroes. And when you actually then we get the Justice League, the the Joss Whedon one, and I hated that movie. I hated it. I'm like, everything mm-hmm. about this is just like terrible Mm -hmm. yeah and so i'm like okay this is everybody's talking about the snyder cut and whatever i'm gonna watch it it's four fucking hours long but it's the snyder cut colin literally years and years people have been talking about that's yeah but so that's where i can't determine like i don't believe they went and did reshoots i think this was the original intention i think it's just all effects work and well, I, I do think obviously that they had you know we're going to change Steppenwolf's design because yep. we're going to oh, yeah. you know separate them from them. But they changed all the the characters' motivations are then different and enhanced, and you get like a greater appreciation for like the structure of the movie is told in these like four chapters, and they actually do flesh out like who these people are. I mean, I guess for this story, yeah, right, which kind of takes the DC heroes and like amps it up to something akin to i know everybody says it but i mean it's a apt comparison like the lord of the rings you know like this is a big story that spans universes and you know it goes back into the the ancient history of mankind and there is like a solitary uh antagonist which i don't think uh the original the theatrical version had that steppenwolf and the stupid mother boxes and all this stuff yeah. and it was like this is just dumb but when you see it under the context of dark side it's like oh so there is like a plan i know who this guy is i understand what his motives are and i understand like wh- how the team is like underpowered in order to have to uh, to deal with them and so it kind of earns this uh you know resurrection of superman thing that the the first one just kind of blew through by the time you get (laughs) to that in this one you have gone through two hours plus of the movie and it feels like okay we're finally you know and it seems like there's more of a like that is something that the at least first half of the movie is building to so it's like a two-hour movie just building to even bringing him back and then the second half is then how you deal with the uh the antagonist um I think Zack Snyder still creates um, several sins of hubris because he adds these completely unnecessary sequences to the end of the movie that, I mean, this is the thing, right? He created a multi-year vision, which began with uh, Man of Steel and was supposed to, I think, continue past uh, this Justice League movie. And then... I think it was the studio got um, wind of, you know, like they were afraid after, like, I think Batman versus Superman did like a shitload of business, but the critical reception was so bad and the Suicide Squad 
did a shitload of business, but it was badly so. received. That was also Better. a movie that came out this year. The second one? No, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's right. Movie Fog. Forgot about and the that. first yeah. one, I think, the now looking back on it, I think they re- engineered Suicide Squad based on the how they had changed Justice League. So that would have been different. You would have had Steppenwolf in that movie, uh, and they changed it because I think they were concerned with the Marvel movies, um, like kind of they were uh, fun, you know? Mm -hmm. Or yeah. these ones were like <laughs> that not called fun, fun you know? <laughs> you know? Um, but that's, you know, his focus is more on treating these characters like, you know, they're gods, mm -hmm. you know, uh, they're superhuman, you know, characters. They have the responsibility of gods, you know, being on the caretakers of this planet and then defending this planet. I don't know. I know I shit on superhero movies all the time. Maybe. OK, so I'm like weeding out. I was like, is there a nostalgic attachment to me to the DC characters over the Marvel characters? And that's possible because I grew up with the okay. super friends and the you know justice league and all that stuff right so i like seeing them but um i really appreciated that the uh, you know like the character of cyborg actually has like a reason for being in this movie uh he's like <laughs> a helpful. significant part of this right. movie and so like he has his own mini movie within it and then the flash i think also benefits a great deal from the restructuring i mean wonder woman batman they all come off better and then you just sit there going like i just i i cannot fathom the mind workings at Warner Brothers who decided to take this four hour thing and hack it down into like an incomprehensible two hour thing uh, and then think that they were going to somehow compete with the Marvel machine. It just it it it, it blows me away. Mm -hmm. But I guess it's out there. It's kind of like that. You know, you have the alternate cuts of uh, uh, what was it? The Exorcist that um, Paul Schrader did, right? Or Rennie Harlan did the other one. And, uh, yeah. The beginning. <laughs> <You know? laughs> So it's it's fascinating to see these movies from like a comparison standpoint, yes. and then you kind of get to like reverse engineer like what the decisions were. But uh, yeah, I don't know. You guys haven't seen it because I don't think that you're necessarily fans of this. Kind <laughs> I of will stuff. never watch this. So I'm confident no. in saying I no. will. Yeah, watch. I'm yeah. not gonna watch it. I want to. I think you I should. If, if you have the interest, I think you should because it I is do. it is much better than the version that we got, and I think it's the best of the three. But again, I think like his hubris. Um, and he's had time, you know, during COVID and all this stuff. And since, you know, whatever that movie came out in 2017 or something, whatever the hell like Justice League wow. came out. I could be wow, wrong. That was a long time ago. It feels yeah. like it was a long time ago. And I might be wrong on that. But, uh, you know, he has changed. Like, obviously, he shot the movie to be shown in widescreen. The other, you know, two were. Mm -hmm. But this one. It was 2017. You were correct. There you go. And now he's like, really? wow. I'm going to I'm going to do it in IMAX square, Time you know, just circle. to be <laughs> yeah. like, who's going to watch this in an IMAX or on a square screen? We're all watching it on 16 by nine TVs. It's like, what are you doing, Je Zack Snyder? And then uh, he tacks on these scenes at the end that are like, you know, the uh, it, you've been basically told by the bosses you're not going any further with this. So he intentionally sets up scenes to carry it on. And like, there, so there's not going to be any closure. Mm -hmm. So that's also disappointing. So. Yeah, uh, not without a stain on it, but I mean, I really enjoyed and, and spent way too much time thinking about uh, Justice League. So that was my number four. <laughs> yeah. So, Sean, what's your number three? All right, my number three, and here's where I delve into television. My number three is going to be Cobra Kai. Yeah. Uh, this movie. Wasn't the, that your number one last year? Yeah, I was like, I'm pretty sure one, it was on your list. Oh, year, it was right? definitely on my list. Yeah. And I think it's going to be on my list every year until this show ends. Because <laughs> I have. I experienced so much joy yeah. watching this show, and for, again, I said my list would be like, uh, nostalgia is a, uh, it's a very comfy pillow uh, when mm -hmm. it comes to my list, but you can do it right, mm -hmm. and you can advance characters, and you can get good writing out of it, and you can have fun with it, and I think Cobra Kai... I may have said this last year. I think is one of the best examples of it. It really is. Yeah, this the season three came out on January first of this year. Season four is going to come out on December thirty first of this year. Yeah. So it's, this is for me the show of the year. We got two seasons this year. Yeah, but it's so fun watching these characters interact and the the premise of it. Like I don't know if you guys remember when it first came out. It's like what if uh, Johnny Lawrence 
was the good guy or like, you know what if uh, uh what's or his, his side of the story yeah, well, yeah it's yeah. his side of the story yeah. which like, that's really funny because that was a j- running joke on how i met your mother and yeah. they basically made a whole show out of that uh-huh. yeah <laughs> what was the running joke is that he was the actual hero of yeah. the story uh, neil, neil patrick harris character like was obsessed with him and he and was convinced he was the hero he was like that, he loved the yeah. karate oh. kid and he was like but not larusso he was the bad guy uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah okay well they take that yeah, conceit yeah. and it's pretty funny and netflix and he ends up being in his wedding yeah, it's pretty funny. Oh, really? It is like a seasons long joke. Did that joke. give yeah. birth to? Wow. That's Cobra what I'm saying. Kai. I think it did. I think it did. I, I think it did. It did. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty good. But this show does so much, and it also like it's taking. It feels like, and I, uh, I talk so. I think we talk so much about um, movies these days, and uh, everyone's got to make the new trilogy. We got to have a new trilogy of Star Wars or a new trilogy of Spider Man and everything. But nobody seems to have a plan for it. Just like we'll make the this one, and then we'll figure it out later on. Mm-hmm. Cobra Kai seems like it has a plan. It teases. It teased uh, a little bit of spoilers here. It teased Elizabeth Shue for like two, three seasons until mm-hmm. it brought her on. But then it did bring her back, and it's bringing back original characters from the first three movies, which I watched a ton as a kid. Yeah. And also, I have a kid who went through karate for five years, so he watched them all. And so, him and me are watching it together now, and it's kind of the ultimate. It's the ultimate father son nostalgia right now. And it's but it's also like there's a lot of father son stuff in the show, mm-hmm. which is what attracts me, but it's also what attracts him. It's like they you are the art the audience that they were looking for. I am I think I'm you exactly are absolutely, the you are audience. Absolutely, I think like, I'm the perfect audience. Like guys that grew up with this are going to watch it with their sons and yes. everyone's going to Which love is it. I think what everybody wants for like if you're going to yeah. put nostalgia inject nostalgia in anything yeah. that's what they want cuz yeah. that's the money. This is a cynical way to look at all of this. But if you do it right, mm-hmm. I'm not going to be cynical about it if I'm enjoying it. Yeah. And this show is enjoyable as hell. Um uh there's nothing I've looked forward to more this year than this show. Um, and they're bringing back more characters for the fourth mm-hmm. season. Terry Silver's coming back. I know. Uh, I'm I'm like, giddily there, excited about this show. There and there hasn't been a lot of characters in the last few years that I like truly root for as much as Johnny Lawrence. <laughs> right? Like <laughs> I, I am rooting again. For him. I say William Zabka should get all the Emmys. I love uh, him. He should at least get one because I think he's doing great work. I think everybody's doing great work. Yeah. I think they're advancing these characters. I don't. I like. I don't mind the kids too. There's a very soap opera soapy aspect to it yeah. but it's all but like i mean who doesn't love that as long as you're not part of the drama what's uh, what's it's tolerable you know, yeah you can <laughs> but i mean even those elements like i find fun if i don't i can discuss it with a kid like it's just, it's a good show mm-hmm. and i uh, i love it so much cobra kai mm-hmm. it's that's my number three that's everyone should be watching this and just have fun with it well, you can't, especially if you're a fan of the karate kid I oh guess, yeah like i'm curious so like there's uh, the, you wait, know, wait, wait, a wait a hillary swank shows up right the yeah fucking, in the, in the next season. Happen, yeah. Yeah. yeah but there's like uh you know since you know hollywood is very nostalgic they've yeah. realized that they can make money off of these things that you know everybody remembers to i think the detriment of creating new yes, content very much so which but, is the hard line you gotta walk with but we're things. saying there are rules where you could do a fan service thing yes. in mm-hmm. a way because obviously Michaela like dexter you mm-hmm. like ghostbusters and and karate kid or cobra mm-hmm. kai mm-hmm. so what are the rules to make because i mean we're living this week the, the matrix is out i mean it's another the right. latest yeah. in the long line of like hey you remember this we're doing another one of them uh, but what is it that uh, like makes What's the formula that makes it work? Yeah, that makes yeah. good ones work because I was going to say it's like, you know, if I see Star Wars and they're making new Star Wars and they're bringing the original cast back, I don't want to see a movie about a new generation of people. I want to see the original cast. Right. right. You know, like it's the follow, follow, you know, in the new adventures of Luke Skywalker, Han Solo right. and Princess but Leia. Dexter has <laughs> struck the perfect balance of that, right? Because there's a lot of new characters on Dexter uh-huh. New Blood, but there's just enough old characters mm-hmm. and a couple surprises. But it's still about it, that works because it's still about Dexter, Dexter and his yeah. ongoing. But like Harry's not in this at all. Yeah. Like and Harry was a huge part of the original series. But they're not know? handing like, the series off to like somebody else. <laughs> Well, I'm hopefully. worried that's how it <laughs> I, I feel like they're, they're setting up for that spinoff right. is what I think. For the yeah. yeah. But but in in that same vein is this is about Johnny and it's about Daniel, yeah, the original has, characters. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you do bring in the new ones, you know, the, right. the new generation, their yeah. kid, like their kids and what they're dealing with, but it is still centered around those characters that we want. Mm-hmm. Yes. Because yeah. their conflict is fueling the whole, yes. the, the reason mm-hmm. for the story to right. exist, right. but it does have new characters in there for, 
uh, you know, it like splits the time. It feels like yes. equally the drama between the drama with Johnny and Daniel and, and then the drama kids, between and the kids, kids switching sides because there's different dojos and allegiances change based on mm -hmm. characters that come in. And, mm -hmm. it and, all and it's, it's all centered around like the, the characters that we love, their growth. Yes, they have their everyone's development. growing because yeah. they, they're, they're opposing. They're together sometimes. They fight. Yeah. They love each other. Like it's it's truly great dynamics, yeah. And it feels it really feels like a continuation from the movies, especially because they bring back and continue storylines with actual characters from all three of those movies. They're yeah. not like we're going to ignore this part, we're going to ignore this part. They're going for everything, and it feels like they're a great continuation of like well, it feels like we picked up with good friends, yeah. Thirty years yeah, later, like, oh yeah, like, this the, and that. I guess the thing that I'm getting at with that is like the Matrix brings back the original characters right, and right. has like you know, but it's like in the case of both the Matrix and maybe Karate Kid, right? Yeah, I was like, okay, you reach the end of the story. It's like you don't really need to go any further. Karate or Cobra Kai figured out a way. I guess maybe through a perspective shift. I mean, yeah, it's like okay, well, let's follow this from John. It was like right. okay, now I'm interested. Well, again. Yeah, yeah, it's it's not only that it's a it's you're following the you know antagonist who's now the protagonist but also they're at a new chapter in life you know before they were kids and yeah. now they're adults dealing with right. the pressures and everything that comes with adult life so it's like you switch character perspectives but you also brought you're in a new period of life yeah you know yeah. it's not neo revisiting no. the matrix but, right but, but <laughs> what makes it work for dexter is that he had a decade of being dormant right so right. he tried to grow he tried to right leave this behind and be a different person. And you get and little blips of that, like, uh, but it's that right under the surface. But it's right it's there, right under the surface. Crack, yeah. And the whole series is about is the when's the pressure going to be too much, and yeah. it, and Dexter's going to be bad. Yeah. You know, but the other yeah. the other Dexter shows like kind of were based off like the murder of the week. There was the yeah. overarching. But this one doesn't have that. That's no. what the difference is. Uh, yeah, there's yes. other dynamics at play took, that keep him interested. If, if you look at previous seasons of Dexter compared to New Blood, he knows there's another serial killer, like second episode of the season. Yeah. This one, it's he still hasn't figured it out. Yeah, so and we're eight episodes in. Yeah. 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 The yeah. structure has changed, but the the way the characters respond to the situation is the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, oh, it's good. It's so good. <laughs> so is Cobra Kai. Cobra Kai. Cobra Kai's very good. <laughs> Looking very much forward to it. So that's my number three. Uh, yeah. Michaela, what's your number three? My number three is The Harder They Fall. Ooh. And I think I'm the only one here who's watched the whole I thing. Just started, I've yeah, watched I watched it right, yeah. thus far. Um, this movie's fucking dope. Like, it's just one of the coolest it's movies I've ever fun. seen. It is <laughs> just <laughs> cool. It's, it's, fun. It's, it's like, okay, I'm sure we'll get into this. Prob and not only is it the year of cinematic mediocrity, it is the year of two long movies yes. everything is two hours and 20 minutes 40 minutes it doesn't need to be yeah uh this movie is two hours and 20 minutes it probably doesn't need to be it does feel like a whole season of television condensed into a movie mm -hmm. but it's so fucking cool and it's so fun <laughs> and everyone is so charming and so like talented at what they do that i don't even care like the it is by james samuel samuels who did um he did like a short before that was similar to this story, but he was also an executive producer with Jay Z and Boz Lerman on The Great Gatsby, which makes a lot of yes. sense. Yeah, if you've seen The Harder They Fall, I'm it really makes sense. With that. This is the director. Yes. Okay. Uh, he wrote and directed this, um, and he is Seal's brother. What? Yeah, I was doing research for this, and I was Shut like, up. "Wait, what?" And they look very similar. So it that's so funny. Yeah. I was totally rocking Nepotism. out to Kiss from Rose on the yep. way here. Yeah, and um. It's so it's about the Nat Love gang versus the Rufus Buck gang, and these are all real historical characters. But the story is completely fictional, right. which I think is a really interesting. Yeah, because I say the people while, are real. While the events of the story are fictional. These people existed. Yep, uh, which I think is a really cool way to go with the story. Yes. Just be like, here's some real people, but we're going to completely make up a story. Right. This cast absolutely stacked. Stacked. Jonathan Majors, Zazie Beetz, Regina King, Delroy Lindo, Idris Elba, Lakeith Stanfield, RJ Seiler, Damon Wayans, and Danielle Deadweiler. I, like, so many attractive people. Uh, <laughs> it, it is, they are all heartbreakingly attractive. Uh -huh. And like you, and they are all, like you cannot help but be seduced by all of them mm -hmm. because they are so cool, but they have this like foreboding kind of swagger that like they're a little threatening underneath the surface, but they're so fucking cool. And everyone has their talent, you know, in the squad and that's how they make up the gang but everyone also has their own motivation for why they're doing their thing. And even the people that you're not supposed to like, you're like, I see their point, you know, mm -hmm. like, so no. you're like, I, I get it. Um, it has great set pieces, great music. It is a singular vision. It is an original story. 
It's the cold little, open is fucking fantastic. It's a little sexy too. It is like, very. Some, it gets very some, sexy. There's yeah. Some passion. In yeah. This movie. We're talking about that adult mm-hmm. passion. Yeah. You don't see. There's some. There's some. Yeah. Like they're lingering. Like okay. Yeah. There's. Okay. Sean was the cold open. Not one of the coolest things you've ever seen. Like. I I just remember? started watching. Okay. After reminding. All right. Me. There's, well, what's the plot of it? So, because I saw the Netflix thing, but yeah, I don't. Well, like I don't want to say too much, but Nat Love is, I would say, the protagonist. Mm, that's like right. yeah. Stanfield. Yeah, no, that is Jonathan Majors. Okay, um, cold open is great. I yeah, just the cold right, open. Yeah. I, like, I don't really like the cold open. Kind of sets up the whole thing, so I don't want to spoil too much. But it's it's a western vengeance story, I would say. But everyone in the gang has a different reason for vengeance. And Jonathan Majors is Nat Love, and he leads the Nat Love gang. And he's going to get vengeance on Rufus Buck, who is Idris Elba. And and he's like the most wanted criminal in the West, basically. And they the, like if you've seen the trailer, you've seen the scene where they bust him out of the train car. Yeah, that's like that's that jump starts the movie basically because now this most wanted criminal is loose but everybody wants him for different reasons and there's people that are in like quick draw contests with each other there's like that guy says he's faster than me i will fucking show him it's great everyone has their own motivation but they all come together to work on it um it's just so fucking cool. It's just a cool movie. And I love a western. Yeah, it's a and but it has it, cool we music. Can't say, but it's also it's a black western. It's a black like, western, and it's really good. It is, and like it is very much like an Edgar Wright like singular vision. Like James Daniels clearly picked the music for right. this the scene, music is, choreographed yeah, it, and there's just there's, like I thought the horses were dancing at yeah, one point. Yeah, there's a lineup where they're walking through town, and it looks like the horses are kind of swaying back and forth. Yes, yeah, and I'm just like. <laughs> I don't think they are, but it looks like it. Like it's, 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 cord- yeah, it's down it's cool. to a thing where it's very cool. And it, like I said, it's a little long, sags yeah. a little in the middle, but and it it probably would be better served as like a mini series on HBO. A couple episodes, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like but everyone is having the best time making this movie. You can tell they're all enjoying it. Like the cold open is great, and then there's a little bit of a time jump after the cold open. And there's a part where, like, a character basically turns to camera and says something, and you're just like, I'm in! I'm sold! Like, I'm in on this movie! Uh, I mean... And it is, like, it's a movie where people get shot, and they get blown into the air a little bit. Like, yeah. It's a little exaggerated in that regard, oh, as far as it's westerns so, go. Th- so, like, after the cold open happens, and the title comes up, the title comes up with a character shooting another one, and it's the, the character jump like, gets shot harder they're falling down <laughs> they yes. fall and it's like like I love it like kind of like a stuttering kind of edit and it's I, as soon as i saw that i was like this is my kind of movie like i'm it sold it feels a little tarantino-ish yeah. i'm really excited okay. to watch like this going i was wondering yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. it does i'm really excited to watch mm-hmm. this now <laughs> it's really good it's a netflix movie that i feel like i completely buried and everyone like uh-huh. i yeah. tried because yeah. i started watching today and was like i had to search for it because yeah. after it came out not too long ago it came out mm-hmm. oh, I saw, it was, yeah. yeah it was one of the trending things i might oh, was like Ten in, but it was today there, yeah. gone. I yeah. had, couldn't. I well, it's deep into uh, stuff, and then the mm-hmm. Netflix algorithm just buried it. Every mm-hmm. year, I have my gripe about Netflix. Yep. Okay, so this year's digression: the length of movies too long. Okay, but you will sit there and binge an entire season of Cobra Kai in one day. Wow. Well, yeah. So no, <laughs> well, I haven't watched I, a second of that show. So no. If but, you had all the Dexter's, okay. Yeah. But I guess that's my yeah. question. It's like because to me, it feels like movie length is movies trying to compete with the fact that people are sitting down and will watch. It two feels or like that's what they're doing. Four episodes of a show. Yeah. And they're like, okay, so four hours is the max, right? We haven't pushed beyond four hours as far as I know, but no. at least two hours, they'll, we can have them. So but you can tell like longer form stories. It's if I feel the time or not is the thing. Does the movie need to be that long or are you just doing it to compete with TV? You know what I'm saying? That's the difference. Like, mm-hmm. we'll get to it. There's a movie later on my list that is also very long, but I didn't feel the length of mm-hmm. for one second. You say, know what I'm saying? The movies are There's- just like... I'm not walking. I'm going like you know what? I'm glad that was two and a half hours long. Yeah, it needed to be. Like I haven't. That gotten rarely that happens. Yeah, yeah, rarely happens. Rarely. And, and like like it's, it's it's so much easier to sit down and watch a show thinking okay if I only want to watch forty minutes I can whereas that I feel like I have to commit to two and a half hours. Yeah, yeah I got to carve yeah. out time out yeah. of my day. Like if to I watch like the show hours. enough, I'm like oh I'm still feeling yeah. it. I'm gonna keep going, but I don't have that's, to. Yeah, that's interesting. I don't yeah. Yeah. Have Our attention spans. Yeah. Yeah. Sit down, going like well I'm gonna commit an hour. Yeah. 
Yeah. But maybe another one. I could probably go another after that, but yeah. a movie is like, yeah. But the yeah, problem okay. is, but I know TV, I'm going TV into TV does wrap up yeah. within like 42 weird. minutes yeah. enough. The, the problem with the movies this year is that they were all that length, whether they needed it or not. Yeah. Like, I have not seen House of Gucci. I probably won't. But oh, it does, God, does no. it need to be two and a half hours long? Probably not. I take like, it back. There was one movie this year that hit that time. Yeah, we'll get to we'll get to it because every movie this year was this long. That's yeah. the thing. It wasn't like like I you know Candyman didn't make my list, but it was ninety minutes and I appreciated that. Yeah, you know? was on your list, and that was ninety. Yeah, that was ninety five. Yeah, something that was, that. and that was the perfect amount of length for that movie. It didn't was. need a minute more. You know, but I'm going to say Justice League needed four hours. Yeah. Oh, certain okay. things, you know what? Certain things do. <laughs> <laughs> You well, just, just have saying, to earn it. Most stuff doesn't. You have to justify that runtime, and I should not mm-hmm. feel it. You know, yeah. There was many movies I saw this year. That I was like, "Is we're this lucky? We Jesus Christ!" It. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, harder they fall. I think you should all watch it. I think you I would will. all like it. I think you would probably also feel the sag in the middle, like I felt. But it has a great ending. Wraps up things well. Love I think it. you would all like it. Holly, what's your number three? Uh, my number three is a show that I did binge watch. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, my number three is Hawkeye. Ah. Which I was very surprised about okay. because I was not looking forward to it. Okay. I had really no plans to watch it. Sure. And then a uh, guy that I work with kept bugging me. He's like, if you watch Hawkeye, okay, if you watch it. And I'm like, <laughs> fuck off. I'm not going to watch it. And then he was like, you should probably watch it for, for Spider-Man. You probably should. So he made me think that I had to. Um, turns <laughs> Ooh, out you, turn, what a dirty trick. Turns out you don't. Yeah, I, say, I don't think you do. <laughs> you don't. Um, just for one, you don't have to. But I'm glad I did because... It gave me so much joy. Watching the first episode, I wasn't quite sure if I was going to like the new character. Kate Bishop is the new character that you're you're following in this. Um, and I wasn't sure how I was going to feel about her. But by the end of the episode, I was like, okay. Wait, is this a handoff? Who, who is she and how is she related to Hawkeye? Because I, I hear Hawkeye. You're mm-hmm. telling me it's about Kate Bishop. Yeah, um, you should watch the show to find that out. <laughs> oh, but, uh, I believe in the comics, Kate Bishop assumes the role of Hawkeye at some point. She's oh, also she's, a very talented oh, archer. She's basically oh, okay. his apprentice. Yeah. You know okay. what? Yeah. Which I'm is what f- they turn into at this point through a confluence of circumstances. Okay. They, I'm they a fan together. of getting Jenner, Jeremy Renner out of content, so that's fine with me. Yeah. yeah. Not a big Jeremy Renner fan? No, never have he, been. Um, He does... He can be charming when he needs to. I like Hawkeye. I like, uh, he's a spice. I like Hawkeye. Yep. I don't think they've given him a lot to work with. I was going to say, didn't he play uh, Dahmer at one point? Yeah, he did. Yes, he sure did. did. No, I know you did that on purpose, you son of a bitch. Because you know I hate that movie. (laughs) Specifically. Um, So, yeah, I I wasn't looking forward to Hawkeye, but I went into it... um, and by like I said, by the end of the first episode, I was feeling it. And the more it went on, and also it's a Christmas show, right? So just I've yeah. seen the first episode. That was another reason I, I kept watching. I was like, oh, this is like the only Christmas thing I can deal with right now. So, um, it just brought me so much joy. Like the whole underlying theme of the show, um, is basically centered around the fact that this girl like grew up looking up to Hawkeye because of the fact that. She was there in New York City in like the 2012 Avenger New York City attack. She was watching it happen and she saw Hawkeye like basically saving her building from across the way. Mm -hmm. And she was like, he's a normal dude. He's not a god. He's not a billionaire with gadgets. He's well, I mean, he did have gadgets, but he's not a billionaire that can shoot lasers. He's not a super soldier. He's just a guy that decided to be a hero. And the whole thing is kind of like that underlying theme that like you don't have to have any specific like like help. You just have to be a person that decides you want to do the right thing. You just have to be a person that decides to be a hero. Mm -hmm. And it's just so hopeful. It's so uplifting. We all need that. Yeah. Like this has been a shit year. Like I I think (laughs) 2021 has been harder for me than 2020 was. So you're saying watch Pig and then watch this right now. Yes. There you go. This is a a good palate cleanser for Pig. Yeah. (laughs) Yes, this gives you the hope that you want. Like there's there's a character in this. Like obviously they they focus on in the comics one of the big like one of the big problems with the original Avengers that people had was they didn't focus on Hawkeye's uh hearing impairment um cuz that's a big thing in the comics. Right. They focus on it now and they show that he like has this because he's been in so many explosions. Yeah. And so it makes sense. His hearing's gone. So his hearing aid is featured in this. And um, there's a lot of sign language. There's another character that's also completely deaf. And she does a lot of sign language. She's also like, um, she has a fake leg. She has like a, a false leg. Um, and there's just, there's so much. 
there's so much hope in this. It's like anyone can be a hero if they want to be. Anyone can be a hero if they try to be. And it's just, oh, it, it got me in the feels in such a good way that I needed. And it's really funny. Kate Bishop and Hawkeye's right. dynamic is hilarious. Um, and if who, who plays her? Uh, Haley you know? Steinfeld. Okay. Oh, yeah. okay. No. Haley Steinfeld. She's and she's great. She's yeah. she's absolutely great. Um, I will say if you haven't seen Black Widow, you should probably watch that first. There is yeah, some, you do there's need some, some carry, information. There's some carryover from Black Widow. There's a character that carries over who's great, and I love them, and I'm so glad they showed up in this. Um, yeah, it was it was so hopeful. I w- I didn't know I didn't think I was going to pick any Marvel movies this year or any Marvel like anything this year. Um, Hawkeye was a pleasant surprise. I watched the other ones. We, what do we have this year? Loki. We had yeah. Um, Falcon and Soldier. We had WandaVision. I watched all of them and they were good. Black Widow, Shang Chi, Eternals. There was right. way too much. There was a lot, and I watched. Well, I didn't watch Eternals, but I watched mm-hmm. the other ones and they were fine. They were good. I, well, I liked a lot of parts in them, but Hawkeye just like brought me joy. Mm-hmm. So that is why I picked that for my number three. It was good stuff. Palette cleanser for pig. There you mm-hmm. go. Yeah, and I did binge it. <laughs> Just for the record. I didn't plan to, but I did. <laughs> Colin? Uh, my number three, I guess, is going to be Last Night in Soho. Uh, yes. Maybe I liked it a little more than you did. I don't know. Uh, the, um, no, my, my, top, my choices are just kind of You're just random. like, these are the ones these I liked. These are the ones I liked, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah I was... Um, I think the... Um, the 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 what am I trying to say the 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 age of the sixties it's interesting to uh, or that appeals to me I guess to see that era of swinging London mm-hmm. you know uh, but I guess I wasn't really I was expecting Edgar Wright to do something different and I knew I think from hearing interviews with him that he was going to do something that was more like a thriller you know mm-hmm. so. I like his other stuff, like you were saying. I like mm-hmm. Shaun of the Dead is like uh, probably still my favorite movie that he's ever made. It's great. Um, yeah. And then you know it was like the Cordetto trilogy. He's going to use that same kind of stylistic thing, mm-hmm. which I think was amplified for Scott Pilgrim, if I remember. And then unless there's one I'm forgetting, then there's like Baby Driver, right, mm-hmm. which is a, a change of direction. And then into this, and then um, I was trying to think like. If there were, because I heard like, you know, it's like it's going to be like a Jalo movie. I heard actually yeah. in advance, because uh, I mean, if you listen to the show, I'm a big fan of the Italian Jalo movies. No. Um, what? The, uh, <laughs> that is brand new information. But I, I had heard that like James Wan's making a Jalo movie this year. And then there was like an image of this like crazy looking, you know, black gloved killer holding a, you know, a unique uh, stylized mm-hmm. weapon. I'm like, what is this? And then that turned out to be Malignant, which I think has uh, a debt in some ways to Jalo, but it's not actually a Jalo movie, right? It's like it's the like year like of a, Jalo fake out for you. Yeah, it was. <laughs> but uh, I think Last Night in Soho is closer, is closer. than Malignant. Yeah, I agree. Especially yeah. the setting being at like a fashion school. I was like, oh, this is yeah. a Jalo oh, yeah, 100%. Yeah, 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 yeah. When I saw that, I was like, because like Letterboxd is very divided on Last Night in Soho. Yeah. And a bunch, there's a bunch of people being like, this isn't a Jalo. And I was like, well, you've never seen one then because it. Def- it has a lot of it similarities. Has a lot of the like, I got some Suspiria vibes, for yeah. sure. Because well, uh, these... Blood and Black Lace yeah, takes place yeah. at a fashion show, yeah. right? Well, yeah. there's a lot of a lot of Jalos, you know, have something to do with you know photography or fashion, right. or you know that. So it's I mean, not that just is the like red and blue of, lights, right? Well, that that really is only Mario Bava and Dario Argento, right. but you know, it's like okay, so he's employing that in mm-hmm. this, but there's like. Um, I don't know. I mean, like I felt callbacks to, you know, stuff like Blowout or stuff like yes, Repulsion absolutely. or like Hitchcock. And, you know, um, I think there's not very many supernatural Jalo movies. So I guess that's where the comparison right. yeah. ends. I mean, maybe like, uh, what was it? The House of Clocks or whatever. There was one I saw that was... Mm-hmm. Um, the Laughing Windows, House of the Laughing Windows. The Laughing remember. Windows. <laughs> anyway, I'll watch uh, that movie. This that is, was that's yeah. just like the Beyond, the had, end of the mm, Beyond. Actually, it had Twiggy in it. Okay, Twiggy. Um, okay. Yeah. But um, yeah, I thought this was like uh, this of the. Mo- I like this more than Baby Driver because uh, I guess it was more up my alley. I, I like the see whole that. kind of yeah, I can see that uh, mystery thriller that um, it's doing that thing. It's a convention of. Um, you know, uh, thriller movies where your character in the present is 
attached in some way to a uh, a, a previous event, right? Mm-hmm. But the way that he's doing it visually feels very contemporary and modern. Like yes. I, I haven't seen that's that a great before. way to put it. Yeah, you know. So it was like okay, so we are kind of updating this formula with like new a new angle to it, right? And I thought, yeah, I, I liked uh, Thomas and Mackenzie. Well, all the cast. I think like top to bottom, everybody. Mm-hmm. Uh, in it, even like the throwaway, uh, well, throwaway character, the, uh, the 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 mean girl at school, and all that. Yeah, stuff, she was know. great. Um, you know, it's like everybody in the cast is uniform, uniformly good. Um, I mean, I, I don't know. I can't recommend it enough. I think yep, you need to see this movie. Fantastic. It's a it's a stylistic, a bold vision. It's uh, an original story. It's an yes, original story. Love it. But yeah. see, even though we say that, and yes, I I, yeah. I like that. It's play. It still is playing on nostalgia. Right. Right. But it's a different kind of nostalgia. It's a nostalgia for like a time. For a time place. period, that, not for a existing property. It struck me. And I know, again, that, that, that Edgar Wright and Quentin Tarantino are friends. And I know that they both, you know, you know, in, oh, last year, right? One year ago, mm-hmm. was Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, that they're both enamored with the, the 60s. It's this time period that they remember from their growing up. But it's interesting to see the Los Angeles version and the London uh, mm-hmm. you know, version uh, of these mm-hmm. kind of like, I think those would make like an interesting counterpoint, point, double counterpoint, feature. Right. double feature. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I would say last night in Soho, but we so already good. talked about it. So mm-hmm. Sean, what's your number two? Number two. Uh, we are, McK- or, uh, Holly, you were talking earlier how you haven't, you didn't dedicate any space to necessarily, aside from Hawkeye, any of the big Marvel mm-hmm. machine movies mm-hmm. and all that stuff. Ah! I, I said I didn't plan to. <laughs> oh, you planned to. Oh, well, Sean's got it well, you know on his list. Yeah. Yeah. I plan to. That because would be a real curveball. That would be a real laugh. Yeah. Uh-huh. I would be like, right. hold on, we I need to stop no, right now. I didn't now. see Nomadland, Nomad Land, but I saw Eternals. No, yeah. I didn't see either of them actually <laughs> this year. But, all right. So, I think the big one this year, Spider-Man No Way Home. Mm-hmm. Now, this is number two on my list, and for very specific reasons. We've all seen it, right? Mm-hmm. No, but I don't care. I thought you were going to. Didn't end up going. It's uh, okay. Say what you want. And there Sean, are folks out there. I am mentally but, checked yeah. out of this franchise. So no, I wanted to talk about this. God damn it. So I was going to say spoilers. But um, I, I was going to start this out by saying that sometimes corporate synergy can be a good thing. It can be f- or at least uh, fun. Never a good thing, mm-hmm. but it can be fun. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think we all know, or at least most of us here know why Spider-Man No Way Home was fun. Because yep. it did the thing. It did the thing. It did the thing. It did the thing, <laughs> and I think to great effect. Now, mm-hmm. the movie, I think, is kind of rather clunky in some areas um, as far as its journey to get to that last part of the movie. Um, but I also think, now looking back at it after having seen it, it feels... I mean, I think that adds to the idea of Spider-Man. Like, I don't know the lore of the character so much, but he's always been like a growing character. I mean, most of the superheroes are, but he's always started out as young and he makes a lot of mistakes and he's, we see him learn a lot on screen as a superhero. Mm -hmm. Um, I think uh, this version of it, Tom Holland's Spider-Man, he goes through a lot in this movie. He gets, he gets his moment in this movie. Finally, he gets a lot of moments. um, And I think it's a great, push forward for the character Mm -hmm. um i also i mean there's certain elements of this that uh, i mean let's say they brought characters back not just the ones you saw in the trailer but other characters well there's maybe a few other spider-men in this movie it's a great effect i think (laughs) i haven't had more fun at the movies than seeing those three people interact in this movie and we get a good amount of it in this movie geeky stuff like so it, i mean doing is science it, is it just like playing to your nostalgia for the past but this is what you're we talking about earlier what it's fine nostalgia is good to bring back but what do you do with it when you have it okay do you advance but, these the advance the people like how what, what are we doing with it because you can keep going with it as someone on the outside what's the difference between ghostbusters afterlife and this because it sounds like they're hitting the same buttons but you like one more than the other What's the difference between the both? Like, as far as the nostalgia buttons, it sounds like they're both hitting it. They are. They're, yeah. Like I said, it was, yeah. It was going to be. Yeah. 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 Like I said, it was, it was going to be in my list. Um, this, because, because it's, uh, uh, it gives can closure. I, can, I, can I explain? Certain... Like, I, I can go into this, but I have to explain. It gives closure to a lot of stuff. Yeah. It, it gives, it, a, it sh- gives more to certain characters that may have been, 
Short um, slighted, changed, short changed yeah. and mm-hmm. slighted earlier on. Uh, arcs are given good endings based on other mm-hmm. movies. Mm-hmm. There's good tie up in this. So it's I, like you didn't necessarily need it. No, but having it does actually serve having a purpose. It is and, and, yeah. and aside, it does serve a purpose. Like they are the characters are advanced as they're brought back. Their stories mm-hmm. are given a little something more. Uh, and revisiting those characters and learning those things about them, it's it's very heartwarming. It's also very funny when it gets to those. It's certain very parts. funny. It's very funny. Like they're f- they got really good actors to play mm-hmm. these guys. Like over the years, I should say. Yeah. Um, and to see them come back and then because we've Spider Man's been around forever. Mm-hmm. Like it's it was the big one. Spider Man, uh, the su- I mean Superman. We had superhero movies before, but Spider Man was like the box office champion. Um, well, uh, so was Batman when that it was Superman, but Batman, it was, and then Spider-Man. Right, but it was like one of the before first, Iron Man, I right? Guess, one yeah. of the first big ones. It wasn't. I mean, it was Marvel, but it wasn't MCU right. until now. Wow, how you forget X Men so quickly? There was the same time as these Spider Man movies. <laughs> In, well, That's true. Yeah, but, wow, X Men Erasure yeah, here. But, I, but those well, were I mean, huge. But like, I'm, not yeah. erasing, I'm like, just not mentioning them. Like, I don't. Which is erasing them? No, <laughs> like they were. Those were gigantic movies at the same time yes, as the Spider Man movies. Yes. What was the? But I'm saying Spider Man was came out first, right? No, X Men was two thousand. When was Spider Man? Two thousand one. Two thousand one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then okay. the second X Men we was two thousand two. But which ones were better? I, mean, <laughs> I, I would say X Men. X Men two is pretty good. Yeah. Spider Man two is pretty good. great. But Spider Man two is great. Uh, all, what I'm saying is, I think that um, yeah, there's a lot of money to be made by doing this stuff in in you know big Disney owned movies. Um, but you could still have fun with it. It and also do some feels really like a- yeah, it's like a, a, an expansion of the, you, you know, like, where else are you going to go with this series? Yeah. Now we can expand it. And yes. And it also uh, retroactively, it like. It does. Yeah. It's also, yeah, this is also a big, like, setup movie because they've pretty much blank slated a few characters. Um, and, I mean, it's the multiverse, so they can literally do, they could do any story they want right now and just tie in multiverse to What's it. What's it going to feel like when we get the Flash next year and that's uh, the multiverse <laughs> Doctor movie. Strange. Hey, that sucks that he came in, in it's second. It's going to be all multiverse shit from here well, on d- out. Well, I'm yeah, but Mar- Marvel's doing it because that's their new phase, I think, yes. is incorporating the multiverse where <laughs> and I do DC, understand. I don't know if it came out. Like, I remember reading the Crisis on Infinite Earths yeah. comic book and I'm like, well, that was the first you know thing that I was exposed to. That did all that, mm-hmm. and now it's like it feels like they're behind the game in the movies, but they're yeah. going to do it, and everybody's going to say, you're just copying I'm Marvel. having deja vu, because, Sean, you had Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse in your top five, what, two years ago? I did. And isn't that a because very similar movie? Because I like the Spider-Man movie? altogether. Yeah. I just <laughs> like it. it so you're saying we had good. two Spider-Man multiverse movies within a three-year span? That's my shit. Yeah. I'm, I'm just... I'm, ugh, I love seeing the them all trip. together. I think yeah. it's fun. Uh, I think that to do it live action is... I think it does a lot for a lot of people who've been a fan of this character over many years, over a long mm-hmm. time. That's at least it over 20 like years. Me, yeah, yeah I, I feel like it's all for them. Um, it did a lot for me. I, again, I, I, could, there, I have complaints about the movie. Um, aside from just, I can see a comic panel that's got all those villains together in mm-hmm. one room, standing there talking to each other, which is fun. Uh-huh. But there's certain characters that I don't think, they, like Sandman, aside from his... Who, like, yeah, who cares about he that? Didn't, he his, didn't do much. No, his role in the end kind of works, because he's got a yeah. form that stone in there. But on that, he didn't need to be there at all. He didn't do much, at he all, didn't do much in Spider-Man 3. Why are we bringing it all? Like, but I also he's never that, like much. He's never been a great character for me. So no. I mean, there's problems with the movie. Again, I, but I they're, think they're, they're leaning clunky. on the memory, that not so much the comic book fans, they're leaning movie. on the movie fans. Oh, yeah, movie fans. Yeah, who, you know, like, yeah I know. Remember I'm saying character. that's dangerous because that was not a good memory. Mm. Like, like, no, does anyone so, finally look back I and guess, say, man, Spider-Man 3? No, but I was yeah. neutral to yeah. it, so I was also kind of neutral to what they did in this. You know, obviously, bringing back Doc Ock and uh, That Green makes Goblin, sense. I understand all but that. I also like that in this movie, they do kind of, um, they give the villains something to do, which is mm-hmm. maybe not like, it's not like they're, you know, classic comic book character stuff. Right. It's like, you're looking at, I guess that's what the movies are doing. They're like... You know, even if you're a comic book fan, this is another alternate version. You know, yes. it's like comic book fans have dealt with multiple oh, yeah. alternate mm-hmm. versions of all this shit. All the time. For years. Everything's getting rebooted, reset, Always. people die. No one's ever back. dead. Yeah. yeah. So it's like Look if you're a fan Spider-Man. of all that yeah. stuff, here's something that you can watch that's new. We don't have to adapt all the shit that we've already printed. We can come up with something that's it's you know, like new variations. It's like, hey, we're going to do the setup. 
and then 20 years later we're gonna pay this off yeah, yeah. <laughs> for some for certain things and it's just like holy shit i felt that uh -huh. and i think there's a lot of fun that can be had with this uh i'm gonna i feel like i'm gonna revisit that a lot um mm -hmm. I, I have similar feelings to like endgame i think i told holly after yeah. the movie just like that last battle in endgame was fantastic to me and i that's the part i go back and watch a lot yeah. i've seen that a lot i'll go back and watch like the last hour of this movie so much just because it was it's fun it's heartwarming to see the characters it's funny so um yeah that's gonna be my number two for the year big, um, that big corporate synergy it if, got me if you don't mind i'm gonna take liberty of t going next okay. uh, because my number two is also spider-man um, <laughs> so i'm not gonna say much because you you covered a lot of it but i totally agree with you they do so much I was not expecting what they do with the villains in this. Uh, there's a lot there's, of it's like, oh, I, well, I wasn't. Expecting I was not it. expecting this, and I love that there's so much. Like you said, there's payoff from like 20 years ago. There's resolution for things that have haunted these characters for 20 years, and that's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Like that hit me there in is, the feels. Yeah, and there's like, emotional moments with all the characters. So many just moments. Talking. There's a lot of talking in this Spider-Man movie. Yes, there's a lot of talking. There's so many moments that just a look from a character. They didn't even say anything. Just a look from a character, and we were all just like, and that's in the field, right? And that's like, great payoff, I think, to be able to take that character, bring him into this, and then give him the resolution to it. Yeah, that's, that's great stuff. Like the realization of the audience when we're just like, oh my god, just because they have he's getting wearing, closure right, right now. <laughs> just because they're wearing Spider-Man costumes doesn't mean that the feelings and the closure that they get, yeah. is any less real than a quote-unquote more dramatic movie or more real movie than you know Spider-Man. I think you still feel the same things. Yes. Um, I'm not saying every one of these movies does that, but no, yeah. they do do it and they do it well and sometimes better than the other movies. We, I think we all had certain expectations going into this and we were all kind of, you know, hesitant because I think we, we knew that this could be a disaster. Um, but I feel like it exceeded expectations. It, I think so. it did so many great things and there was so many little moments that like literally I felt myself like pointing at the screen like oh they did the thing <laughs> and Peter it, number three it was like, just so, so much good like uh, Andrew Garfield is I think the MVP of that movie I think so uh, that's an amazing uh, retconning and that's because that's what's <laughs> great about it is because they could do that you could just appreciate the movie the first time around like I liked that first Andrew Garfield movie a lot I and I remember right. taking a lot of shit for that back in the day <laughs> because, so because people said it was terrible I was like he's really no, good I like, I he like is him. really good he is he's really good Peter Parker. And, and honestly, like the tired Toby Maguire we get in this, uh, he's I so love the age, he's like, just like I've been doing this for twenty. Years. He's been like I'm too old for this shit. I'm like it's just it's so like he never says that. He's just like no, but he's, he's still got he's it. like a solemn. Oh, he's, gonna, he's, he's still, still got, got it. it. He's just like a solemn Spider Man, and it's so perfect. Like uh, it I've gave it gave me shit. everything I wanted. I mean, even directly with this movie, I thought like uh, I liked uh, Tom Holland and uh, Zendaya in oh, this. Yeah. That was, like, oh, you're right. That yeah. because, was some of the you know because I, I've right actually had a problem with her in the other ones because her character has been kind of like she's I don't flippant. Know, she's yeah, but she's not so, in this one. Like, no. In this one, she's the, 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 they both of them. I think they have matured. They made into her these married, roles. They made her married. Jane, yeah, I'm finally, like, these yeah. characters I like, and I think that they brought them to a place where like yes. you know this is good yeah, stuff. Yeah. stuff and at certain points in this, I'm just like, holy shit. I yeah. wasn't, that was the other parts that's not expected. I'm like, because the way you felt about her and maybe those characters in the other movies, I'm like, I felt the same way. Yes. But they delivered in mm -hmm. this one. It's, yeah. it's odd. It, the three movies, like, you, you, you hope your characters get to mature at a certain point and you get to see that. And after three movies, I think they did. And, and that only works point. if you've had the other ones to pay, yes. you know, that are paying off. Yes. Yeah. And we haven't talked about it very much. The end um, the end of the movie. There yeah, is don't a, spoil no, anything no, for not, those who haven't seen. There, but there's a moment with Doctor Strange that him talking to Spider Man. He says he something says, to him, yes. and he gets like this like teary eyed look, and I'm just like fucking. He hell. slips for a minute. Fucking hell! Like this fucking Spider Man has been through so much shit, and yeah. I just oh, it broke my heart. And uh, yeah. yeah, it's a heartbreaking movie, Man. but it's also there's a oh, lot of good, good joy in there, too. So this is nostalgia, the movie for 2021. I mean, obviously, it's a huge deal. I mean, see, I, I heard we keep saying it. The, and it's a, that's a bad word. But and see, that's what I'm is, asking. The thing is, though, like I, I, the nostalgia is part of it. But for me, I don't think that's the carrier. I really don't. I just really liked this movie. But but like 
that was the whole marketing of this movie though. Yes, do you remember that marketing. three weeks straight where every day it was so and so is cast in Spider Man No Way yeah. Home for like three that weeks cast straight. Exploded. Yeah. yeah. It's just like, oh another new cast yeah. like who's not in this movie? And it was exactly it was more like give me the list of who's not in this movie because it'll be shorter. Like the marketing true. really leaned on that. True, that was that's very true. But like the experience of watching it, like the writing and the emotion was spectacular. And I feel like Spider Man's always been an emotional character in the comic universe. And I feel like it really delivers in this movie, like on a massive level. Like it's just oh, it was good. I well, really like it. It's like we we sit here and you know, like, you know, I guess it's a cautionary tale because when uh, I really enjoyed it, when things, you know, it's like we're aware that it's a corporate synergy movie, as Sean was saying. Yes. Um, it doesn't feel like that when you're watching the movie. The movie actually does kind of combine all this stuff in a way that feels like, you know, this is how you would tell this story or whatever. Like they come up with there's a justification for all of it. And Marvel has figured out like, I mean, they make these you know, perfect clockwork things, but there's actually uh, performance, pathos, yeah. drama, action, adventure. You know, um, I think in Spider-Man, you're still seeing that kind of like yeah. aspirational, hopeful, you know, uh, thing to that character. But I guess the it's like whenever I see this stuff, like, you know, the, the second week or the, the week after it came out, um, I saw an article which is always how this goes, right? Yeah, then you see yeah, an article and yeah. ruins everything. Yep. That ninety percent of the box office total gross for that weekend came from Spider Man, yeah. and so it's like, okay, I like the movie, right? It's it's it is a good movie. You should see it. But I am afraid. I think, like Martin Scorsese, of the fallout of this kind of like oh, that's how I feel nostalgia too. I and going I'm like, so concerned by this. That's all anybody like, wants I, to see. <laughs> and then yeah, you're you're, yeah. you're squeezing out like because Especially nobody's because gonna make a movie anymore. No, unless it's a the Matrix Four. I agree, I mean, Colin. Like, I have the same concern. The, you know, <laughs> because Nightmare Alley was the same weekend. And no one went to see that, and everyone went to see Spider Man. Yeah, and know that's what, what concerns me. It's like, but it's got all these, ca- you know, the these future. people in it. I, I agree with the concern because obviously, like, we do want more content. We do want more movies. But I will say, like, in a year of movie fog, Spider Man was memorable. Well, yeah, I mean, you it, it also just came big out movie or... earlier this month, so we do yeah, that. yeah, yeah. But, it was, but I, I mean... watched, I've watched movies like within the last week, and I remember Spider Man more. Yeah. But, but like... the fact that it's this nostalgia machine and that it's so successful means this is all we're going to get going forward. Yeah, no, I, I, I know, I know the risk. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, I get it. I mean, yeah, the problem. I get it. The other one was No Time to Die was supposed to be the movie that got people into the theaters again in a big way, you know. Uh, Ghostbusters and, and this, and it's just, it seems like movies like, uh, well, for instance, Pig. I mean, I don't remember Pig playing in theaters. No, you know? but I remember he, a theaters. lot of talk yeah. about it online, and that's how I found out about but it. Yeah, only, I don't ever remember that's being only in theaters. among movie people. Exactly, I think like, exactly. You know, you, based on the stuff that you search, you're seeing marketing for Pig. Exactly, yeah. It's not going to be like. No, my uh, family, my. You're not going to be seeing don't ads right, for that no, like you do for no. the Kingsman or it, whatever. Oh, my you know? God, yeah. <laughs> don't get so us like, on that, Colin. Uh-uh, uh-uh. I mean, I guess that's where I, 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 I struggle with it. I'm happy for its success. <laughs> yes. I'm glad it's a movie that meets your expectations mm-hmm. or exceeds them, mm-hmm. that it's a good functional, you know, like a well, functional. It's a an uplifting movie yeah. experience. But it's the the future of movies is yeah, yeah the yeah. concern. Yeah, that no, I, I don't me. disagree with you. Yeah, I'm always, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I'm worried by that too. Only because they're not going to fund anything that doesn't. Make no, them, you absolutely know, not. This. You'll have to dig the like annals of Hulu to find things like Pig. You know, like, yeah, or movies like you know. Dope Sick. When Michael Keaton just came out. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, right. They're not going to. Nobody will ever see that because it's just on Hulu. Right, yeah. and Michael Keaton's in it. Yeah, that's crazy well, that like, no one will see it. Yeah, go home and watch that like tomorrow or some shit. But yeah, yeah. And that's also, I think, you know, again, my yearly screed against streaming services is like they put out stuff like The Harder They Fall mm-hmm. and nobody fucking finds the goddamn thing because yeah. it's not on your screen after like well, opening weekend. It's there, but it's not promote. It's just right. like a new thing. Yeah. We've got five other new things. And Which ne- one are you interested and in? Netflix has done too much. They have so many properties they're putting out. They only want you to care about it for a week, you know, and then they're on to the next thing. It's well, it's insane are, the amount of stuff they put out. And that was the other thing I saw about uh, Netflix, uh, which I didn't know their business model until I heard this thing about uh, Squid Game, right? Um, mm. Where they were saying the guy who made it, like basically Netflix gives you as a filmmaker, um, here's how much we're going to pay for this movie. And it, they're like, it's very generous. Yeah. It's a better deal than you would get going to a studio and making a movie. 
But if that movie does well, you don't see a dime more. It's like that well, makes we, sense. we paid you. This is this is the new model, and they get to set it. Yeah. And so there, you know, the incentive, that make sense. whether or not it performs well or not, and they matter. don't disclose their numbers ever. Right. Yeah. Right. So you got paid this for that movie. Mm-hmm. It may be the most talked about thing in the world. In Squid Game's case, it's like, but right. this is what you made for that movie, and right. I mean, I guess as long that's as you agree to it, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah that's, like, the, that's mm-hmm. the new, they have set the new business model. So right. I feel like as long as they're generous, it's okay. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. I mean, yeah. all the, it all depends. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But if you it make for the thing, some... Squid Game has defined like, you know, how kids play in the playground now. Like yeah, they're all. I, I'm tired of hearing about yeah, it. I was like, I, I can't I'm talk so about fu- I like, I won't watch it because I'm so fucking tired of hearing about yeah, it. Yeah. Like, me too. Just... But I mean, it seems like that guy maybe deserves m- a little like boot. points on the back end. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, like if yeah. this was a movie in theaters, <laughs> you would get points on the back end, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. Sorry. Digression. Okay. Who's up next? Michaela. Thanks, Michaela. What's your number two? Last night in Soho is my number yes. two. Oh, uh, it, <laughs> I, I mean, I, I like yeah. this phase that Edgar Wright is in. Yeah. I I like the post Baby Driver like direction he's going. Everything is different, but it, it's very much like this is the movie I want to make. And I'm going to make it, and you're going to fucking buy it. And I love it. I love that he's like co- so committed to his vision. Uh, this movie. It, unfortunately, it can't sustain the just like electric energy it has in the first act throughout the rest of the film. I found the third act to be a little weak, but I was so lost in the world of 1960s mm-hmm. London that and having so much fun with it that I didn't care. Mm-hmm. Like, I didn't care how it ended up because I had so much fun in the first half. Mm-hmm. And I just had a big smile on my face watching like the first half of this movie because I'm just like, yeah, I'm in it. Like, mm-hmm. it's and it's. It's an original story, like we've said several times. Like it's an original story, and it's so well made. It feels expensive, and Anya Taylor Joy is great, and she fits mm-hmm. into this nineteen sixties world with Matt Smith like perfectly. Mm-hmm. And MVP of the year, Anya Taylor Joy. Yeah, maybe? probably. Oh, yeah, she's scary. been in everything yeah. this year. Yeah, um, she's coming out in the Northman, which the I Northman, the Northman. Right? can't wait for that. That is probably <laughs> excited about that. Anticipated of next year. <laughs> yeah, it. Uh, I mean. You know, it is the chicken roaster episode of Seinfeld, which is my favorite Seinfeld episode. So I'm all, I'm not, it's not a slam, but no sleep, yeah, yeah. no sleep, no sleep. Yeah. <laughs> which, but like, there's a few moments where I'm like, all right, Edgar, right, you could have done that a little bit better because there was a, there's a point where Thomas and Mackenzie literally looks at another character and says, London's a bad place. And I was like, oh, so he hates London. Like, <laughs> we get it, dude. You think London's terrible, but you don't have a character look at it and be like, London's a bad place. Like, we get it. Like, um, I do like the exposing of this like seedy underbelly because like in a year where we have a lot of nostalgia movies, I like that this movie starts off being a nostalgia movie, but then it's like, actually that time was really fucked up. Yeah. And I like that. It's like, we look back on things with rose colored glasses, even though it was not a great time. Mm-hmm. And I think oh, yeah. juxtaposing that with movies like Spider-Man mm-hmm. or Ghostbusters afterlife is really interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, I wish it got more attention. I wish people appreciated it more it's very divisive on the internet opinions about this movie yeah and that's unfortunate um it's our expectations maybe and maybe we're setting right. them up to be disappointed just by talking about it so i don't know but but you know. i mean i i i watched the one trailer and i was like i'm sold and i liked that i didn't know anything about yeah, it going too. into it uh, and diana rigg is fantastic and i'm glad this is her last role i think it's a good one for her i don't know how i felt about that third act entirely but I'm okay with it. Like I've yeah. made my peace with it because I loved the first half so much. Mm-hmm. Um, and I do think it is kind of like more of a giallo than malignant because it has the fast so school yeah, set. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's so too. It has the fast and like it does have supernatural elements, which is really fucking cool too. I think it works. Mm-hmm. And I think if it doesn't work for you, I think your expectations are in the wrong place. Mm-hmm. Um, because I think the trailer told you everything you need to know. Um, I mean, it's great. I mean, we've talked about it twice already. Yeah. Go, go, go see it. You know, mm-hmm. it's, I like seeing a director that has his hands in every part of the movie, whether mm-hmm. it's the set design, the music, the, mm-hmm. a, everything feels like his person. Everything is intentional. Yeah. Everything's yeah. intentional. It's a great way of putting yeah. it. And what a fucking great soundtrack for a movie. I've oh just my been, God. Like, bopping so around good. listening to the soundtrack of this movie. And I'm like, it's so fucking it's good. It's so good. I mean, would um, you expect anything less? I mean, yeah, I mean, like, that's a good point, because Baby Driver was a great soundtrack, yeah. and, like, 
I'm excited to see what he does next. And I fully support whatever he does mm-hmm. because at least he's tra- taking risks and trying something. That's yeah. more than you can say for most movies that are being and made people nowadays. Are letting, him, letting him take risks. Yeah, exactly. And nice. bankrolling that. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Will, will they continue? Because yeah. uh, apparently it did not do well. Uh, because yeah. it's an original idea. Yeah. And original ideas yeah. can't well. compete with spider-man in the movie. right yeah <laughs> exactly and i went and saw this and i had a great time yeah. at the theater i went and saw this at a great time the next night i went and saw antlers and oh, oh. what a buzzkill like i was right that <laughs> high of last night and so i was like i was like the movies are back right. baby i'm sorry and then, is that the second awe we've uh, had at yeah. antlers yeah. Tonight? Yeah. we're yeah. gonna see another original movie they're not all winners no they're not <laughs> no they're not and it was like halloween time so i was like ooh, two two spooky movies this is gonna be great and then i was like i should have stopped after last night so <laughs> Just rode that high out. Um, yeah, Sean, I'm really surprised you haven't seen it yet. Because uh, again, this was um, uh, Holly. You were talking earlier about uh, mental health and all that stuff. I yeah. think I went through like it was a mental health year where I needed yep. comfort. And all I think of us, th- I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But this movie's. I wouldn't but, say it's comforting, but it's closer to comforting, right? But it just I didn't. It's hard to like I had away zero. From, yeah. Get up and go out and see a movie. It's hard you to peel yourself I mean? away from the known. When yeah. you, when you're going through some shit, like yeah, just wanted to be you. comfortable this yeah. year, and that's what my my list yeah. ended up showing that big yeah. time. So I, yeah. I don't know. I remember like being in the theater watching this movie, and like it was kind of the same feeling I had with Candyman being back in the theater. I was like, it's Halloween. I'm seeing a new spooky <laughs> horror movie that's not that's not like Halloween Kills. Yeah. You know, I was like, oh my god, this is gonna be awesome. So like, yeah. I think I just see Michaela running through the theater, like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it was like me and like three other people, you know. So yeah, but like I think that. I mean, expectation does play a lot into your experience, right? Yeah. So I went into this being like, this is going to be fucking awesome. And it was. <laughs> so, you know, I think that does affect it a lot. I think that there, I mean, there's definitely problems with this movie for sure. And yeah. especially in the third act. And But I like the choices it makes and I like its commitment to choice. Like mm-hmm. with Pig, I like that it's mm-hmm. like, we're going here whether you like it or not, you know? Yeah. And whether it makes you comfortable or not, we're going here. And like, I don't know. I we don't get movies like this very often anymore. Yeah. You got to support it, you know. So especially on like a big. I mean, this was it's a expensive big release. You mm-hmm. know, what I mean, yeah. like, but they put money behind it. It as looks far expensive. As like, it does. Yeah, yeah, I mean, the yeah. movie itself and the, the promotion of it. It's like yeah. I was very aware that this movie was out right. there. You know, right? And I like it when they they support a movie like that. Yeah. It'll be a cult yeah. classic in the future, I guarantee it. Oh, yeah. Assuming that people watch movies that weren't made five minutes ago. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, Quibi, all right. Of your yeah. All right. So we're on to number ones now? No, no I'm still Colin, number two. Colin, Colin, Colin. Uh, okay, so speaking of directors Uh-oh. who I like it when they do something that uh, they haven't done before and are taking chances. I might be the only person who saw this movie I don't usually like Guy Ritchie movies. Well, no, that's not true. That's not true. I'm going to take oh, that back. I know what this is. There is shock around the table right now. <laughs> okay, so I I appreciate Guy Ritchie's style. Um, I mean, I I did. I, I'm I'm going to retract my statement that I don't like Guy Ritchie movies. I do. Um, I don't love Guy Ritchie movies. Everyone has right one they like, right? I like Black Star, at least I one. Liked Snatch. I liked uh, Rock and Roller. The Gentleman the was gentleman. like a return to form. Yeah, that, was that you're like. But like so that's gentleman. and then the Sherlock Holmes movies. I mean, I guess I like those. So I do like Guy Ritchie Aladdin. movies. Mm-hmm. I didn't see that. <laughs> Take it back. Rock and Roll. Sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> I saw Rock and Roll, and I don't remember not liking it. I don't have a. Clear <laughs> I don't memory. remember. I don't remember not liking. Yeah, I don't have it. That's, that's Guy Ritchie. I, for, I forgot. Were you, were you Team Man from Uncle or no? I was not. Holly and I, I are Team Man from Uncle. Hell yeah! Okay. I love so, that movie. <laughs> well, I'm just totally making a retraction there. Okay, so, but. Uh, Guy Ritchie has a style in his telling, which is sometimes charming and sometimes very grating. However, yeah, that's his career in a nutshell yeah. right there. Yeah. Yeah. However, he has done something different, and that is a movie called Wrath of Man. This is a Jason Statham led wow. movie. Oh. Well, because it doesn't feel like a Guy Ritchie movie. It doesn't it, look like one from the trailer. It, yeah, and yeah, the stuff I saw did not look like one of his right. movies. I know. It feels like a Christopher Nolan movie or a Michael Mann movie. There's a lot of heat there it is. maybe in this. Okay. Mm-hmm. Where maybe Christopher Nolan and Guy Ritchie want to be Michael Mann. They mm-hmm. like Heat is like a bigger movie, I think, that we're giving it credit for. And like, you know, the like people saw it and they're like, that. Oh no, it's a big movie. Yeah. Heat, heat is <laughs> like, a big movie. Heat's want, a big movie. We yeah. Be, we want to do Heat. Watch Dude. Den of, watch Den of Thieves. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go to bat for it again. I was like, really? The, we're back on that? Yes. We're, we're back on that Jerry <laughs> Butler movie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, this one is based on a French movie called Cash Truck, which came out, I think, the uh, year after High Tension did. I didn't see Cash Truck. Oh, 
Uh, this is Le, Le, a Convoyer. Con, con, con oh, yeah. Um, so, um, and it has um, Jason Statham in it, and he is a new employee at a cash truck business, which has been hit in the past by uh, uh, armed robbers, right? Sure. Uh-huh. So there's a lot of questions about, like, who is this guy? Like, is he maybe part of a, you know, like, is he trying to get the inside scoop so they can rob the place? Is he somebody sent by it management? It sounds very tense. Like, sound yeah. like I'm, my yeah. heart's going I, up a little bit. You're talking about stop it. watching the background yeah. at all times. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, that's because these are, I guess, the I, maybe this is why I like the movie so much because it holds so much back from you and ladles it out as the movie goes on, which is also why I like, like pig, you know, those kind of things where you don't know the whole movie when it starts. You make a. Assumption. That's why I wanted you to watch Pig, Colin, because yeah. I knew it would subvert your expectations. That's <laughs> I why I was had, like, Colin, you need I to had watch it. Expectations yeah. based on. Yeah. I like because those movies, you know, engage your brain. I suppose in a way that, like, I uh, like being engaged by a movie. I'm thinking about possible, like, where is this going to go? Oh, it'd be interesting if this happened, and then where the movie actually goes subverts that expectations and, and goes a different way. And this movie, I think, does it. It's very, it's a very cold-hearted, uh, brutal in some ways, and very direct. It's like a testosterone. I'm interested. I'm listening. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, sometimes I need that. Sometimes I need to be punched in the face by a movie like that. You know, yeah, like, yeah. I was just like, yeah, fuck me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just, like the 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 performances are, are good. Like I'm like, is this Statham's best movie? I mean, it, it might. It's be, a low bar. Wow. It's a, right? it's a it's a very low bar. Have you bar. seen the Meg? I was just going to yeah. say that. We, we did an you episode know, on it. Yeah, like, we did. I'm like, are we not no, no, no. giving Statham enough it? credit as like a, a, like this enduring like figure in movies? Probably not. Like, can he do more? I feel like he shows up and paints by numbers and... I've seen you know. him in comedies. I've seen him I think in, he romantic in a movie called films. Pay by Numbers, as yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I've seen him, you know, you think of him as like this action guy who kicks, you know, or something like yes. a Jean Claude Van Damme. He but is he, always the I'm transporter like, kicking the door. A guy who kicks. I, I hope that's like his LinkedIn, like a no, guy that who needs kicks. needs to be his fucking tombstone thing, yeah. a guy who kicks. I yeah. think he's capable more of more I than think he's given. He, yeah, I yeah. think he's capable of more than. than but I don't think he cares to put in more effort. I feel like he shows up and does exactly what's expected did of him and not an ounce more you know mm, see i don't know I think he does what he wants because i think he is dialing in on who these characters are like even in this one that's why i'm like is this because it seems like he's not doing a lot but i'm like he is actually doing something here we sometimes about, sometimes not Cartel doing a lot us. is doing a lot yeah, you know he's yeah. allowing you to project I like guess, gosling and, and drive right you know like yeah, that's yeah, yeah. that's not doing a lot but doing a lot i know i keep you know? hearing that that's like a bad performance so i'm no, like it's no not. it's not it's, it's a master yeah you have to be like i the fact that you don't come at the freak show about drive we'll come we'll, we'll, yeah. we'll, cut, we'll take you down thinking you yeah let him think. I, and we'll i know what you. he's thinking and <laughs> right, that's the exactly. important thing and i think this one's not like that yeah okay. they're, they're, they're a great thing this is not like it it's but. trying to it, because it's trying to keep his motives like you know veiled mm-hmm. but then it does these it employs these jumps in time to like other characters and it has a great cast um holt mccann Mc, mccallany yeah, I think that McCallan, McCallan, from Mindhunter, yeah. uh, mm-hmm. Battlestar Galactica, and he was in Nightmare Alley. I mean, this guy yes. keeps showing up like he's one of our generations. Like I think great character, character actors. Yes. Yeah, he really he's is. Very good. Like, bring this yeah. guy in. This is a pretty good role for him. Josh Hartnett is in this movie. Oh. Wait, I'm sorry. Oh, what year Josh is it? Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> currently or he's, he's back. He's back. <laughs> But not, but is this the nostalgia? Is it the heart? Is this the nostalgia? Is the, the heart n- nascence? Heart, 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 Oh, the vapor actor, I don't remember. Okay, yes. but when I remember when we when you were talking about that, I was and like, I'm I... like, this might be his his. I don't know about performance because he is the, he gives the same performance all the time. He's yeah. kind of a, I think yeah. a, an actor of limited range. He's coasting on his dad's credibility. Yeah, but but 
but there's something I get off of watching him that this movie dials in on, and it's like, oh, okay. that's good for I, this him. This is then. good casting, yeah, okay. <laughs> putting him in that good. role. Um, so um, I'm not sure what else I was going to say about this because I can't like give away too much. I'm right. intrigued, Callan. Yeah, I'm, I, I might watch this movie now. I'm I am yeah. too. So. But I, I guess. You know, in picking my list uh, this year, I'm like, is this one of the best movies of the year? I don't know. But I don't think that's what any of us are doing. It no. was yeah. a, it was one of the movies that and when I was watching it, I was engaged the whole time trying to figure out like what in the hell, like where are we mm-hmm. going with this? And like, oh, my God, you know, and uh, I guess by the end of it, I was like, holy cow, like I had an experience mm-hmm. watching this movie that I haven't had with a film in a while. And, and that's and, always a good feeling, isn't it? Is yeah. Feeling. yeah. You're like you've discovered you don't something. Forget that, and I'm you know? like, how come I never heard of this movie? And it has a terrible title, maybe. It Wrath is a of bad Man. Title. Yeah. Terrible like, title. The trailer didn't look. Because when you told the posters me, like, you, bad, you yeah. I was just like that movie, and it okay. got coveted because like it came out. And nobody went. It was like at the time when like Monster Hunter came out. You remember that one in uh, Wrath of Man and I stuff like not. that. It's I like don't remember that the Mila Jovovich movie from the director of Resident Evil. Her nope. husband, Monster Hunter, the oh, next no, no, big nope. Japanese about, like, game uh, adaptation. No, okay, no. yeah. Um, but yeah, I think it got it got passed over. By audiences, because I don't think anybody was aware that it was there. So I guess I'm taking this opportunity to say you should double back and see Wrath of Man. I'm glad you're lifting up things that were forgotten. Yes. There you go. I like that. I, I will, I'm I'm very intrigued now. I want to see it. I so. hope you will. And uh, then you'll come back at me telling me I don't understand I mean, why, well, and I but... actually like Guy Ritchie movies, so I'm intrigued. <laughs> yeah, because do too. It doesn't you know. feel like his movie, but here's the thing. It's I've like, seen a lot of his movies that didn't feel like his movies. I saw For so long yeah, same. that like, he is a very good filmmaker yeah. it, when he applies himself yeah, to yes. like, you know, like exactly when he applies yeah. himself, which is 50 50, if he's going to mm-hmm. apply himself or not. I think he applied himself here. Cause there's okay. choices that he made in like camera placement and editing and all that. And I'm like, this is, this is like, this is like, you know, it, it's, uh, um, above workman like. Okay, good, good, yeah. good, good. I'm, so, ha- I'm happy for him. I'm happy for everyone involved, honestly. <laughs> yeah, I wish he would do more, but uh, who knows? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, Sean, th- I guess we're going to number one. Number one, one. it's number, number ones. ones. Uh, Michaela, you said you were, uh, we're glad that uh, Colin is using this time to lift up movies mm-hmm. that have been forgotten. I will not be doing that with this pick. Uh, this pick has sort of a freak show. Uh, history to it. Uh, uh, oh, I think yeah. we might all be on the same page. I, that's this, is, this is what I'm wondering. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, my number one for the year, maybe surprisingly, is Dune. It's also yeah. my number one as well. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Dune. Uh, uh, I sit here shocked, I tell you, um, because uh, we went through the year. Now, like, we have the history because Colin brought... David Lynch's Dune to the Freak Show. Years in a very ago. contentious episode. I think yeah, you can so. Go I back and listen to, to that yeah. one. Yeah. I hear the venom in my voice. Wait, was that yeah. because we knew the new one was coming? No, no that was years, years, years ago. Years, years ago. ago. Yeah. 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 No, this was like, we're going to watch this. That was you just wanting to put us through yeah, that. Yeah, because I love Dune. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> Colin, <laughs> I now love Dune. <laughs> yeah, we've all, been, we've all been converted. <laughs> we've surprise, all been most converted. most surprising thing, yeah. and I think this warmed Colin's uh, uh, little heart mm-hmm. when he saw how excited we all were for this movie when we started seeing trailers. Shocked. Mm-hmm. I was shocked. shocked. Yeah. And uh, shocked I was when I saw it, and I was just like, I want more Dune. I was uh, upset when it was over. Me too. I didn't think it was... Uh, I wanted more Dune. I wanted to be more Dooney. We talked about how we at, off mic we had a conversation about how Timothy Chalamet at the end goes into that conversation about like and the journey's only just begun and we all were like no 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 like, the movie's not ending now <laughs> like yes. you can't just end the we movie just now. started yeah. yeah yeah and to, for all of us to be saying that at the end of a Dune movie I did not see a coming. two and a half hour long movie yeah mm-hmm. right shot so they did it. Right, and yeah. again, it's and you want more of it. I, I guess, want more. It, oh, I, did, I didn't feel the length for a second. But nope. this is, I guess, the question that I have. Like going into it, I think, like because the the marketing just calls it Dune, but when you actually sit down to watch it, it says Dune, Dune Part, part one. one. So, yeah. Yeah. did you were you aware that you were not getting? I knew it was going to be two parts. No, I, I didn't know. Oh, I no? knew. I did not know. Oh. I knew because I think I saw it like leaked somewhere that it was going to be. Nope. Two I, didn't, yeah, I knew yeah. they weren't. When it started, it said part one. I was like, part one. I was like, they better be doing that like within the movie. Like, here's part one. Now you're going to watch part two. You know <laughs> oh, what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know oh. what I mean? Yeah. Two parts in a two and a half hour movie. Yeah. Great. I don't get what's going on at Warner Brothers because they did the same thing with it. They yeah. came out with it, and at the end, it says it chapter one. And you're like, I thought I was sitting down to watch it, and then it's right. like, depending on how well yeah. this movie does, right. we, we may green light a second one. And you're like, what mm-hmm. if it didn't do good? 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Where do you leave me? Right. Like, especially with this one, because they did the same thing. They didn't green light the second one until this one made uh, enough money. Yeah. Right. It's like right after choice. opening weekend, I think mm-hmm. they gave it to it. Yeah. But um, yeah, I like the like we we all I think we all discussed afterwards. Like, I, I wish this is what Star Wars was. I the, I'm the, so I retroactively am more mad at Star Wars now <laughs> yeah. because right. when I was watching it, I was like. Oh, I would love to see Denny Villeneuve Star Wars. And that was like a high. And then immediately after I said, oh, no, this is it. Like, this is the closest I'm going to get to him doing Star Wars. It, yeah. It so feels, I have to enjoy this because right. this it is feels, it. It feels, I mean, it feels, it feels regal. It feels like there's a seriousness to it. It feels like. It feels like a grown up movie. It does. It is. <laughs> and I think you can do that without, I mean, we compared it and we said we wanted Star Wars. I always go back to that. What do you think? I'm going to defend the universe with a laser sword. And mm-hmm. like, that is the line that always kills me. I'm just like, you killed mm-hmm. a lot of you Star Wars with that line. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You can't you demystify can't the world you're in. Yeah. Right. Yep. You can't. Um, this movie, Dune sticks with the seriousness of it, uh, the hierarchy of everything I want to know more about. Mm -hmm. I think it's come across in something that's, uh, I mean, I've never read the source material, but this seems like a very, uh, easily to digest Ver- or easier to digest well, version the, of this. I yeah. Don't, yeah. I mean, as a comparison between the two of them, yes. I mean, cause I guess I always got what you guys are getting out of Dune right. from the first one, yes. but I don't know. That might be because I I read the book yeah. also. So we're none of us. It. The rest of us haven't. Right. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Have so the first yeah. one, I think, to a lot of people comes off as like incomprehensible yes. sci-fi gobbledygook. Yes, yes. It does. <laughs> Even though I watch it and I'm like, well, no, I know Painful. this is the so-and-so. Painful. One. But this we one, all say that, but I would like to go back and watch it now. But this, and Well, now that you Not know I. what everything <laughs> is, but this right. one is to its credit like a you can follow the they lay everything out it's like even right from the like five minutes in i'm like okay i get what they're doing yeah yeah Yeah. this is gonna be Mm -hmm. you know they tackled i'm sorry kyle mclaughlin has never looked like a 20 year old in his life he's always looked 40 years old that doesn't help it doesn't help anything you know i still love that there's uh harkonnens and atreides and Mm -hmm. this is paul yeah, and Paul. <laughs> that always kills me. No he's, matter the, what. he's the chosen one of two cultures, and his right. name is Paul. Name yeah, is Paul. Yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, yep. that's Paul. This is uh, Duncan Idaho. That's Paul. Mm. Um, yeah. There's yep. some. There's some really good stuff in this movie. I mean, it's uh, Denny Villeneuve who I who's done Arrival, uh, Sicario. He doesn't have a miss, right? I well the one with uh, enemy. Enemy. You, enemy. Yeah, that is my least I favorite, but it's still not bad. I would yeah. say prisoners. Yeah. Like yeah. he's very. Oh, he's very Stay tuned. Good. We will do prisoners eventually. I love yeah, Blade prisoners. Runner twenty forty nine. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The highlight for me. Yeah. 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 Which, if nothing else, depending on if you like that story, is also is visually. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, had like, I want to lick that movie. Too, yeah. Just like. Yeah. yeah. Maybe I don't. But I don't know. Arrival is like on the no, same I level. Lick Arrival is on the same level as Pig as me. Is like it's a great movie, but it's so fucking sad. I don't. I think I can only revisit See, it when I'm in that was place. A, was a a miss, but not in like a. Te- oh, you weren't devastated by that reveal in the third act, to, especially already, being a parent. Holy shit, uh, dude! I know. I have, I'll watch. I think it. you're I misremembering it. Yeah. I, well, yeah. I'm, I, I have the same feelings I had when it first came out, but I only watched it once, yeah. and I haven't gone back to it, and I've mm-hmm. changed things since then. So mm-hmm. uh, I would watch that again. But yeah, Dune. Surprise! So mm-hmm. surprised. It's so this, good. This yeah. My number one movie of the year. My, uh, Give me the next one now. Yeah. yeah. Like, I want it. And I'm my, very surprised at that. Get weirder. Uh-huh. My only complaint is lack of pugs. Yeah. It it there's no pu- space pugs. pugs. Yeah. It would have been great. Can you imagine Oscar needed Isaac pugs. is like, I need to walk the pugs yeah. right now. I like, want to see Oscar Isaac with a fleet of pugs. Yeah. That would be great. Yes. But mm-hmm. just, yeah, mm-hmm. just the intricacies of the families and, you know, there's concubines, there's sons, there's legacies. Rebecca Armies. Ferguson. Re- this one has Rebecca Ferguson. <laughs> yes, she is in this one. Um, She's so good in she it is too. Really good. Yeah, but the thing I missed about in comparing the two versions, mm-hmm. uh, Francesca Annis plays her Lady Jessica in the first one. There was a there was a, a um, the attraction between uh, Duke Leto and Lady Jessica in the first one. I felt like more than I did in this one. They were a little colder to each other, even yes. though that's I a Denny Villeneuve with, thing. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Every movie he I mean, does, I like they're her. cold. Don't get me other. wrong. Yeah. I liked her yeah. performance. That's a, I think that's it's a his thing. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. if you if you watch any Den- Denny Villeneuve movie, uh, yeah, I'll get into this when it's my turn. But the, all the uh, well, characters uh, are always very cold to each other, and we can move on. Yeah, I was like, do you want to take over? Yeah, no, just keep going because yeah. Like this is the thing I grapple with 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 Denny Villeneuve all the time is his characters are always miserable and mumbling. 
Always. <laughs> in every movie. But yet, I feel so much for them. And yeah. I don't know how he gets that out of me. I don't know how he can pull at my heartstrings when these people are expressing no emotion. You know what I'm saying? It Prisoners was the same way. Um, Arrival was the same way. Like, it's... The characters are mumbling and sad. Mm-hmm. And yet, I am just like... I'm so sad for you, but you yeah. feel nothing. Well, that is a skill. That's a, that's a skill of acting. It is. You can convey. You he know, gets the best internal, out of his actors. He really yeah. does. But you're yeah. you're conveying an internal life, right? Right. Through yes. like yeah. the, your performance. The because part- the, the the David Lynch one fills in a lot of stuff by using uh, voiceover. Yes. You know, which I I couldn't help but hear while I was watching this. Yeah. So it provides you that extra layer of like, right. oh, I know why they're doing this because right. you know. I can hear it in my head, right? But the performances in his movies have that kind of like, I, I suppose any great nuance, actor could, I guess you would say. Like, I don't know. There's there's a subtlety to it, but yeah, everyone's just like mumbling and sad and mm-hmm. like. But the part I feel like what, they gotta like when they're. But if you understand, you could see them, them thinking. Yeah, about exactly. Everything that led up to them yeah. making the decision, they're thinking. That's about exactly right what now. it is. Yeah. Yes, exactly. And the, there's a part the the part in Dune where Oscar Isaac looks at Timothy Chalamet and he says. And you know you, you'll always be er- any everything I want you to be. You'll st- you'll still be my son. Like that. Right. Like that even line just, just hit. Son, even yeah. if you were just my son, you would still be everything I wanted you to be. Yes. That the way that line hit me, I was just like, oh wow, that that's like it took me back to arrival levels of sad, and I was just like, but the way he delivered it was so just like throwaway, and like I don't understand how he can get actors to deliver things so nonchalantly, but yet it hits me so emotionally. It's a very weird space to be I in. Think he- uh, he, I, I think there's a deafness. Is it a to French him. thing? Well, I'm probably you know it <laughs> you might know, be. Like, yeah, is it, it? But I think there's a deafness to. But he sets up the characters to where when they do do stuff like that, because he set they're them so up to cold. be emotionally cold. That when it so comes cold. through, you're just like, oh, oh shit, they do that, feel like too. Yeah, 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 exactly. But there's yeah. also like you know because they're inferring a lot of just based on their their status. I yes. guess you're talking about royalty. Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. yeah, and, and so that, that all you builds have into your own, that. Yeah, Sean, that, that actually makes you. a lot of sense now that you say that because I think back to prisoners and I think back to Jake Gyllenhaal's character and how mm-hmm. cold and emotional he is. But then in the third he act, the he takes that keyboard and smashes yeah. it and has that freak out, and yeah. you're just like, oh god, he does feel things. Yeah, and that like that's when that movie turns. You know, yes, it's drive. Yeah, it's drive. And that's when that movie you're like, oh, I thought he didn't feel anything, but capable of like yes, yes, it's because the whole movie you're thinking. It in, and that's the thing. Yes, that's their action. Yeah, you think holding it. The whole yeah. movie, you're like, this person feels nothing, and then you're like, oh, actually, they feel everything too much. Yeah, mm-hmm. and when you get that turn, that's when things go south. Like you're, you're like, I'm so emotionally invested, and now this person can't handle it. Mm-hmm. And Dune is all of that. Yeah. And like, I don't know about you guys, but like, my exposure to Timothy Chalamet previous to this was like, Call Me by Your Name, and that was pretty much it. Yeah, I saw and him in, uh, Lady, Bird, Lady Bird. Yeah. Bird. Yeah. Little, little, little women. I kind of hostiles and everything. Yeah. 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 I kind of didn't get the hype. I was just like, he's whatever. And yeah, like, I was like, he's fine. Yeah, he's fine. The first half of the movie, I was like, he's serviceable. By the end, I was like, all right, I, I'm one over. I yeah. can't, yeah. you know, yeah, like, I'm like, I'm, I'm, like you know what? Actually, yeah. he is Paul. Yeah, because yeah, that's, I guess, the thing is, like, you know, this character is going to have, like, uh, the responsibility of this kind of messianic uh, prophecy. Yeah. You know, it's like, but you have to say, you know, do I see this guy, this kid, yeah. leading an army? Right. You know, it's like, can I see that there? And I think he captures that right. in his performance there's well i'm thinking of a moment in like the tent you know or yeah some, it's like you know the, the movie has him and rebecca things. ferguson are great together too yeah mm-hmm. it has plot moments where she's kind of handing things over to him that he right. has to assert himself but uh, there's a moment where it's like he's kind of you know uh, implying that he's going to be in control of his own destiny he has his right. own his own thoughts on this. right i i like, yeah, I, I mean, you can go back and listen to our Dune David Lynch episode and hear how much I hate this movie. Right. And the fact that I was able to do a complete 180 on mm-hmm. the same story yeah. is just a, a testament to directing and writing. And like I like I said, I don't feel like Denny Villeneuve has had a miss. I know Enemy is not. A, I don't particularly care for Enemy. And I know Colin doesn't either. But like, I still don't think it's a bad movie. I just mm-hmm. don't think I didn't like it, you know. And I, I, this movie's just awe inspiring. Like I remember watching, I was watching it at home and I remember thinking, fuck, I should have gone and seen this in IMAX. Like I immediately regretted not seeing it in the theater. Mm -hmm. Like 
I like a lot of the complaints about this movie are how much time he spends on like spaceships landing. And I'm like, no, I'm into that. Like, mm-hmm. I'll watch that forever because the way he shoots it is just so. I'm just in awe. I'm just stunned and mm-hmm. just completely sucked into this world. I know there was a lot of complaints about Zendaya like not really being in it much or having a lot of dialogue. Jesus. Wait till the second yeah. part too. Yeah. Wait like, till the second movie. I know because my yeah. disappointment was like, where's Fade? Yeah, but they cast him. Yeah. But he'll be very, in the next one. Uh, oh, sorry. Well, yeah. It was <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> they cast him, and then they took it off, and I'm like, ah. They cast two. him for the second movie. But yeah, speaking of a stacked cast, this movie is like a lot of my favorite actors. Yeah. You know, mm. um, Oscar Isaac, Rebecca Ferguson, Josh Brolin, Stellan Skarsgård, yeah. um, Momoa, Jason Momoa. Comes off very good yeah, man. so yeah. yeah, it's and he comes off. Colin, you brought up a really good point. I think I saw in your letterbox review that like the reason why Momoa stands out so much is that he's like. He expresses happiness, yeah. and whereas he everyone smiles, else, yeah. yeah, everyone else is so dour yeah. and he's and jolly. emotionalist, <laughs> and he's just like he's stoked about stuff. Mm. And like I don't know, like I bought that relationship from the jump. Um, mm-hmm. It the production design is beautiful, the costume design. Mm-hmm. I don't know, like I just got very lost in this movie in a way yeah. that I've never been lost in a movie in recent memory. It's you an know, overwhelming like. St- like yeah. landscape and set piece right it's, it's so big and grand and i'm so transport that. you yeah it I mean, that's yeah. the thing about like uh, the good science fiction does that we we are underserved there you basically right. have star wars mm-hmm. and that's it you know i feel like i'm giving something else like a short trip yeah. <laughs> yeah. <That's it. laughs> but yeah i mean this world building right well like game of thrones maybe yeah yeah, yeah for i've sure. always thought sure. that and this, yeah, yeah. but like, this has the political drama yeah, yeah, of yeah. game that's of what, thrones yeah, and yeah. i think that was i think that's part of it too since we don't have the game of thrones it has the it, political like, drama this of it gets that and yeah. people are like ooh, i want that back yeah, yeah. I was actually surprised that they didn't go with the emperor in this movie. They don't right. show him because, but what that did for me was like it builds this anticipation because the Lynch movie shows him off the bat and he explains his whole motivation for what he's doing. Right, right, right. This right. one you don't see him, so you're like, what is he planning? And we're, right, we're hearing other people talk about him, and even the bad guy, mm-hmm. Baron uh, Harkonnen, mm-hmm. or Her- it's, Harkin in the movie they Harkonnen, say Harkonnen. Yeah. Harkonnen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, he even like has a deference to the emperor, so you know right. that like it's like the way they set up the emperor in the original. Yeah, story, in Empire yeah. Strikes Back. Yep. You know? I I don't know. I could have watched another two and a half hours of this movie. I didn't feel the length. So good. I loved That's every so minute of it. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it's a good, no, it was a good one. I mean, you had I to. just <laughs> I am as shocked as you guys are that like Sean. I agree. I'm shocked that the dude is my number one. But also when I was watching it, I was like ten minutes into it, and I turned to my partner and I was like, it will be very hard to remove this from my top, top spot of the year. Yeah. Like I just knew from the jump, I was like, this is it. And I've, I've kind of felt that way. Every time I've watched a Denny Villeneuve movie, I was like, this is the best movie I'm going to see. And it's all downhill from here, which mm-hmm. I, what is this guy's secret? What? Like he's got something and it's going to derail eventually. This kid's got something. <laughs> but yeah. you know, maybe he's just very selective. Maybe he's just very good at that. But the, the clean, like minimalist future yeah. Yeah, design a, of it yeah. all is yeah. works vision, so well. And it's working. But, and I heard he just signed on for another sci-fi franchise. I hope he doesn't become the sci-fi guy mm. because Prisoners, Sicario was yeah, because so I want him, yeah, like, like, him to do stuff like Sicario. Sicario and, and Prisoners like, oh, yeah. was great, and it's like yeah. let him diversify his portfolio a little bit, you know? Right, but it's um, nice he can take those relationships we saw in other movies, human yeah, stuff, and yeah. bring it to mm-hmm. uh, yeah. Dune. So. Yeah. But like I said, I'm retroactively sad that like Star Wars is worse now. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yeah, because th- it could be this. Yeah, it could be this, and it could be this adult, and it could be this mature, and it's not, and it never mm-hmm. will be, and that makes me sad. Yeah. So, like, I love Dune, but it makes me sadder for Star Wars. You know. <laughs> so that's that's my number one. I am, I I'm shocked, and I think I will be for a long I mean, time that this is my number one. Holly, what is your number one? Um, Colin, is that your number one? I didn't because I knew we were okay. Good. Uh, okay. I was gonna say, do we just need to keep going? <laughs> yeah. Keep, I mean, keep otherwise, keep yes. Obviously, I okay. loved this movie. I was, I it was no. Great. I my my first thing before I say anything else. I did not pick Dune because I knew other people. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah, I love Dune. It's fantastic. Um, I'm picking something that couldn't be more opposite of. Dune. All right, go for it. Um, go it's, off. <laughs> yeah, it is a very silly, ridiculous movie called Werewolves Within. Oh, I saw that. I want to see this. It's so ridiculous. If for nothing um, else than the director Josh Rubin is the director. See, right? that's yeah. exactly why Didn't, I won't watch it. Okay, Didn't he yeah, do I was, scare me. He did scare me. I, I loved scare me. I liked scare me. Oh, you guys yeah. hated it. No, no, I liked it. Oh, what you is, liked it? I liked. Scare I hated it. Michaela hated it. Oh, I, I absolutely I hated it. And I, perp- I wanted to tell you, it was like the things that you hated about scare me. 
They're not oh, in okay, this. Okay, okay. This is better. It was, on my li- it was on my list to watch, but then I saw it was the guy that directed Scare Me. I was like, I fucking hate it. I scary know. Me, so I I'm saw, I saw that and I was like, okay, I'm going to have to talk Michaela into this. Yeah, 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 yeah you would be right. Scare Me is like, a, it's a... Was it's it a, a shutter? It's a two-person it's thing. It's theater kids acting out horror because movies in a room. It's like an anthology movie, yeah. but what if we just told the stories and like, there We was, talked about yeah. this. I watched it last year because Colin recommended it and I fucking hated <laughs> yeah. it. Right, was like an anthology. This, this is a so, new yes. way to do anthology movies. Yeah, I really I liked it. it. Okay. <laughs> but um, Werewolves Within, it's... Oh, God. It's so silly. It's so ridiculous. It's got Milana um, Vintrub in it. This is a movie that it knows what it is, right? It's... Mm-hmm. It, it is a delightfully dry comedy, but with a werewolf horror garnish. <laughs> like it's just, well, there's the mystery. Of who is the yes, werewolf? Yes, exactly. You know? It like you know, there's so, that's an angle. that's a cool idea. It's like a, yeah. Uh, yeah. the beast within. Yes, or if it was like a if it was like a hateful eight situation, but who's the werewolf? You right. know, yeah. And that's, like, you know, that's, that. that's what I'm mean, going we've with. had cursed. We've had our hoot. There was a Tales from the Crypt episode. That was pretty too, obvious yeah. who it was in Cursed, yeah. No, but this, the, I mean, that's, we've we've seen variations of this. Sure. But this is but very much, good. but this is very much like, is it a werewolf? Is it like something else? Is it a person that's pretending to be a werewolf? Like what? So is this a, it's a little it's Wolf a hoot- of Snow Hollow-ish a, kind of? I don't know. I haven't seen that. <gasps> Holly, you should watch Wolf I know, of Snow Hollow. I know, I know, I know. Holy I know. shit. You would Wait, was like that it. on our list last, last year? Yeah, it was. Okay. I know, I'm sorry. It was my other will mention. Sean had it on his. I, I think was, he I had, it. I had it on mine, yeah. Mine oh. was just because things were rushed on yeah. the third. And I'm sorry, yeah. I have not seen the beta test, so that's why. I... Yeah, I didn't yeah, either. Because <laughs> if, like, Sean, I agree, beta test is a step backwards in his career. <laughs> the who? Jim the beta test? Oh, yeah. It's yeah. a step backwards. St- okay. Snow okay. Hollow, yeah. We're, we're oh, yeah. saying, like, yeah. Snow Hollow should have launched him forward. Right. That's it, it right? looked like it. Yeah. yeah. And beta test. I don't want to see it, but it looked like but it. But it looked like the first movie you would make. Right. That's, that's what I That's what I got. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just looking at the trailer, it felt like, I feel like we went back a little bit, but. Mm-hmm. Okay, but Jim Cummings is great. So we love him. <laughs> uh, sorry, uh, yeah. Holly's. No, no, it's okay. It's okay. Just, okay. Uh, yeah. No worries. Um, this is a, a ridiculous, silly movie, but it's so good. Um, it's uh, it's about a, a new like park ranger. Um, moves into a small town. Very Wolf of Snow Hollow already. <laughs> All right. <laughs> he moves into a small town, and there's you know like a a, a gaggle of locals that they're all just very oh, quirk- weird, very weird and quirky, and <laughs> and then these like happening start and they're trying to figure out like is there a werewolf is there another animal like what's happening because then there's there's a scientist that she's like it's a werewolf you know it's very but it's so silly like each character is just ridiculous like the main character our park ranger he teams up with like the local male woman and they're like kind of in this that's, together that's oh, the who, 18t who girl that milana vitrube because i saw he was in what really milana vitrube huh. that's the 18t girl she's all right the male woman. She is. Huh. <laughs> and yeah. who's the lead? Because he was in the Tomorrow War with yeah. Chris Pratt. Yeah. Which, guys, I'm sorry. My uh, my partner thinks that's one of the best movies of the year. When he said that, I was like, I we need to stop this discussion right now <laughs> I because like that I might file for divorce if you continue on this. <laughs> he watched it twice. Although Toby singing and saying that and then Colin saying, I'm like, all right, I'm uh, more Sam- interested than I was. <laughs> yeah. no, it's Sam Richardson. Steve. Sam yes. Richardson. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Um, need to remember him probably going forward because he seems like he's got that star quality. He does. Yeah. He he's very he's very charming in this. Like uh, you know, he's very wholesome. He doesn't really swear. Like he'll stub his toe and he'll be like fiddlesticks. Like he's yeah. so, it's so uh, funny. It's a comedic. It's so you know, like funny. I could see him being like a you know a comedic uh, star oh, yeah. probably. Yeah, yeah, but it's very whodunit. There, I it's mean, like Clue. But with werewolf. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. That's exa- I was okay. going to say, it's very clue, but with werewolf. Did you ever, had you ever heard that there was a, a video game? Yeah, it's uh, based on a video game. Yeah, but I didn't know that. Yeah. Did you? <laughs> I did after I saw it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's like an Ubisoft game. Yeah. From, didn't they produce the movie? I think so. Or something? Yeah, it's like, okay. I mean, it is like we're adapting a video game. It's very dry comedy. Um, there is Sounds some horror me. There are some horror elements, you know, spoiler, there. I mean, there's a werewolf. There's werewolves. There's a werewolf. Yeah. Um, but it's a pretty decent transformation. Like, I thought it was pretty good the way they, the way they pulled it off. Um, I'm surprised Michaela hasn't seen this movie. No, yet. because I saw the scare me, and I, I was like, uh, "Fuck this!" I was like, "No, no, 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 Spencer!" <laughs> yeah. Honestly, like the this has a bigger. Yeah, scope, this is bigger. If you show people the wrong movie of a filmmaker, out of order. Yep. I showed people Hold the Darkness before they ever saw Green Room oh. or Blue oh. Ruin. <laughs> 
they fucking will not yeah, step near I either bet. one of those movies Would that now. Kill his career. At, well, he did True Detective. After yeah, that, yeah. When well, you once bitten, twice shy, dude. I know. You know? Like, like, oh, you gotta watch yeah. Green Room. It's so good. They're yeah. like, fuck you. We yeah. we tried this. <laughs> that, <laughs> yeah, that, that's me. Was scare me. We yeah. all hadn't seen it, so we all sat down and watched. And I was like, fuck, this was not the right one. Yeah. So it happens. It um, does but, happen. Yeah, it does. But I gotta say, like these, car- I laughed watching this. It was just the escapism that I needed this year. It's funny. It's there's some good horror in it. Um, it it's a quick movie. It doesn't feel long or anything. It, it's just delightful. I I hadn't I hadn't really heard of it. I don't remember how I came across it. How did you come across it? Uh, right. Yeah. yeah, I had heard well, about it. Floating I think, about there, you know, like I've seen disgusting. a lot of talk of it. In the Social media, media yeah. told me, yeah, yeah okay. I'm a horror fan. I don't so remember I how I came across it, but I, oh, was it, was I had put it on my watch list. At yeah, some because point. you texted me, you were watching that while I was watching. Yeah, something else. You that were we'll watching get to. something yeah, else. That we'll, we'll get, get to. to. And yeah. I was like, oh, I'm watching Werewolves Then you're like, well, that sounds better. And I and I was like, maybe I should turn this off and watch Werewolves Then instead. Yeah, it was just so fucking enjoyable. Like I, I. I don't, you know, I don't want to give a lot of the plot away because right. it's, it's yeah, just, know, it's, a fun, watch it. it's a fun journey to go on, but it's just, it's so funny. There's, there's a, a like a very flamboyant gay couple that made me laugh. Big John Little so, John. So, kind of, kind of, <laughs> they just, they better, made, better movie. Better. Yeah. <laughs> they made me laugh so hard. Like all these characters are just so funny. Like there's a woman that's really obsessed with her dog. The dog's name is Chachi. So the whole movie, she's talking about Chachi. I hope Chachi uh, is the werewolf. <laughs> Oh god damn it! It's so funny. Um, yeah, I I can't. It's delightful. I know there's some mixed reviews on it. Like I don't think it got great reviews. I think it got okay reviews. That's maybe. how scary me was too. Though. It was very divided. Yeah. Um. But I mean, this movie knows what it is, and it's delightful. I I highly recommend it. It was it was a lot of fun. Like I said, the escapism I needed. So that's my number one. I always see him on Twitter uh, begging to make a dark man movie. Who? <laughs> Josh, Josh Rubin. That's, oh, uh, yeah, yeah. He's, on Twitter, he's always I, like, I also do. Dark Man. Like he just wants to keep. He's like, I will make Dark Man. We Somebody already had the Dark best Man. Dark Man movie we could possibly get, right? I think we could do better. I mean, I think there's. I really, I there's there's three three opportunity. Them. There is opportunity. I rewatched and that was first show. one recently, and it's great. It's a good movie. It's a great movie. It's a very good movie. All right, that's my number one, Colin. What is your number one of the year? My number one, ironically, is a Christmas movie. Okay, so this is the I'm thing. S- like, I'm shocked that Dune is not your. Well, no, one. Dune would have been, but I guess I know that you yeah, know that, that you guys. We were this is talk I, about. Yeah, hey, same, this is a I, business first yeah. and foremost. We got to keep <laughs> this thing going with some different content. Exactly, and I bet I can guess what it is. Well, that would be impressive if you did, because oh, this not. is the movie that challenged me, I guess, the most. And I'm like, is that oh. you know? The, do I have a thing where a movie has to like perplex me? So I have to keep watching yes. it, yes, trying to yeah. try and like, figure yes. out, and then it becomes like this is the greatest thing. Welcome to the um, last nine years of your life. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So it's a movie called The Green Knight. This is. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I am shocked because when I asked you if I should watch this, you said I don't know. Well, that was on the first viewing. <laughs> yeah, I've come uh, around to I, it. Okay, okay. <laughs> so there's you beat yourself into submission over yes, this movie. Yes, there huh? is a okay. lot to because you're going to have to take an active role basically in. <laughs> In going Don't like that. Oh, no. yeah. um, that already sounds like a chore. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So for I'm some not people, here to do work. Should we talk about my list again about yeah. being active when going to the This is how right. else we, we the uh, the uh, the wolf Spain the garlic for Michaela. It's an A24 movie. So uh, there you go. Already. Oh my God, Holly. Do you want to tell a story on air about when you and I went and saw Nightmare <laughs> Alley together? All right, wait. Do it. Let Colin go and then. <laughs> Well, what happened? So I think we might have told you guys. I don't remember. Um, we talked about so, it off air. Yeah. Okay. So oh, what's what's that movie? It was um everything all at once or whatever that oh, Michelle Yeoh okay. oh, yeah, movie is. Yeah. Okay. So we're we're watching the trailers before Nightmare Alley, <laughs> and the first thing we see is Jamie Lee Curtis, and Michaela goes, "Oh!" And then it says A twenty four. She goes, "Oh!" <laughs> I was like fist bumping, then immediately def- deflated. Immediately, <laughs> deflated. it was so yeah. funny. Well, there is, I guess, an expectation that you have going in A twenty four movies. I actually do kind of like them. They are the new like magnet to me. Anybody remember yeah, magnet? magnet you see yeah, yeah, magnet. I feel like they're the new focus features. Is or how I feel. Focus. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah. That's pretty. As far as they all. They got that look to them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They, and, I, and I think a lot of the stuff that A24 releases, I think they are pickups. I don't think they're necessarily funded. I think they buy film festival mm-hmm. movies. But so this is from the director of uh, A Ghost Story. Oh. I think he also that was did, a divisive movie. Yeah. But I, liked, eating. I liked it. Yeah, the pie eating movie. I liked that a lot. Uh, <laughs> he did, also did Pete's Dragon, and uh, which I didn't see. <laughs> and he did... Um, 
All Ain't Them Body Saints, and I can't remember his name. His yeah. name is David... Uh, Anybody? No. Okay. So, uh, I wouldn't fucking know if <laughs> no. you don't know. I don't have this written down yeah. in front of me. Anyway, um, so this is a, it's a, it doesn't, they don't actually use the character names anywhere, but this is a King Arthur story, right? Like uh, Arthur, um, Morgana, uh, Merlin are in the movie. So mm-hmm. this is, you know, and Dev Patel plays uh, Sir Gawain. I have seen this story several times in my life. One of them was um, Sir Gawain in the Green Knight. The other one was Prince of the Valiant, where uh, Sean Connery plays the Green Knight. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's a stylistic uh, look to this movie. It's very phantasmagorical, kind of, you know, as you expect from an A24 uh, uh, film. Mm-hmm. But it has an expanse that I guess, because I'm like, oh, this is going to be like a low budget, you know, kind of thing. Oh. But it actually does seem to, you know, be able to project this bigger than it is, uh, you know, Im- impression of itself. I oh, guess. yeah, it looked mm-hmm. bigger. Yeah, like, mm-hmm. it looked like a bigger um, movie. So it kind of comes off as like a sword and sorcery fantasy epic or something like that. But it's... Basically, this uh, he's uh, when we first see him, he's at a uh, brothel on Christmas Day in the morning, waking up ha- hungover, and he goes to the round. It's a very table. depressing uh, setting. Right. Yeah, wow! <laughs> and he goes to the round table, and this green knight comes in, and it, in this story, he's this magical creature that's um, like made out of wood or something. He's like oh. a living tree. He's, he's grouped. <laughs> And he's played by uh, Ralph Ennison, who was uh, the dad voice. in in The Witch. Great yeah, voice. so he has, a, and uh, Kate Dickey is uh, is Guinevere, oh, of course. Um, so you got two people from The Witch, uh, and basically the um, the knight says, you know, uh, you you anyone any one of your men here can strike a blow at me, and so Gawain gets up and hacks the guy's head off but part of the game was uh, like i will deliver this blow again to you in one year right on christmas day a year from now and so he hacks his head off and then of course the guy's still alive and so it's like in one year's hence one year's time hence you know i'm going to deliver this blow to you and so then the so rest could of the you movie just decide to like poke him a little bit and that's yeah, gonna yeah, get yeah. back to you well, no because it's the 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 whole thing is about i guess the what does it take to, you know, what do we define a knight by? You know, it's like, what are the virtues that, you know, right. define? and I think the movie, uh, the, the, the plot structure of it, which I struggled with the first time, because I'm like, well, there's a lot of crazy shit happening here, you know, uh, interludes where he meets, you know, ghosts, giants, talking animals, uh, a weird uh, couple who, you know, Lord, and uh, it's Joel Edgerton and Alicia Vikander. You just she lost actually, Michaela. Oh, <laughs> Jesus. Joel Edgerton, I'm out. He's yeah. one of those vapor yeah, actors wait, wait, that I've seen in like... her, she wouldn't know. She's face uh, blind. I wouldn't she see wouldn't him. The movie. I would see Alicia Vikander because I do like her. Just yeah, skip the so. credits and you'll be yeah, fine. Yeah. Plays two characters yeah, in the movie, but um, yeah, I think it's uh, each one of the people that he meets is trying to uh, test his uh, valor, wisdom, generosity, and you know, in order to to get him to this uh, this, I don't know. I, I I'm fascinated by it. It was the experience of watching it was one of those kind of dream like and uh, like Mandy or something. You know, mm-hmm. I like these movies. Um, I'm I, I'm just shocked because the first time I talked to you after you watched this, yeah, movie, you, you did think, not like it. You did not like it. You told me not to watch and it. Then, and then Colin went on his sojourn yeah. to yeah. figure yeah. the yeah. movie out. Yeah, and yeah. Here we yeah. are because it really did. It was one of those like I like the experience of watching it. But I was like, I think, like, logically it didn't check out or I couldn't f- understand it. And so I did go back and watch it again. And I'm like, oh, and so you gain a, I gained a better understanding of it. So I'm like, well, am I not smart enough to pick this up the first time? Maybe, maybe you'll watch it. And you'll be like, oh, I get it. Uh, I'm not that smart. I had to watch it <laughs> twice. And uh, even then, I think there's still, you know, stuff that you can glean I from I mean, this, the but... things that you're saying about it, I find intriguing. I think yeah. it sounds interesting. Is this a two and a half hour movie? No. Okay. All right. Well, that's that. something. Yeah. Okay. That's something. It's mm-hmm. going yeah. for it. But I guess that's what I like about um, movies like this, that, that it I was aware of it. There was a promotional mm-hmm. uh, effort behind it. So... I'm like, okay, they're not just throwing this away. Well, I also, A24 also put out St. Maud, and they promoted that, and I didn't like that movie. But uh, this one got a promotional push. I went to go see it, and I was, uh, you know, the experience of watching it engaged me. And that's, I guess, what I I want from a movie 
is I don't want to be able to see the end of the movie, you know, how it's going to turn out. Right. Like when I sit down, mm-hmm. I want to be taken somewhere, you know, on a journey as I watch it, either intellectual or emotional. I think this movie kind of does both. Um, and so that's why I'm recommending it. And I think it's the, you know, it's become my favorite movie of the year because I think I'm going to watch this again. And I might I can't it believe, Christmases. I can't believe Dune didn't make your top five, no. but this is your number one. Uh, well, I, uh, I intentionally left Dune off because I knew we were going to talk about it. Like okay. I said, at the beginning of the, the I'm going, okay. my choices are not based on objective gotcha. best. They're the ones that I guess, um, Joel Edgerton was in, it comes a night. He's an a 24 stable boy. Yeah, probably under contract. I liked him in the gift. I did like him in the gift too. Yeah, I feel like it comes tonight. Came out like four two four years too early. If it came out now, everyone would be like, "That's the best movie I've ever." Seen. I mean, that's. I mean, I like I not the best movie, but I think there would like be. It's a movie. virus movie. It would play much better now yeah, than it well. did in twenty eighteen. I think he did good in Gatsby. I liked him in Warrior. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He's just like he's like I said, he's vapor. I just forget about him. Like I, I've seen him in things, and he's just you gone. Say? Maybe we should move on to our most disappointing movie. <laughs> oh, <laughs> what a segue! What a segue! Sean, what's the most? Di- wait, is that where we're going with the worst or most disappointing? Well, it's up to it's up to the picker. Yeah, it's up to the picker. Your choice. Like it's yours your was not necessarily, or it could be both. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it could be both. It could be both. For me, um, like I said, this was a year of disappointment. Um, Candyman was a disappointment to me uh recently being the ricardos was a disappointment to me sure, but sure. i think the one that really got me this year was indeed antlers yeah oh, sure. you know what that's a fair choice and i'm glad you picked it because i know we all saw it so we yeah. can all dip well, in on this antlers yeah. to me was one of those movies that i saw the trailer for and it intrigued me yes. and i'm like this might be one of my I most agree. anticipated yes all of us yes. yeah. yeah most anticipated yes Holly, so much- Holly and I saw this together, and mm-hmm. ah. we both left being deflated. We, I mean, yeah, we yeah. saw that trailer so much so that I, uh, I immediately put it on there. I'm just like, all right, I don't want to see another frame of this movie yeah. because I'm interested and right, I don't yeah. want to see any more. I want to save it. But little little did this, you know, you had seen the whole movie. Well, but leading into <laughs> yeah. it, and this is a thing that like we have to watch out for now. It's like right. In an era where other movies were dumped to streaming services, this one held out because that to me tells me that the company thinks they've got to. They had confidence. In this day and age, that is exactly the message they are sending. Yeah. That's a a good point, Kyle. And we're like, oh, so it is coming out because, I mean, uh, say what you will about it. After we all saw it, we're like, they could have dumped it to VOD and we would have been fine. Yes. I would have been fine watching this at home in my house. Because there was a build up to it and there are certain. Um, there might be one or two parts of this movie I like. I do like, I mean, because it is, uh, spoiler alert a little bit, this is a, a little bit of a Wendigo movie. It's exactly uh, that's the, that's You know that the going into yeah. it, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, but yeah, but it's also, it turned into what I was not expecting. It turned into a virus movie for me, which is the part yes. that yes, really I really didn't like. There are some elements of this movie that don't make sense to me. Uh, the, the logic the doesn't make sense. The second child, nope. the second child that make makes sense. no sense to me. Um... I was the way disapp- it jumps people and skips people makes no there's sense. There's some certain yep. things. There's some uh, there's a repetition in this movie that it's just like, all right, we got the idea. Let's keep going. Um, and then did you feel like ending. Clemens and Russell were above this? Because I felt like watching. I, it, I was like, why are they doing this? I like I like Clemens a lot. I mean, I, I think no, I like them both, things, but I felt yeah. like what what drew them to this is kind of what I thought when I'm watching it. You know, I mean, there's that. Uh, there's also there's a a, a crazy. Uh, side story in this about abuse that I don't. That's, it, many that's side the stories. main story. It is, yeah. and it and leads, yeah. and it leads to that's the why. identification. Nothing? Well, it leads to the identification of a child who suffers from abuse, or at least that's what they're taking out of it. But the how it's uh, incorporated when it comes to the main characters, Jesse Plemons, yeah. and who's the other one? Carrie Russell. Russell. Carrie Russell. Carrie Russell. Yeah. Jesus. Um, it doesn't. It's um, not necessary. It's how much they do of it is very unnecessary because yeah. it's a whole thing between. Because they're brother and sister. Because it doesn't have a payoff. Them. Right. It's, there's no satisfaction in it. Um, and then, like I said, we get to the ending, and it feels like a movie that not only they could have done to VOD, they could have done to VOD three years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you know yeah. what I mean? It like, feels behind the times. Really yeah. Is. Like, we got yeah. ahead of this movie, but they still decided to press on and release it for theaters instead of getting it out. It is gross. I will more. give it. It is yeah. gross yeah. and gory. And I will has, give it that. Uh, and I only know this from watching stuff after the fact, but well, Guillermo del Toro produced it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Which, Scott what Cooper does that mean? was it? Well, because 
the design of the monster is practical in a right. lot of uh, yeah. situations. But it's, it's in a lot of shadow and a lot of dim light. Yeah, but it's a practic- It's a monster yeah. movie for all intents and purposes. Yeah. It's, but it's directed by Scott Cooper, who is not a horror movie guy. But he's done right. good thriller movies, which is disappointing. I liked Out of the Furnace. I did, too. I really yeah. liked Out of the Furnace. But that's, it seems like he's going back to that kind of working class yes. or like, uh, you know... Um, Blue collar kind of yeah. Yeah, this is a, environment. This is like a mine, the mining... It's a mining town. It feels like it, like the mine shut down. It's no like, one has a good all... life in this movie. It is bleak. No. It is gray. Yeah. It is That's unhappy. his interest, I think. Yeah. Yep. And the, the abuse metaphor. But yes. it, it doesn't graft yeah. well onto the Wendigo story. Right, yeah. You want mm-hmm. Wendigo, you go see Larry Fessenden. God damn it, that man has <laughs> made at least three I will not. Wendigo. <laughs> no, four. I, I, Wendigo I, I saw four. Habit. I've seen it enough. <laughs> Don't need to see any more. But that was, yeah, I was very disappointed for as much as I... For as much effort as I put into not knowing about this movie, what I got from it was disappointing, and I'll never forget it. We um, all came out of it feeling that way, I, I feel yeah, like. Yeah. You know? I'll, 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 and I'll bet yeah. a lot of people did. And I like, I mean, it's Carrie Russell and Jesse Plemons. I like those people. I like, I like those yeah. actors. Yeah, but when they're morose. Like, it is. Yeah. They're so like, morose. Yeah. Like, through the entire, there's not a happy person in and this movie. And it's interesting. They don't have to be, but. It's interesting it's to position a Wendigo movie as like a police procedural where like all these yeah. gruesome deaths are happening and they can't figure it out. But it Ooh, doesn't. Fo- I can see the HBO series and I like it. But it doesn't follow. <laughs> through, yeah, it doesn't follow through on that idea well no. enough. Uh, that's that's like yeah. the second act of the movie. And that's it. It's yeah. not the full movie. Well, I yeah. think that, yeah, because that was you know part of my criticism of it was that. It feels like it's a horror movie made by a guy who really is not into horror. Right. He's yeah. into thrillers, yeah. I don't even know if it's a, he's like into crime the drama. drama. Yeah, because you know, yeah. like, yeah. he didn't. Yeah. He wasn't trying to thrill me. I don't think. No, because he can't scare you. He doesn't know how to stage things. You know, he doesn't know how to build an atmosphere of dread. Yeah, not scary. He, like failed on all of that. It, it, it ended up. It was boring. boring. It, was boring. It, it felt long too, yeah. and it was not a long movie, mm-hmm. but it felt long. And and, yeah. and I was very not happy with the way they glossed over it being like Native American folklore oh oh yeah we I should talk about not I'm, happy with a big that. thing we should talk about that there is native peoples in this movie and they are used as google well, yes. they are it green is from, they, uh, they they go to them and be like what's this and then they tell them and then that's it they're out of the yeah, movie yeah, and he, that's he unfortunate it's graham green from yeah. uh, dances with wolves yeah. and uh, he's in die twilight. hard and i was like uh, and twilight. he's also in twilight die yeah. hard with a vengeance <laughs> Um, but he basically is pounds. so. If you've listened to the show enough, we you know about the Vincent D'Onofrio role. Yeah, <laughs> this is what he plays. Yes. Vincent yes. D'Onofrio has done it twice in Rings and uh, Sinister, yep. where he's the expert on the mythology. Yep, comes right. in to tell you yep. why this thing is. And so in this one, because it is a Native American superstition, yeah. they it, go to him. It, it should it should be about Native people. It shouldn't be about these yes. white people that stumble across this thing and have a but problem with it. You but, know? but the focus of the thing is about like these broken down miners. I know. You know and like that's the, the problem. Town is, uh, right. depressed that's why the movie doesn't the work. Problem. Yeah, and that's exactly yeah. why the movie doesn't work. You know, And like everyone's life in this movie is absolutely miserable but that's another everyone's thing. life is miserable yeah, it's like, did, uh, pre yeah. and post wendigo it's if miserable the, yeah, if, yeah. The, yeah. if the kid the post wendigo should kick things up yeah to like it a doesn't though level like, it doesn't going on in this town right know, because that's the thing if the, if the kid is ha- i get if the kid is having a bad experience because of the abuse and right. then that ties into the mythology but why does our protagonist which is carrie russell and her brother why do they also have to have like some kind of tortured they backstory don't. they don't <laughs> you know because you don't need it, it to identify abuse but yeah. they're going well she'll identify with the kid because you know but it just she doesn't like, have to she's his teacher she can just care that's yeah. enough she could just be an empathetic person yeah you don't have that's to enough. have like yeah. uh, and we, we literally get flashbacks to her childhood abuse that are it's not unnecessary it doesn't matter to the story that's the thing yeah and i don't even think it matters to the it doesn't impact the character as much as they think it does no all you're writing it's like no we have to have everything there's themes that have to resonate every character has to share it i'm like you don't have to do it that way and we say this as people that were all very excited for this movie yeah Yeah. we were all looking forward to it we all like i don't know about you holly but i went into it watch it and watching it being like this is gonna be on my top five of the year. oh me like too. i went into it with the thought of it we this were is excited going to about be one it, of yeah. my best of the year and it wasn't and it was just dour and sad and and just yeah. i'm like but not in the like pig at least was cathartic mm-hmm. this was not yeah you know i got no, no i don't know what they were going for with the no no 
And by the no end idea. of it, I was just like, oh, go fuck yourself. You know? <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. I was like, wow, way to waste my time. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. it was, it really was just like the stamp on it because it happens yeah. right at the end. And you're just like, well, fuck oh, you then. On. Yeah, exactly. Uh, mm-hmm. And you're like, Jesse Plummins, you deserve better. You know you deserve He's better. Like, hey, three years ago, I thought this was a really good idea. Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's true. It's been sitting on the shelf since then. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I was very disappointed by antlers this year. And, As uh, were we all. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that takes the cake for me. Uh, Michaela. Your all right. worst or most disappointing of the year. All right. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm putting the gloves, taking the gloves off, I guess, I, for this one. Um, so... I, this was a difficult thing for me because, like I said, it, you're a mediocrity, right? Until this week. Oh. <laughs> Until this week. And then I, I, 10 minutes in, I knew I had a worst of the year and I stuck with it because I needed to be able to fully deliver my hatred for this movie. Um, being the Ricardos uh, is, wow. the, is the worst movie. Like, I, oh, Well, I should say up front. Halloween Kills is probably the worst movie I've seen this year, but, but we did an episode on it. it. So if you want to <laughs> go listen to our Halloween yeah, Kills episode. We're tired of talking uh, about it. I almost thought about putting it in as a joke somewhere. But I'm just like, yeah. I don't even want to make that joke. Yeah, no, we're done. So go, go listen to our Halloween Kills episode if you really want to hear some like real-time hatred. Well, I have a question before yeah. you say this. Yeah. Is, so were you disappointed? Do you have like a, a reverential uh, feeling toward uh, Lucy? I do. I, do. I okay. absolutely okay. do. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, I feel like um for for a lot of my generation, I Love Lucy was something you watched with your grandparents. And it was something you bonded with like an older generation over, right? Um, at least for me that's what it was. Um and like I said, I love Nicole Kidman. Like I, I'll be upfront and honest. I hate everything Aaron Sorkin has ever written. I don't like Aaron Sorkin. That is well documented if you listen to this podcast. Um, but I was willing to put that aside because I love Nicole Kidman. I do love Lucy. I love yes. Javier Bardem. There's a lot of things I like here. And I actually do like movies about the making of television. I do yeah. like that content. But this is sloppy as fuck. There's no excuse for anything in this movie. Um, Nicole's doing the best she can, but she can't move her face. And that's a problem that's when you're a, playing Lucy. That is a problem. And that may sound like the simplest thing in the world, but it's a huge. It's a huge problem, problem. in this movie. She, yeah. The the makeup on her is haunting. It looks bad. It's 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 a startling how bad the makeup looks. There on are her. moments and slight looks and an up and down or a shadow hits where it her, looks where right. She gets it, and it's just but like, it's that's, so ooh, rare. It's Lucy, but, but it's, it's so rare. few and far between. And uh, she. Uh, Nicole got the voice down perfectly. Yeah, she, she got the sounds, raspy is... smoker's voice down. Javier Bardem got the speech pattern down, but that's as far as he went. He stopped trying after that. And Holly, you and I have talked about off mm-hmm. off mic that like Javier Bardem has a villain face and that Desi Arnaz had a baby face. He had a baby face. This is bad yeah. casting. He was very and innocent looking. Yes. It's funny that it's bad casting. Javier Bardem actually looks a lot like later life Desi Arnaz yeah, with yeah. the wide eyes and everything. Right. Which I. Uh, you know, but Nicole, yes, but, but Nicole and Javier both feel uncomfortable with their casting. I feel like you can tell they're both like this isn't right. And well, when you watch this movie, they both feel they're miscast. Mm-hmm. And this movie chooses to focus on one week of their lives. Makes no sense. Mm-hmm. Um, what, one week. So one what's week. The, what's the significance of that? Um, week? This is the week she was accused of being a communist. Yeah. But uh, here's the, but here's the, and she also finds out she's pregnant with her second child. Yep. But. They condense a decade's worth of career events into this week, so it fucks with the timeline in a way that is really hard to follow as an audience member. What? Yes. There is the editing How? choices and... The editing is the worst editing I've ever seen in my life. good. It does no. not benefit the movie. No, the editing is the worst editing I've seen in I a very really long time. I don't understand like, there, how this works. It doesn't make, it, it, it doesn't make yeah, sense. Okay. And okay. the movie starts with talking heads. The movie oh, starts boy. with... The writer's room she had for I Love Lucy talking to the camera about this week in their life. Yeah. But it's not a documentary. It and it's not like a documentary, but it looks like it because you literally have people talking to the camera. Mm-hmm. And there's no explanation given for that. It just happens throughout the movie that there's these talking heads from the future. And you don't ever get to see the humor and the love and the warmth that is the Lucy and Desi on screen. Ugh. It is cold. It is soulless. It is joyless. It is humorless. It is. Here's my problem with Aaron Sorkin. It is that he only knows how to write one character. And that is a condescending savant asshole that talks down to everyone. Mm-hmm. But everyone tolerates it because he's good at one thing. Yeah. And he always is talking down to like a spectacled sniveling assistant that just mm-hmm. takes it. Right. Mm-hmm. And that's all he does is he's made a whole career out of this. 
to transfer that personality onto Lucille Ball is fucking criminal. To to make her into an That's asshole cool. that talks down to everyone and you never see the other side of it is unacceptable. Yeah. Yes. Now, Lucy was very what they got right is she was very meticulous. She and uh, she also They take this too far. They do take it too far. That is the problem. She was very meticulous and detail, And you never and the see stuff, the other side. That is the problem. We need to see the other side. We do a little bit because of what the the main problem they have is the dinner scene. We do kind of we hear no, we don't even see it. We hear what they did with it. There's so much. She, but she is a she was a very exacting woman. She knew she was funny. She knew what was funny, mm-hmm. and she knew how to do it. Now she mm-hmm. didn't have because she was wasn't she the first it. female producer? Yeah, on, on, on television. I mean, but Lucy's that's the thing. Responsible for Star Trek. This, and, yeah, yeah. Like, but things that wouldn't exist. This whole her. movie is her going up to people and being like, "I do X, Y, and Z, and that's why you need to put up with my shit." That's the whole movie. No, it's her being like, "I'm good at this, this, and this, and that's why you need to put up with me being an asshole." Like, the, and it the, shows her being mean to the 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 actress that played Ethel and forcing her to gain weight so she'd be less attractive. This makes her out to be the biggest asshole in hollywood and like if that's true then i guess this movie did a good thing but it never showed us the on-screen version where she was lovable you never see that you don't and get, it's very minuscule yeah oh, and really? so this is you, like the takedown it of hates her this not, movie it's, hates her it's not a takedown but sorkin like you said has a specific way he writes and so and to transfer that he, onto he, her is and unacceptable. he does transfer it onto yeah. lucy there are some moments where it just Lucy, I, I've read a couple books, yeah. and it feels like I've read the book that this was based off of because yeah. it's the backstory of um, uh, Desilu Productions and everything yeah, in their right. whole studio and all right. that. I mean, she was a very commanding person, but yes. I don't think she was a cruel person. No, this, this painter she had, isn't. She had ass. moments, yeah. and yeah. I described yeah. that, but she was also very. Uh, very loving, very yeah. warm, and even like there was you lot, never see the warmth. There was a lot of never. turmoil with her and Desi, but Yali even even times. when they separated, they were still friends. Oh yeah, uh, that, they, they still, were, like, but this movie doesn't show they that were still very friends. yeah they, still they were still very other. caring for each this other. This movie, they're either fucking or fighting. That's it. There That's the a, only way this movie portrays them. And the cold open in this movie oh, is d- a, I ten minutes into this movie, I was like, I hate this. I know I'm gonna hate coldness in the movie that I did not appreciate having spent a lot of time with lucy over my years i've seen yeah, a same. lot of lucy yeah sure um i th- I, I maybe i'm saying too much but I, I feel like i know lucy at this point no right. i get like, it I, and this is not it and it's i not, grew up watching lucy on nick yeah. night like i've yeah, I love same. Lucy. yeah. This is moments that are close but and nicole's doing the best with what she's got but mm-hmm. it's like i yes. said she feels uncomfortable and she feels uncomfortable with javier Bardem too they clearly don't there's no chemistry, not yeah. only, but be- there's no chemistry between anybody in this movie. Mm-hmm. Like, it just, and... I think Sorkin thinks that, like, <sighs> it's interesting if people are in turmoil, no matter who they are. Exactly. Even if they're loved people, he likes, like, the only, he thinks the only way we can get drama is if these people are in turmoil and they have to deal with that's it. And someone's problem. dressing and down and someone all the time. go-to thing. Someone always likes. has to be talking down to somebody, and that's the problem. It's kind and, of a one-trick pony, yeah. and it doesn't work. And if you've seen yeah. that trick before, you don't need to see it on Lucille Ball. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And he that's needs to be paired problem. with other people, like, yeah. even with the... Uh, he, he wrote Fincher and, and directed like this. He needs to be he did. He need, he, That's for the this, problem. I think yeah. so, but he's not the he person is, to make this Oscars movie. So it's stuff, it's so. miscast yeah. and poorly written. Yeah, and and, and directed. The it's and editing. Great. The editing yeah. is fucking. There terrible. are some good moments that are the the writers' room. Maybe not good, but they're true moments. Like the I like room the writers' was, room stuff the most. Uh, contentious, yeah, uh, going back and forth mm-hmm. between them. Jess Oppenheimer, who was the director, yeah. there was mm-hmm. a lot of. Mm-hmm. Stuff between them, they do go over a lot of stuff. The how Desi's uh, importance to the whole structure, yeah, of the things that he came up with. Right, he helped establish the three camera system and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, so did Jess Oppenheimer, who was the director of the show for a long time, uh, who they also had a contentious mm-hmm. relationship with. It it gets some of those fact moments right. I'm the just, emotional stuff is yeah. Not I'm just mad because I feel like with biopics, you got one shot, right? Mm -hmm. And like he blew the one Lucy and Desi shot. Mm -hmm. You know, if if it were up to me, I would have James Mangold, who did Walk a Line, do this Oh, yeah. That too, I would have. Because at least he was honest about those characters to who they were. Walk a Line is not the best, is not like a glowing Mm -hmm. endorsement of Johnny Cash, but it's honest, right? And you still like him. And you still like him and you still enjoy the movie, right? Yeah, I love that movie. That's who I would have do this movie. You know, we, we talked about this a little bit. If I were casting it, I would pick uh, for Desi. I'd pick Jason Isaac. Yeah, yeah. We talked about um, 
Holly Oscar and I did like Isaac. a like, Jay, yeah. I was say Jason yeah. Isaac. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Holly and I did like a fan Oscar casting Isaac, and like I love Nicole, but she's not good at comedy. She never has been. Don't put her she, and like granted and this role's also, very dramatic and there's no comedy. Yeah. That's the problem. There's no comedy. But she's also at all. got I don't know if you know Nicole Kidman's death stare. Yeah. Her, the emotion in her eyes gets stunted somehow. But the, like I can't the it's makeup always job a glare. too coming yeah. on the makeup the, job's not they good, have man. like it looks like they have prosthetics around her eyes that make it looks like they have prosthetics around her, her yeah her jaws, she doesn't look human she and she can't move her face and that's a problem i think that's it could have been problem. casting yeah. i think it could have been really good casting like 15 20 years ago well holly and i were talking about yeah. if we were going to cast this it would be my short list would be amy adams Kristen wig kate mckinnon pick one of those three that would be my short list at least they're comedians and they can move their face I, you know I, she might be a, a little too old now but deborah messing what yeah been exactly fantastic. that was the big thing everybody was trying yeah. to go for yeah but so people always but, come back and be like deborah messing is a terrible actress i'm right. like i have no idea I, yeah, yeah. she could do lucy that's someone well. who can express and make those faces that lucy yeah. makes because she's so, so good animated the if you're yeah. going if you can't do it no. if you're going into this expecting to see the iconic moments from lucy played out with nicole you won't you won't see those none of those are on screen so just yeah. leave that at the door and just don't i mean don't watch this movie but i've talked <laughs> enough about this i don't like it i i went in, i tried to like it i thought i would like it and i don't i wanted to but man they messed yeah some yeah and up. you you're a sorkin guy I, I, I'm I, not. I you think, are. But I agree. He does need to be paired with someone else. Yeah. He yeah. Can, can't just be him. Unfiltered Sorkin is not a good Sorkin. Yeah. But he needs to be so, in. Yeah. I mean, or it's got to be put through some people. I don't yeah. know. But it's, uh, yeah, I was excited for it. <laughs> Man, pff, disappointed. Yeah. Because you told me you were taking a break from it. And I was like, oh, God, if, if Sean's taking a break from <laughs> and he's a Sorkin guy, he's taking a break. That means I will. You know, hate I didn't this movie. feel as much Sorkin as I. I don't, not enough walking talks for you, huh? There was some walking talks in this, <laughs> yeah. which is just like it, and by the time it happened, it was just like okay, here, yeah, it is. yeah. Like we get, and I think they only do maybe like one big walk and talk, yeah. but there it is, it's in there. The costuming's great, I'll say that. I it mean, looks uh, good. Nicole great. looks great, yeah. Um, mm, Holly, I've talked enough nice. about this. What's yes. your worst? Of the year? Yes, um, Michaela, I feel like you're probably going to help me out on this one. Um, and I'm sorry, boys, but my worst, and I'll tell you, it's this is how nostalgia is done wrong. Mm-hmm. The first two episodes of And Just Like That, the Sex and the City reboot. Yeah. <laughs> it is. <laughs> and I'm saying the first two episodes because that's what I, that's when I stopped watching it. Or also known as How to Destroy Your Characters Without Really Trying. Right. Yeah. yeah. You know? <laughs> how to Destroy Your Fan Base. Yeah. For all eternity. Yeah. Um, I watched the first two episodes. I only watched the second episode because I needed to believe what I saw just happen. Because the first one ends in a cliffhanger that you're like, is this, are they going to commit yeah. to this or no? And I, they yeah. do. At this point, like, this, everyone knows what happens. And I'm sorry if you are not a Sex and City fan. But... The very first episode kills off the main love interest. Death by Peloton. Death by Peloton. Uh, for anyone that watched Sex and the City, you spent the entire series and the first movie waiting and watching Sarah Jessica Parker and Chris Noth's characters. Like, are they going to get together? Are they going to stay together? Will they or won't they for Will six they seasons? Yeah. yeah. You've waited for so long, for like 10 fucking years from the show to the movie, and now you're back at it and you kill off big in the first episode that is like the biggest fuck you to an audience of all time and we talked about this off mic but not only that but a problem in any media you're making is if you have a protagonist they need to be successful at one thing at least right right? like that's what keeps the audience going right right and they punish this protagonist she sucks at her job her love life's a mess now she's all alone her friends fucking hate her because she's grieving Mm -hmm. and it's like that's what you do to your antagonist not your protagonist you don't put your protagonist through every possible crisis at the same time we that's bad writing and you hate your audience if you do that exactly we spent years watching carrie bradshaw like she had a fabulous apartment she obviously she you know had the most amazing clothes she had a great job she was you know she was beloved like she mm-hmm. could attract any man that came she along. was like, famous she was, people recognized her on the street right she was just amazing and now she like you said like she's now doing a podcast that she sucks at she lost like one of her best friends and now her husband i like the, yeah i'm just i don't know what's happening why would i watch this right if I'm a fan, why would I watch the protagonist suffer in every aspect of her life? Right. So they can build them back up. Yep. I mean, that could be, but I'm done. But the first like, two episodes, you're hitting me this hard right. with 
the entire with a show that's supposed to be lighthearted and enjoyable. It's not a show that's no. historically been heavy. That's no. the problem. The movie is a little heavier. The last season was a little heavier, but even then, there's like lighthearted stuff that brings it up. It's called Sex in the City. And there's no sex in right in the show. Plenty of city, no sex. That is disappointing. Yes. Yeah. And it's it's just insulting. The entire second episode is just about Big's funeral. <laughs> it's an entire funeral episode. The whole thing. And a show called Sex in the City. The whole thing. Yeah. I like literally I I'm you know, I'm picking obviously I've seen a lot of shit this year. We talked about Halloween Kills, how bad that was. I've seen a lot of bad movies this year. This actually made me like see, say out loud by myself in my living room fuck this show yep holly and i were like live yeah. texting while we were watching it and we both like i have not watched an episode since i no. i'm i'm not because i'm not gonna be i'm not gonna watch something that's gonna punish me as a right. viewer you know what i'm saying exactly especially when i have dexter the same week that is loving me and right. is giving me and is <laughs> telling me they care about me mm. yeah right. why would the fuck would i keep watching this? right and if you can get past the big stuff. If you can get past that, now you've got an entire show about these characters that you love. The the whole thing is them talking about how old they are now. Like this show I, is I is telling its audience, um, your best years are behind you. When you get old, there's nothing to look forward to, and you're just gonna fail at life. And like that's terrible. That's a like. Well, that's because yeah. they. I mean, they're trying. Obviously, they're trying to hook hook the people that the older people who grew up with this are just like this is what life is now but then i think they're trying but to who wants the to see that right. i don't think that they're gonna they had an opportunity to say women when you when you hit your 50s things are going to be still be great but instead right. they said nope your best years are behind you you might as well die is what the right. me- message of the show is saying like everything from here on out is going to be absolute misery so you might as well die right you know and they it's like it's like they don't understand these characters. Mm. It's like they don't know who they are because they are totally different from who we grew up with, like who we who we watch. Like the whole, there's an entire scene with um with Miranda. Mm-hmm. Oh my I can't, god! It's impossible to it watch. Is, it's so painful. It is the most cringy thing I have seen in a really fucking long. I'm time. completely out of step with that character. That's right, that character was always very progressive, very understanding of like the current world and the current political climate. For, that for Dexter watching people, it'd be like if Deb spent a whole season never swearing. Yes. You'd yes. be like, that's not that character. <laughs> that's exactly it. She that's would never do that. Comparison. Yeah. That is a great yeah. fucking comparison. I think they want these characters and they want the audience to feel like the confusion of the world is changing without me. And is mm-hmm. it that's such a boomer and mentality. Old yeah. And like, they're just like, I want you to relate to this. That's which how is, they're trying to draw people in. Which is crazy because these characters are so ahead of their time to begin with. So the idea yeah. that they would fall behind that is insane. Well, you can't be ahead of no your sense. time all the time, I don't think. You can. Yeah, you can. If you start off ahead of your time, you're always ahead of your time. If you maintain that, right? Time may go past. You maintain yeah. Who knows if they yeah. maintain it? You maintain that momentum. Mm-hmm. I don't know. But I, I don't know who the show is for. I don't know who the target audience is because it's not for the fans. It's disappointing to the fans. I don't really understand what the point of this reboot was. It's definitely nostalgia done wrong. Yeah, they why are, bring it back to tell this story? There is no reason to bring this back other than just they want... Money. Is this, yeah, yeah. So this, yeah, the finger thing means yeah. the money, Sean. It's yeah. money. Yeah. yeah. But this is uh so what I'm hearing here, yeah, I, I'm translating this as like Last Jedi kind of stuff, right? Where you, you Yes, I, honestly that's a very good that's comparison. That's a good comparison. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I've also heard this in certain fandoms, the Masters of the Universe show that's yeah. uh, currently uh, uh, going. Yeah. But I wonder in uh well, not in the case of Last Jedi, but maybe in the case of just like that and mm-hmm. Masters of the Universe is like we're saying this without seeing the full Picture, a yeah, picture. Yeah, the you start know, to it's end. like so. The 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 filmmakers is like, this is how we're gonna break the character down. These mm-hmm. are the the pressure points that this character break has you so down gonna, to build you up to br- build you up. And by the end of it, you know. But I think in in especially Masters of the Universe and this, it sounds mm-hmm. like everybody's like, fuck you. You know, yeah, just yeah. We're not gonna get far enough. Yeah, to, we're yeah, not gonna exactly, watch yeah, the yeah, rest yeah. of yeah. this. Yeah, like you might have a plan, but I'm not sticking <laughs> so, around to see what it is. So my partner watched the show originally as it aired and right. got me to watch it. And when yeah. we were watching the second episode, when, which is the, the entire episode is a funeral. Yeah. Um, there's a part where where a character says like, oh, I don't want the funeral here. This place is all about death and dying. And my partner just goes, and it's, so is the show apparently. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, exactly. This show came all. This show called Sex and the City became all about death and dying. Yeah, like, how did this happen? Right? How? And it j- what was the point of rebooting this? I don't understand. Mm-hmm. Like, you would have been better off just leaving it behind. Yeah, you just Leave wonder: is, are they tracking like an audience? And they're like, well, the audience has gone through like uh, 
you know, life event milestones and they've changed. The people who watched Maybe. it originally in the and now we're talking directly to them with this, you know, like I you're think, gonna relate to it. I think they think they're you are. breaking the internet with what they're doing. I um, think their thought is we'll be so controversial people will talk no 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 you yeah, know. Man, I saw ads for Peloton and I didn't even know what the fuck it Exa- was. Yeah, I think so, it's so it's it sort of like uh no press is bad press is the thought with writing the season, which and is a bad approach like, to take for writing which, a television which also series. Also brings me to my conspiracy theory questions. Mm-hmm. The whole Chris No thing came out mm-hmm. right after uh, Big uh, Death. Yeah. So they knew it was happening. They what 100%. did they know it was happening? Was it Definitely. a plan? Yeah, like that's where they I'm killed like, them off because they knew this shit was going to. Yeah, won't have to deal with it yep. the rest yes. of the time on the show. Mm-hmm. He's dead. Mm-hmm. Yes, and how how high up does it go? Was Chris Noth involved in this deal? Yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. Like I have serious because the timing is so the suspect. timing is so sketch, and I'm not yeah. saying I don't believe these girls. I am not saying that at all. I think that it's they're very it's true. The timing of the release of the exactly. article, exactly, yeah, exactly. I think the information was released at a very predetermined time. Oh, yep. I guarantee, guarantee. Oh, it. Well, like I, I, I uh, read um, uh, uh, what's his name's book. Well, what he? Oh, Ronan, Ronan, yeah. Ronan Farrow. I wrote Ronan Catch and Farrow. Kill, Catch and Kill, which yeah. is a great yes. book. But after having read that, uh, I believe. Your conspiracy theories hold well, water the as Hollywood far as what information got to who, when things are released and all that. So the Hollywood rep- Reporter, in their article about the accusation, straight up said that the first woman came to them in August 2020. So the first person came to them over a year ago, right. and they waited until the release of the show to release the article. Right. So, like, if nothing else, the, the media is holding on to this information until it's opportune to release it. That if nothing well else, be. you know. I also wonder, and I, you know, I, I hate... I hate this if this is true, but I wonder if he had any control over the release of this story. It's possible. I wonder. Can't because, rule it out. You know? Because I wonder. I'm like, okay, did he? Did he want to get out of his contract with TV? Because right. he still had a contract. What was it Law and Order? Yeah, he still had a and contract. the Equalizer. He got fired from the yep. Equalizer. He had yep. contracts with both of them. What if he was just like, I'm ready reti- to retire? Mm. What if he got a payout? And he got out of his contracts by them releasing him from this because of the publicity. And they still have to pay him for the they number of episodes. Yeah. yeah. It's possible. Like, I don't know. It's just yeah. blowing my mind, yeah. like, the possibilities now. And it's driving me crazy. And mm-hmm. I fucking hate this show. Yeah. I fucking <laughs> hate this show. Yeah. I'm not going to watch it. I don't care what the payoff is. I don't care what if they have Carrie win the lottery. Because it's not worth watching. I don't care. Yeah. Passion. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it's, I'm just, I'm so angry about it. I literally yelled at my TV, fuck this show. Mm-hmm. And I stand by that. So. Well, there it is. Mm-hmm. Yep. Colin? <laughs> and just like that, it's Colin. Just like that. Just like that. I don't have a. Bring us home, uh, Colin. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, I don't like passionately hate, like even Halloween kills. I didn't hate, 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 hate. Um, eh, go back and listen to her episode. I think you hate it. Well, good. I didn't like it. Uh, that's for damn sure. For but damn I mean, sure. do I condemn it to the um, runner up would be uh, Resident Evil. Welcome to oh, Raccoon City. Oh, you saw it. Oh, God. It's the worst. It's, oh, no, yeah, it? it's a oh, horrible. You and five horrible. other people saw it. Yeah, I know. That's why I'm like five other people saw it. But you shouldn't see it. It's terrible. Damn. Um, one of the worst movies of the year. Paranormal Activity next to Kin is another wor- one of the worst Ooh. movies of the year. But what? the worst you movie that out. I saw this year, I'm, I am going to go like objectively worst movie that I saw this year, is uh, The Reckoning. This is a movie that was directed by Neil Marshall. Neil Marshall started his career with uh, Dog Soldiers and The Descent. And I was... That's a good th- start. <laughs> I know. This is a guy that I... And maybe this is why... Maybe this does factor into like a, a subjective uh, disappointment, you know? Um, he His career went through... Um, he did episodes of Game of Thrones. Yep. He did a movie called Doomsday, which is uneven, but... Is that the uh, racing movie? No. No, no, no. That's death, death Race. That's death but that's race. not Neil oh, yeah. Marshall. Uh, he did a movie called Centurion uh, after Game of Thrones. It was kind of like, well, what's he going to do? And then he got back into mainstream movie making with uh, Hellboy reboot, right, which right. was ill advised. I think, you know, it's like if you're going to do it, have uh, Ron Perlman in it. Um, so now he uh, it's him and his girlfriend. Uh, and I know this worked for like uh, Malignant was also as James Wan and his girlfriend yep. wrote a movie together, but this one seems like in service of the girlfriend is actually the actress in the movie. And I, I apologize. I don't have uh, my uh, uh, Google in front of me. 
to remember her name, but it's a movie that takes place in Britain uh, in, uh, I was going to say the Middle Ages, but that's not entirely true. But she's accused, her husband dies and she's accused of being a witch. Uh, She is shot like a glamour model, uh, you know, for which seems out of place with the movie that the story that you're trying to tell. And then uh, every man in the movie is basically just a horrible piece of shit who is like, you're a witch. And we're going to, it's one guy. What's a fucking guy? I Charlotte Kirk. Charlotte Kirk. What did we talk? Weren't we talking to her? about? No, I don't think so. Okay, I thought we mentioned her in a thing. And they basically, then the, the, the duration of the movie is watching this woman be tortured. And, and so it, the... Fuck the, that. Right, because this is my problem with it. It's like, it it seems to be arguing against this type of treatment, but at the same time, like... It's excessive. Wallowing in the audience, you know, like putting it in the face of the audience in a way that's like, well, this is horror. You came for a horror movie, so I'm going to horrify you. At one point, there is a gynecological instrument that, when inserted, opens up and causes. And I'm like, okay, why in the fuck? And, and it, like, this whole thing is like lingered on as far as like a torture scene. She's tortured, and she keeps, you know, she's like, I'm not a witch. She keeps getting tortured, and so then, then eventually, and I'm going to spoil it. Uh, oh her redemption is uh that yeah satan you know or uh, some devil uh a, a, a emissary comes to her and so she embraces uh and so she's like evil would you like to live delicious in order to yeah and i'm like <laughs> this is not like a win right this is yeah, right like, <laughs> like doesn't sound like it really no and the the, the i think is it, it was played like, off as a win yeah it's played off as a victory for her because uh. she gets her revenge and all this other stuff and i'm like this is like some kind you're off in some weird uh, I mean, like, where is your headspace where we're supposed to sit here and wallow in this stuff that you're showing in explicit detail, mm. you know, of this just torturing this person for two hours so she can get her revenge through some kind of evil supernatural thing. And I guess maybe, I mean, it's a bad movie and I see lots of bad movies. <laughs> this one, I guess, hit me more because I... Because of the good stuff that came before? Yeah, I, the, the I, promise, the I was potential? hoping for more from Neil Marshall, and yeah. I guess that That's was fair. maybe the thing. Yeah. Fair. And yeah. I think that, you know, his intention may have come from a good place. I think, you know, he's... Him and Charlotte Kirk are sitting there reading all these stories about Me Too and all that, mm-hmm. and so they think they're making some kind of progressive woman thing. And I'm like, no, 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 you... You totally missed the mark here. Yeah, All you're doing is showing the woman get yeah, like brutalized for right. two I, fucking hours. I don't know that I like a movie that's just like in your face, like look how bad this is. Look yeah, how bad yeah, this yeah, is. Yeah, like yeah. you know, no, I don't need to. May, maybe Dog Soldiers was the peak for him, right? Descent. Descent. Des- yeah, yeah. It's been all downhill since then. Yeah, yeah. that was 2002 or something. Yeah, like that. so, so 20 it's, years it's of downhill. Because I think that's the the problem with uh, some of these movies. I guess like my. Uh, you know, like offense to it um, uh, is taken is that in order to back up your theme, uh, you can't write three dimensional characters. They all have to be two dimensional. Like this person is virtuous and this, these people are straight up evil. Right. And I'm like, well, that is not really interesting. You're more just about like getting to the scenes where we torture her for, you know, right. two fucking hours. So, uh, the reckoning. Yeah. Right. Uh, nobody saw it. So no, you don't have to worry stay away about from it. Just skip all thing. movies called Reckoning because there's probably a tons bad title. of them out there. So yeah, probably yeah. Just good thing no one saw it. There you mm-hmm. go. And Resident Evil, uh, Welcome to Raccoon City, <laughs> yeah. which might, does a lot of because this is the one I where might watch like, that one. Just no, to, no, no, oh, no, okay. no. I'm gonna have to watch it at some point because no. my partner has a big crush on Kaya no. Scarlet, oh, so no. I'm sure I'll have to oh, watch it. This is me at the end of Halloween three. Turn it off. <laughs> turn it off. <laughs> like, my God, turn it off. <laughs> oh, Colin, you saying that makes me want to watch it so much. <laughs> no, no, but, no but, but Sean, think of how many Resident Evil movies he's watched, and he's saying and this no is the one to this where he's one. Like, yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. tells you how bad it wow. is. Wow. Yeah. Which means I have to watch no, it. No, it doesn't. Do you remember oh. the one time we watched a Resident Evil movie on this show? It was bad. It was recent. Oh, maybe Resident Evil Welcome to Raccoon City is coming to the No. no. Maybe we should do this as a therapy session. Stop it. No. Just get it done here. Join All the right. club. All right. All right. All right. Without, without going into any detail, does anyone have any other honorable mentions for good or bad that they want to throw out there? So. Hold, really hold on. Hold on. Let me check my list. Let me check my list. I will say... Um, 
I think Midnight Mass was spectacular. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I love Midnight Mass. I was actually uh, thinking about putting spectacular. I was too. My list. I was too. But uh, then I was not aired on enthralled the by Nightmare Alley. I like I, I Nightmare Alley. Alley. I, yeah, I, I was very disappointed in that movie. Oh, honestly. I really liked yeah. it. Yeah. Um, it's, I I'm surprised it, it didn't make your top five, Colin. I know. I was, I was, I was yeah, thinking, but yeah. I was like, man, these someone's challenged me more in some way. I, I, I liked Candyman. Um, it was 90 minutes, so I appreciate that, but it was one of the few movies this year that could have used another 10, 15 minutes uh, yeah, to finish like it up. No. Yeah, I was disappointed. Mm. Uh, the Fear Street movies were trash. Trash. Yep, I didn't like those. Avoid them. Trash. At all costs. I recently finished the trilogy with the kid. Oh, it took you six months to finish it that. Did. Huh? Yeah. Because I was, it's bad, huh? The first two, we watched the first two real close together, and then yeah. I was just like, I need a break. Of the three, the second one is the most The tolerable, second one's the best. But they yep. still suck. Yep. Still not worth watching. Yeah. Yep. The second one only works because of Sadie Sink. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Yep. Um, Judas and the Black Messiah was really good. I um, that, But it's yep. exactly what you think it is. You know, it's... Yeah. Uh, I totally forgot I watched Kong vs. Godzilla this year. Mm-hmm. Oh, um, yeah. It was yeah. stupid. Fun. <laughs> Every, See, I got, stupid well, I fun. Got, I got that fun out of No Time to Die. I really did like go. the uh, mm-hmm. the James Bond I still want to see that. closure yeah. to mm-hmm. the Daniel uh, Craig mm-hmm. saga. So mm-hmm. you know, and uh, Lamb. I was like a twenty four. Am I just gonna keep on? That was weird. Was I right okay. about it though? Remember no. my prediction for the movie? Okay, no. all right, maybe I'll watch it. I've been wanting to watch it, but it's twenty dollars to rent, and I'm not yeah, paying that much to rent. I'm, 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 I'm yeah. curious yeah. about it. <laughs> yeah, uh, Spiral was bad. Yeah, oh, yeah, Spiral was like horrible. Spiral. That was almost my worst of the year. Oh, you're right. That would be the, yeah. That okay. was almost my worst that of the year. Was, Spiral was yes, really bad. Really bad. Also, the reason I don't have a lot of movies that I've watched, because we discuss movies a lot here. I don't know if you guys know this, but uh, so we talk about, and based on what everybody said, I'm just like, all right, I guess I won't see that one. We I have a lot of off-mic conversation. Uh, so basically, every week off, like, we talk about what we've watched. Let me warn you away from Spiral. is bad. Sean, you would tap out 10 minutes in. Oh. All right, I tapped out about 15 minutes in a jigsaw. The yeah. irony is, I went back and watched Jigsaw before I watched Spiral, <laughs> yeah. and I was like, eh, okay. It was like, and then I watched Spiral, and Spiral's because very Darren, bad. Darren Boozman is back. Yep. Like, and you're like, oh, this is why I fucking hated the Darren Boozman cycle of yep. Saw. They, they, you can't make your protagonist that unlikable and expect me to enjoy the movie. Oh, you just yeah. can't. You just and it's can't. like written on the level of like a Law and Order episode. Yes. I mean, it's like, but yeah. a Law and Order episode from like 20 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Not yeah. good. Yep. Well, yep. I'm going to be watching yep. a lot of bad movies this week. Except- does that put 2021 to bed? Mm-hmm. I think so. I think so. All right. Thank you. Rest in peace. Yeah. That's that's a long ass episode. Fuck this year. <laughs> Okay, Congrats but, if you made it to the end. Yeah, thank you for <laughs> yeah. sticking with yeah, us this yeah. long. Appreciate it. Because the special treat that you're going to get, hopefully before everybody else, I, I don't know if that's true. Maybe Mailbag will be out by now, but we have uh, solicited your suggestions for movies that we should watch in January, our Listener's Choice Month. My favorite. Mm-hmm. And we got a bunch of votes. Mm-hmm. A lot of movies this year. So, um, the, so we're going to watch four movies that were chosen by you. The first one that we're going to watch. Okay. Oh, he's rubbing his hands together. We're going in ascending order. Oh, God. Uh, Yes. Ascending ascending order. This is our number four. Number four. Fourth highest. Okay. And Michaela might get a special kick out of this one. We are watching Phantasm 2. I've never seen this movie. I'm a little scared for you. I'm a little Concerned. I'm a little but excited. <laughs> I'm a little excited and a little concerned. Now that I've gone through and watched... We watched Phantasm here. Right? Yes. We did. Yep. We did now an that we've gone through Phantasm. and had that second viewing and understand it yep. better than I did when I first saw it. Oh. Good luck. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I'm excited that my first viewing of this movie will be documented. Yes. Okay. I'm yeah. also right. excited for you to watch it. Yeah. Okay. 2022. Mm-hmm. That's right. Here We're we kicking come. it off with Uh-oh. Phantasm 2. Yeah. 2022. That's a lot of twos. That sounds like a lot, a lot of sequels twos, this yeah. year. Oh, no. I'm thinking sequels. Sean's oh, going to pick no. all sequels all year <laughs> long. I, I can, the next time I can do this is in 200 years from now. Yeah, so yeah, I yeah. got to do it now. <laughs> That's the only time we're going to have more twos. <laughs> all right. All right. Well, there you go. Well, thank you again for a year of listening to the Saturday Night Thank you so much. much. Yeah, we very appreciate it. Mm -hmm. And uh, until next week, I guess the basement is going dark.